MGS3, 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 MGS3. I really like this Fox Sound logo. By the way, you can change the background here, uh, just like in the Metal Gear Solid 2. You can change like this, you can change color, you can change the, uh, the camouflage pattern in, in the background. You can change this black and blue color, for example, like this. You can zoom in, you can speed up, you can slow down. You can move back from left, right, down, up. You can do a lot of things here. Basically, every single button has something, the like some uh, some use in the in the menu. Uh, there's nothing much here that I can say. Um, I guess I'm gonna talk about this. Like if I'm playing the MG series for the first time, I don't think. We're gonna get anything if I'm gonna uh, click this, not click, like select this. Yeah, I don't think there's gonna be any bonus or anything like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about this. If you select I like my MGS one, then we're gonna get extra stamina bar. If we're gonna get, if we're gonna say press I uh, like MGS two, we're gonna get a. Uh, at the beginning of the game, we're gonna have a face camouflage, camouflage with a. Uh, I mean, are we gonna have Raiden's face camo from Metal Gear Solid 2, <laughs> basically just to piss off all the people who hated MGS2 because they couldn't play with Solid Snake. <laughs> really cool. And MGS3, if we're gonna play, uh, select this, then uh, we gonna get a. Uh, yeah, extra camo, I think. Extra camo and maybe something else, I can't remember, but I think it's just extra camo. And since MGS1 is my favorite game, I'm gonna say MGS1. Gonna play a normal, yeah, but before I start, I want to say, just like I said in, uh, when, when I started MGS1, MGS2, I'm not gonna skip any codec call, I'm not gonna skip any cutscenes, we gotta watch everything. I'm gonna try and show you like a lot of optional code calls. Obviously, I'm gonna skip some of them because some of them are really hard to get. And I think in this game there are like a lot of like a lot of optional code calls that you can that you can get. And some of them like are really hard to to get as well. But I guess I'm just gonna show you like some funny optional code calls, but not all of them, obviously. I uh, don't care how fast I'm gonna finish the game. I uh, don't care how many times I'm gonna spot it. Sometimes I'm gonna die on purpose just to show you some easter eggs in the game. Is there something else? Uh, yeah, there are probably gonna be a lot of alerts, a lot of game overs, stuff like that in the game. Alright, let's hop into it. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. west. This marked the beginning of the era yeah, called the Cold, Cold War. War. And yeah, this game has pro <clears throat> it has more code calls and more cutscenes, <clears throat> and they're longer than they were in MGS1 and 2. <clears throat> Sorry. So. Sometimes I'm gonna be quiet for like 20 minutes or something. <laughs> and yeah, you can zoom in with R2 just let me put it and just too. Fuck sound. You can see Japanese flag over there. Flying over Pakistan, altitude 30,000 feet. Approaching Soviet airspace. 20 minutes to drop off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Our main parachute. All right. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Chronologically, this is the a game that 
where it all started, basically. Put out that cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. According to the timeline, this is the first game. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. Sunrise. Temperature minus 46 degrees Celsius. Two minutes to drop off. Stand up. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Try not to get frostbite from the wind chill. One minute to drop off. Move to the rear. Activate the alarm bottle. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Ten seconds to drop off. Stand by. Smoking is bad. Okay. Status okay. All green. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Really like this intro. Kojimbo! Kojima! Jack, I've got some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future <laughs> of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well, about two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. <clears throat> the rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development to become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. <laughs> afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. We used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. 
And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, My birthday. the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. To give President up Sokolov. Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. Save me! Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No, missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at Semipalatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yarsk, a place in the mountains about three Selino miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. Virgin Cliffs? The Virgin Cliffs. Nice name for a virtuous mission. <laughs> they moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. So sometimes you will be able to press the R1 button uh, to see for the first person view. Sometimes it will be prompted, sometimes it won't, so you'll have to randomly press R1 here and then to see if there's like a secret person, uh, secret first person here. Listen up, Jack. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov and bring him back to the west. That R1 button... If we don't get Sokolov back time. before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. <laughs> Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton Surface to Air Recovery System. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? 
The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. It sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Can't wait to eat some snakes and frogs and rats and bats. If I would select, I like MGS2 at the start of the game. Here we would actually see Jack's face, Ryzen's face, and then he will take the camo off. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful, you might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. Now Major Zero will... This will be a sneaking Major mission. Tom. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment are procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. There we go, final gameplay. You can actually change from uh, from third person view like that to this when the game was released first on PS2 you could only play like that and then when the MGS3 substance was released they actually added this third person view
Now, if, if you're gonna call, uh, if you're gonna call, uh, everybody, like, a lot, like, there are gonna be more of those frequencies here, obviously. If you're gonna call a lot of them, then, uh, there are gonna be more information that we can find, that we can, uh, actually see. Snake, first here. you need to find that backpack you lost on it's the way like down. four out of five. Your four backpack got caught on a tree to the north. Try heading in that direction. Snake, you said your backpack got caught on a tree branch, right? Yeah. yeah. Was there ivy growing on the tree? There was, but... Perfect. Perfect? Indeed. You can climb any ivy-covered tree by standing in front of the ivy and pressing the action button. Climb the tree and retrieve your backpack. Um, I'm not sure if we can get a Sanko calls here in case it would like when I equip knife or when I equip calorie mate maybe. You can climb no, any nothing. IV cup. I guess first we have to get a backpack, then we're gonna talk, I guess, about other things. I'm probably gonna talk about uh I mean, I'm gonna call a, a lot uh, about a uh, uh, lot of things. Every time I'm gonna get a new weapon, new item. I, w I don't want to miss any code I call. Here we got a snake. That we can eat. There should be one more snake here. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Point. Every time you he see that that's some kind of movements in the grass, that means there's a there's a, some kind of an animal here. Here we got a frog. Rat. Rat. <laughs> you can actually take it, kill her like that. There we go. <laughs> frog B. We can go there. We can go there. I guess. Medicine. Hmm. Uh, let's just get it back but first then we gonna <clears throat> then we're gonna call Major Tom and then they're gonna be gonna have a quite a long code I call. A lot of codex code calls here at the beginning of the game. A lot. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer Hush gun. Hush Puppy. That's right, it's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. No bodily waste. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international the conventions of sheep. warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. 
You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and US government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So, how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic. Medic. As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. <laughs> and they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. Snake said that. They What's just your won. name? Jane Doe. Very funny. <laughs> I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary boss. soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. <sighs> you didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack, I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. 
You are a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends, only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra Unit, a group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC, huh? CQC. Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. How do I CQC? Boss, help! Commencing virtuous mission now. Virtual mission. All right, now we can get uh, some other codec, optional codec calls in the game. About the food we found, about uh, items we have. Here we got another snake. More mushrooms. Pew! Shroomy, shroomy. I'm not sure if I can call her about uh, about the guns and all that. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage. First, press the Start button to go to the Survival Viewer. Then select Camouflage and press the Enter button. Select Uniform Enter. to select Battle Fatigues and Face to select Face Paint. 
Choose battle fatigues that match the surrounding environment. The most effective camouflage is attained by selecting fatigues that blend in with the environment. Camouflage patterns that stand out in your surroundings will attract attention. Mm -hmm. Visibility is poor in the jungle, so you'll be finding yourself in a lot of unexpected encounters. Naturally, this means that close quarters combat will be more important than ever. So I'll have plenty of chances to use CQC then. That's right. In proximity encounters, firing a gun isn't necessarily the best response to every situation. It's only one option among many. Rather than taking the time to draw, aim, and fire a gun, engaging your opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat can sometimes be a faster and more reliable way of subduing him. Besides, in a sneaking mission like this one, it's too dangerous to go around firing your gun. You'll end up revealing yourself to the enemy. Yeah, I know. You created CQC to deal with exactly this type of situation. With your help, of course. In a battle situation, you'll only have a split second to decide how to attack. Use the weapon button to attack using a weapon, and the CQC button to attack using CQC. Press the CQC button once to throw a punch. Pressing it multiple times in succession will allow you to deliver a combo That's the first attack. game they introduce us with CQC. But striking CQC. your opponent is just one aspect of CQC. In MGS, serious. It doesn't really start to shine until you've got your enemy in a hold. Press and hold down the CQC button to grab your opponent with your right hand. From there, you can use the left stick to knock your opponent off balance and throw him to the ground. This can be used to knock an opponent out in a single blow. If you don't press the left stick, grapple with your enemy until you're behind them and can get your knife to their throat. Grabbing an enemy from behind and holding your knife against his throat will render him virtually powerless. From this point, there are several things you can do. By double-clicking the left stick button, you can slit his throat by using your knife. Move the left stick and press the CQC button to throw the enemy to the ground. Tap the CQC button rapidly to choke the enemy. You can use this to knock him out, or even kill him if you do it long enough. By continuing to hold down the CQC button, you can move around while keeping your grip on the enemy. By pressing the weapon button, you can aim your currently equipped weapon at another enemy. With their comrade acting as a human shield, the enemy will be reluctant to attack you. Press the left stick button to press your knife against the enemy and demand information. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn this way. But don't get too complacent. While your enemy may be powerless in your grip, he'll use any opportunity he can to counterattack. They they actually changed the 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 controls in this game that they were in the oh shit now I went back. They changed the control in this master's collection. Um, even though uh, she said that you can uh, interrogate a thing with L3 or something like that, that's completely wrong. At least in this collection. There are a lot of animals that you can actually find on the tree. Like you can find snakes, you can find uh, squirrels or something like that. You can, you can hear birds. Even though I don't know, I'm not sure if you can kill birds. You can always check the map. In case you miss some... Uh, like a... Uh, like a road or some shit. Bug juice. You can barely see them here in the. Ah! Oh shit! <laughs> you can barely see them here in the in the grass. Yeah! Ah! Jesus! Now even if I'm gonna pull him to sleep, he will actually wake up when I'm gonna get close. <laughs> you got a silencer for the NK22. I thought I can have uh, like a grenade here, but I guess I was wrong. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north. 
So head in that direction. Mm-hmm. Paramedic. I see you've captured a giant oh, anaconda. She's gonna tell us something about the animals. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. The giant anaconda is a very <laughs> large snake, but you should be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. I'm <laughs> glad I didn't disappoint you. So? so? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. Ugh. So if you're gonna try it now, let's eat giant anaconda. Tasty. Tasty. I see you caught yourself a reticulated python. She will tell us about python every animal we're gonna capture. The longest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. They have a highly ferocious temperament, and they can swallow whole, even large animals like deer and pigs. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. It's a huge snake, but you should be able to capture it alive by using the tranquilizer gun. I'll bet if you capture one and throw it at an enemy, it'll give him a good scare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually bite him. Right. But how do they taste? <laughs> huh? Do they taste good? You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? Nothing. Let's Cannibal, see what the guide snake says. Eating snake. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I see you've caught a tree frog. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you toss one at him. You can scare but the, the enemy by tossing the frog. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? <laughs> is that all you ever think <laughs> Every about? Every single foot. What else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. <laughs> oh, fuck. Be that way. So... How about it? Today tastes you good. You mean, is it edible? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it's probably okay. <laughs> probably. I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. Pretty useless guide, if you ask me. <laughs> well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. I see you found some Russian oyster mushrooms. The Russian oyster mushroom is an edible variety that belongs to the Shimeji family. It's known to be particularly rich in vitamin B1 and that's niacin. What I call for now. Apparently, it's usually found growing on tree stumps and hollow logs. So look there if you want to eat some. But do they taste good? Maybe I missed a grenade somewhere, but I always thought that I can throw uh, grenades into those gators. Maybe later in the game. We don't have any... You only have like a bunch of food and those three items. Is that a bird? <laughs> oh! They're not gonna attack me. Now we can get a. Uh... A lot of things here. Is 
I only see a fucking... Oh, there we go. There are grenades here. I knew there were grenades somewhere here. Now you can actually pick up the grenade and throw it into the gator's mouth. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it or not. Oh shit. I missed. What? What I just got? A bird! Like you can only throw it inside a gator when, uh, when he's gonna open the mouth. Maybe you should go there, huh? You see they're opening the mouth now. Let's go here and try to do this. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Part of this tastes like really good. Now we got a lot of food. I'm gonna call a uh, paramedic again in like a few minutes. We got some fruits as well. Here's another snake. Another snake. <laughs> Snake age. <laughs> I can always throw those snakes to, to the enemy. If they're alive, that is. But now I'm just killing them, basically. Spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK 47s and grenades. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. The Uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the Face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. <laughs> but if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot, and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? Okay. There's one guard there. You got some more mushrooms here. Below me. I'm gonna take this guy down. Now what should I do with him? I'm not gonna kill him. I'm not gonna kill anyone. I'm gonna try and go for no kill run. But if I'm gonna kill someone on accident, I will. Even though I rarely go for a no kill run. I I, I always plan to go for, for a no kill run. But then somewhere, somewhere along the way I change my mind. I just wait here. Uh, 
I don't want to get spotted. I don't want to get spotted. I'm just going to move slowly like that. <laughs> there we go. Now we can answer me. Interrogate him. We won't hand over Sokolov. What do you mean? <laughs> Speak. Let go of me. No, I won't. <laughs> Speak. We won't hand over Sokolov. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I just put him to sleep. I can actually shoot at this. Uh... Really? Really? Radio, and then when he's gonna wake up, he won't be able to call for reinforcements, basically. Bug juice! Uh, Kevin Bamber, what do we have here? Where will that take me? It's alright. Hopefully there won't be any enemies here. Ooh. Draguno sniper rifle. Snake! Let's try and call uh, the boss. Let's see if she has something to say. Snake. Yeah? What's up, boss? Don't you what's up me? Okay, then. What is it? <laughs> I'm talking about your camouflage. Why aren't you using it? Oh. oh. <laughs> when you don't use any camouflage at all, you stick out like a sore thumb. Didn't you listen to a word I said? Oh, well, I was <laughs> listening, uh, but... Then start using your camouflage. But mom... Is that clear? Yeah. But mom... I don't want to use a camouflage. There we go. Better? Let's go like that. There we go. You happy now? You can only use CQC to grab enemies when your right no hand comment. is free to grab and pull them toward you. In other words, when you're barehanded or equipped with a one-handed weapon like a survival knife or a handgun. You won't be able to grab hold of enemies when equipped with two-handed weapons, such as the assault rifle or weapons such as hand grenades that don't leave your right hand free to control the enemy. So in other words, I can't throw enemies with CQC when I'm holding an assault rifle or a hand grenade. Exactly. Don't forget it. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. More about animals. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive. Even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Yeah. Got it. If so, I'm gonna get close, they will wake they... up. Taste? Yes, I did look into that. You know what they always say. Taste like chicken. Tastes like chicken. Sounds delicious. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures. But the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. Yeah. I wonder, how do they taste like? Oh shit, the wrong button. Paramedic! How do they taste like? Magpie. Said to be tasty. Not too bad. Not too bad. Taste unknown, possibly edible. We can try and eat a tree frog. Disgusting. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna show you later. I see you've captured a magpie. 
Magpies are members of the crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Right. Just, Just like, like me. You, huh? Okay. So how do they taste? <laughs> you always ask me that. Naturally. So? so? I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie, but I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. Oh. <laughs> I love those conversations. Okay, but are they edible? Paramedic, answer me! Mm, I don't want to get spotted. You can see one guard over there. Maybe it's too far away to actually try and take him down. Let's go closer a little bit. We don't have to use CQC. There are some fruits here. Ooh. Oh shit! My analog stick kinda went up. It went up. We got a fruit, we got a grenade. You can actually try and uh, do that and they will drop some items. We got some more shrooms here. But I think when you do that, one of their uh, Z will disappear, maybe not. There's one more guard there. There we go. Now in every area, almost every area, you'll be able to... Okay, let me just pick up this item first. I don't even know what that is. Thermal goggles. Every area we're gonna be, you'll be able to find uh, those frogs. You have to shoot one in every area, and then they will uh, let you. You'll you'll be able to get some uh, camouflage uh, when you finish the game. Uh, let's go to the next area. Then we're gonna do some more codec calls. There will be a lot of codec calls in the game. A lot. For every weapon, for every animal. He's using binoculars even though it's <laughs> five meters away. Hmm, that smile. Alright, let's see now. Major Tom! Snake, when you knock down a hornet's nest, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out. If used wisely, this can sow panic among the enemy. But if you're not careful, the hornets may end up attacking you. If you're attacked by hornets, wiggle the left stick around and wave your survival knife to shoo them away. Smoke is another useful tool in keeping hornets away. If you're attacked by hornets, I'd advise you to try using a smoke grenade. And if you use the insecticidal bug juice, the hornet should stay away as long as the effect lasts. Hornets are prone to becoming agitated and aggressive when they see the color black. Mm -hmm. Their attacks will be more vicious if you're wearing black clothes. If you're attacked by hornets, you should change into white clothes. That will be useful later, I guess. If, you, if you're gonna get attacked by hornets, you can wear... Uh, I don't wanna tell any spoilers. But later in the game, you will have like a white suit, and then hornets will just fly ar around you, they won't attack you. But if you're gonna wear a black suit, black, black camouflage, they will like constantly attack you. You can also use torch to... Mo uh, to, uh, to uh, get rid of those uh, bees, you can use a uh, smoke grenade, you can use knife. I'm not sure if cigarettes will work. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. Uh, he doesn't have anything new to say. Paramedic! 
I see you have a calorie mate. Yes, I do. Calorie mate. Calorie mate. The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? Try it, it's pretty good. Okay. But what is this thing? Never seen anything like it. Calorie mate is an energy supplement. Never that tried that calorie all the mate, but I would lipids, really want vitamins, to try. Carbohydrates and minerals needed for a balanced diet. It's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space age food. Real astronaut food is not very good, but that should taste fine. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? Huh? Huh? It's easy to keep track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Geisha is that girls. Why they're all so slim. Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes, I love Japan. We all do. <laughs> we all do. I weeps. see you've got yourself a Baltic hornet's nest. Baltic hornets are a variety of hornets that inhabit that area. The difference between them and other hornets is that they produce honey in their nests. Inside the nests are larvae, pupa, and adults. You can eat them all. Nice. In particular, the honey you find inside the nest is delicious and full of nutrients. It's easy to digest and helps pep you up when you're feeling tired. In short, it's the perfect survival food. Honey can also be used as a burn ointment. When honey is applied to a burn, it creates a protective coating over the skin. Hmm. When you knock down a hornet's nest, a burn ointment will appear along with it. So don't forget to pick it up. Huh. Of course, the hornets aren't going to give up their nest without a fight. If you knock a nest down, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out. So be careful. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a a, a lot of uh, codex call here at the beginning of the game because some codex calls you can only you can only get here at the beginning. I see you found some Siberian ink cap mushrooms. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom from the ink cap family. Its life cycle is transitory. Like in this first part as soon of the as game. the spores mature, the cap starts to turn black, liquefy, and melt away. And that's why they call it an ink cap? That's right. It doesn't really turn to liquid, but you get the idea. In its immature state, before it melts away, it's valued as a source of food. Just be sure not to eat them while you're drinking alcohol. Why is that? Ink caps contain coprin, which inhibits the function of aldehyde dehydrogenase. This prevents the body from breaking down alcohol, causing a buildup of acetaldehyde. Meaning? Meaning? Meaning it will give you the hangover from hell. Oh. Oh? Wait a minute. What? You think I'd drink alcohol in the middle of a mission? Wouldn't you? Hell no. Well, I'm knocking a shot back now. What? Just teasing you. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. Where's your sense of humor? I need a drink. I don't have a sense of humor, but it is a Friday night after all. I see you're wearing the tiger stripe camouflage. Yes, I do. The tiger stripe pattern has been in use since 1959 among the South Vietnamese Marine Corps. But the pattern originated with the French. It's said that it developed out of the brushstroke pattern, also known as lizard camouflage. It provides some cover in trees and grass, but it's especially effective in earth and mud environments. You should find it useful when you're concealing yourself by crawling on the ground. Now she will, now she will actually tell, uh, she can actually tell me about every single camouflage. You're wearing the woodland face yeah, paint, yeah, I see. Yeah. The woodland face paint is designed for use There's in so forests. Many optional It'll in the give game. you a high level of camouflage in a wooded environment. Try using woodland paint when you're traveling through the forest. Like I'm not gonna <laughs> show you every single code I call. Uh, oh, it's there. Huh? There we go. Now they're he's running away. There's another one. Oh! 
You can actually destroy those ropes and then it's gonna be harder to walk. But I think it's only gonna be harder for walk just for me. You can actually cut all those ropes, but like you can destroy the, the bridge. Here we can actually fall down. There. Four. There we go. Now we can grab like this. This is basically a shortcut. This is what... I think that's a machine gun or something. M16. Now hopefully those guards will not uh, come here just yet. I think we're good. They will come uh, back in like 15 seconds or something. Major, I've reached the abandoned factory where Sokolov is supposedly being held. This place is a dump. I can't see Sokolov from here. The security is pretty tight. There are sentries posted around the perimeter. I wonder how many are inside. Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Be careful. Your mission is to bring Sokolov back alive. He must not be exposed to any kind of danger. Do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, it's just that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. There we go. Now, I don't think I can. Uh, we can call uh, the boss anymore. Yeah, no response. So, if I, if I want to get uh, more information, more co optional code calls about the boss, and there were a lot more, you can, you can only get it from the previous area. So, like I said, I'm not gonna spend two hours here just in this virtuous mission just to show you every single code I call. But it is what it is. I see you found a Yabloko Maloko. Yabloko Maloko. Yablo what now? <laughs> Yabloko Maloko. It's a ah, Russian fruit. name that roughly translates as milk apple. It's a type of star apple. The juice is thick and sweet, like milk, hence the name. And if you cut one in half lengthwise, you'll see a star-shaped ring radiating out from the center. Hence the star apple. Right. The star-shaped part has a gelatinous texture and is said to be especially tasty. Tasty. Sounds useful. You're welcome. For once. Did you say something? <laughs> no, uh, back, back to the to mission. mission. Snake, Sokolov is imprisoned in the northeast area of the factory. Got it. To the northeast. Yes, and don't engage the enemy. The object of this mission is to bring Sokolov back safely and nothing more. Contact Sokolov without being spotted by the enemy and bring him out discreetly. If you must dispose of an enemy, do it with the tranquilizer gun. Okay. That's my specialty. <laughs> oh! There we go. Whew. Thought I'm gonna miss. Should I use a uh, AP sensor? Vibrates when detecting life forms. If it to use, consume battery when used. Can be kind of useful. Now I'm not sure where all the enemies are gonna be. One is there. 
Who? Oh. I don't see anyone on the right. I think there should be somewhere here. Oh, I don't want to get too close. One of them, I think it might be somewhere on the right. Let's see. Maybe I can see better from here. Oh, one of them is there. And I can think I can hear somebody here on the right side. There we go. It was somewhere here hmm. let's go here there he is haha <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not sure if one of the guards will be here somewhere on the right Ah, oh, there we go. Guarding the door. I think we can find some items here now. Like some items might uh, appear uh, in this place later in the game. It's not like if there's no uh, if there are no uh, items here now there they won't be here later in the game. What else do we have here? We got a uh, medicine. But I think that's pretty much it for now. There might be something there, but it's not really important. Now, if I'm gonna... Oh yeah, one sec. We can actually go here. Let me see, can I find a snake or something? There we go. Now, this one is alive, actually. And Sokolov is actually located here. <laughs> Please stop! <laughs> you can you can throw him. Uh, one sec. Uh, we got a Python magpie. We can actually throw a. Uh, Actually no, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat that bird. I wanna know what how it tastes like. Backpack no wait food. Gross. <laughs> Gross. You can throw a snake inside. Get it off me! Get it off me! <laughs> you must be Ames! You must be Ames! <gasps> you can actually uh, throw a grenade inside and kill him, and then it will be game over. There's one more thing here. If I'm gonna... If I'm gonna put camouflage, and I'm gonna use... The mask uniform, uh, the mask face paint. Let me see if you can get some code calls for this face paint. Snake, when you meet Sokolov, don't go in wearing that mask. Why? Why? He won't like it. Won't like it? No. Why not? 
Just trust me, he won't. <laughs> You'll need Sokolov's full cooperation to complete this mission successfully. Don't do anything to make him lose confidence in you. When you go in to meet Sokolov, make sure you remove your disguise. Got it? Snake, as I said before, this mission is only to bring Sokolov back safely. You must not put Sokolov in danger. You're not allowed to contact him during the alert phase. Period. Now, there is one codec hall here that is like really, really, really hard to get. I mean, if you're gonna stand like somewhere here. And... Let's see. You can't call the boss anymore, but if you're gonna call the boss here like a few times, we will actually get a response. But it's really hard. No response. Let's try and call Major Tom one more time. Snake, do you see the door there? Yeah, it's a swinging door. Opening a swinging door is a bit different from opening the doors that you got used to during training. To open doors, generally you can just use the left stick to move towards the door. This way you use your body to push the door open. To open a door without creating any noise, move the left stick slightly. So, when you're concerned about alerting enemies on the inside of a room of your presence, open the door slowly and slip right in. If you use large motions of the left stick and run towards a door, you'll burst through it. The sound of the door opening will surely be heard by your enemies, but it allows for a fast entrance. When you want to jump right in and take care of business, running is the way to do it. Stand in front of a door in first-person view and use the left and right step buttons against the door. This will gradually open the door and allow you to glimpse inside. Use this technique when you want to check what's happening on the other side. Now let's see, let's quit this and try to call the boss again. No response. I'm gonna try like this, like, uh, maybe for like one or two more minutes and then I'm gonna quit. Nothing. Let's try. Let's maybe try move a little bit closer. I, I don't want to uh, trigger the cast scene. Come on. Like that's probably the hardest, hardest core call that you can uh, get in the game. Hey, Quinto. Yeah, let's quit again. No response. No response. No response. Gonna try a few more times and then I'm gonna give up. Snake, do you see the door there? Yeah, it's a swinging door. Opening a swinging door is a bit... We already heard that. Okay, I'm gonna try like this two more times and then, and then I give up. Come on! Come on! Maybe you have to, uh, maybe you have to use every single codec call uh, with her until that point. And since I didn't show you all of them, maybe we can get it, I don't know. If we're gonna get closer, we're, gonna, we're actually gonna trigger the... Uh, the cast scene. But if I'm gonna go like this... We can still... <laughs> knock on his door. Something here? I don't know, I can only hide here. Okay, five, 
four, three, two, one, zero. Extra one. Okay, I give up. I give up. I tried. God no, I tried. Basically, you can you can you can actually uh, reach the boss, and then uh, the only thing you can, you can hear is like the static. And apparently, people are saying you can hear the sorrow's voice. A little bit of spoiler alert if you don't know who the sorrow is. Even though I can't hear it, I can, I can only hear static. But that's like a secret call that you can get in the game. Men. You must be AIDS. You, you must be never AIDS. get it from me. No. I'm a CIA agent. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA? Yeah. I was sent by Major Zero, the man who got you out two years ago. Zero? Zero? I have a message from him. What is it? He said to tell you sorry for being so late. Is he now? Did he now? What does it mean? It means he's a man of his, his word. But we've got no time for this. You have to get me out of here before they arrive. They? Who's they? Colonel Volgin of Gru. You in the West know him as Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt? Never heard of him. He's a member of the army's extremist faction, a man who seeks to seize control of the motherland. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis two years ago, Khrushchev has been pursuing a policy of peaceful coexistence with the West. Despite resistance and criticism from hawks in the army and the provincial authorities, Khrushchev has managed to suppress the opposition so far. But the failure of his agricultural policies has put him in a precarious position. And, on top of that, the tragedy last November. President Kennedy's assassination. Precisely. In a sense, Khrushchev has lost his biggest partner, and his power base is rapidly crumbling away. A certain group is plotting to use this opportunity to seize power by rallying the anti-government forces, overthrowing Khrushchev, and installing Brezhnev and Kosygin in his place. The mastermind behind this plot is Colonel Volgin of the Gru. He has control over another secret weapons research facility much like this one, OKB-812, known as the Granin Design Bureau, and is using it to further his plans. But that is not enough to satisfy him. Now he's plotting to seize the secret weapon I have been developing here and use it as leverage in his bid for power. Beat for power. You guys ever play this Quake mod? It's a Dragon Ball mod for Quake 3. Beat for power. The intelligence says that they are going to make their move during the test. Then, the soldiers outside. Exactly. They wouldn't need that many men just to keep me inside. Their orders were to prevent Colonel Volgin from capturing me. Even if it meant killing me in the process, or so it would seem. Volgin will come. I'm sure of it. You must get me out of here before then. Leave it to me. By the way, your Russian is superb. Where did you learn to speak it? From my mentor. Is that so? America is truly a frightening country. Said no one ever. Having second thoughts? No. I have no love for this place. Let's go. Me. 
Major. Sokolov is safe. Major, this is Snake. Sokolov is safe with me. He's doing fine. No injuries. Good work, Snake. Now hurry up and get Sokolov to the recovery point. We'll rendezvous with you there. Roger. What about the sentries? No one spotted me. I see. What about the boss? We lost contact with the boss some time ago. Interesting. What happened? It's probably just a weak signal. Just hurry and get Sokolov out of there. <laughs> Check out his moves. It's a trap. So this is the legendary boss. Huh? Legendary boss. Hmm. You! You're from the Ocelot unit of Spetsnaz. Huh. What's a Gru soldier doing here? Soldier? He's the Ocelot commander. That's Major Ocelot to you. And don't you forget it. Revolver! Sokolov is ours. Ocelot! Get out of here. And Ocelot never lets his prey escape. What? That speed. Ah! That aim. Ah! 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 I can't say it feels good to kill a comrade, even if it is for the Gru. <gasps> Sokolov, take cover. <laughs> huh. Hmm. You're not the legendary boss. You're not the boss, are you? What is that stance? Huh. 
That gun. <laughs> if you're not the boss, then die. <laughs> I want to be tranquilized like that. I want to know how 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 like how does like you feel? Do you like fall asleep like immediately or a few seconds, few minutes? Impossible. You ejected the first bullet by hand, didn't you? I see what you were trying to do, but testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you. Huh? Besides, I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. But that was so fancy shooting. The American dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good. But that was some fancy shooting. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Major, do you read me? I read you. Snake, you all right? I've run into a few snags. These guys were after Sokolov, too. Apparently, they were taking orders from a Gru colonel named Volgan. A Gru colonel? Part of an internal Soviet power struggle, according to Sokolov. Something between the KGB and Gru. Between Khrushchev's supporters and Volgan's. Sokolov was being guarded by the KGB and hunted by Gru? Snake, it sounds like this could be even hotter than Cuba. I don't like it. Something about the whole thing stinks. I agree. You'd better hurry. Sokolov ran off by himself, but I'll catch up to him. We're counting on you. Okay, let's see if we can get some other optional code calls here. Snake, stay alert. The KGB and Gru both have their sights set on Sokolov. Gru is a military espionage outfit, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. It competes with the KGB, which is under the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and the two are always watching each other. Never let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Exactly. Now, added to that rivalry, there's a vicious power struggle going on between the Khrushchev faction and the anti-Khrushchev faction. So Khrushchev is using the KGB, and Volgan and the anti-Khrushchev forces are using the Gru? That's the idea. The two factions are fighting over Sokolov. We're in an extremely dangerous situation here. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Get Sokolov out of there safely. He must not be turned over to the KGB or to the Gru. Sokolov took off in the direction of the rope bridge. Get after him. Hurry! A lot of optional calls like that, but you can actually learn a, uh, a lot more about the story. Major, have you been able to contact the boss? No. What about you? No good. You really think it's bad reception? We're looking into it. Major. Snake, you've got more important things to worry about than contacting the boss. 
Right now, Sokolov is out there wandering around the jungle alone. What are you going to do if he gets caught by the enemy? <sighs> We're still looking into why we lost contact with the boss. I'll let you know as soon as we find anything out. In the meantime, it's your job to find Sokolov and get him to safety. Got it? <sighs> we lost contact with the boss. But, and when we when we met this ocelot guy, revolver ocelot, he he said like, so you're the legendary the boss, and then he later when he realized that uh, we we're someone someone else, he said, wait, you're not the boss. So how how does he even know who the boss is? Major, do you know anything about this group Colonel Sokolov was talking about? Yes. Who is he? A most dangerous man indeed. His name Volgen. is Yevgeny Borisovich ah, Volgin. His code name in the West is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. He's gained a reputation as the most brutal and cold-blooded of the Soviet spy masters. During the war, Volgin was assigned to the domestic branch of the NKVD. He was stationed in the rear of the Soviet line to catch and punish any troops who tried to retreat or desert. He's also notorious for his accomplishments in anti-guerrilla operations in the Ukraine and the Baltic states. Apparently, he likes to boast that he disposed of over a hundred thousand anti-communists. We also know that he was instrumental in putting down the 1953 insurrection in East Germany and the 1956 uprising in Hungary. He is truly a fearsome man. There's no telling what he might be plotting. Be careful. I will. Okay. Now here we can uh, actually... Do that and he will uh, drop a mouse trap. Hehehe, <laughs> interesting. And if you're gonna kill if you're gonna kill him <clears throat> like you uh, We know that with the revolver ocelot will survive in the game since we we're gonna meet the revolver ocelot in Melagor Solid 1 and 2, right? Which is happening like what? 40 years later? Something like that. So if you're gonna kill him here... Ocelot is dead! You created a time paradox! The snake! You can't go changing the future like that! <laughs> you can't go changing future like that! Which, and it's really cool that you can actually hear... Uh, you can actually hear uh, the colonel here from MGS1 and MGS2. We didn't hear Ma uh, Major Tom, we heard Colonel. You cannot change the future like that. If you're gonna, if you're gonna wait for a few more seconds, we're gonna see that the Ocelot is dead will turn into the time paradox. See, it's all changing time paradox. <laughs> He can drop a mouth trap. I don't know what other items can they drop, but I don't think that it's it really matters. Can he tell me something about Araka? Snake, stay alert. The KGB. Oh, now we have to. Major. Oh, uh, we already had this, those. We already heard those Major, conversations. Do you know any? There we go. Major, what's this Grand and Design Bureau Sokolov was talking about? OKB eight one two. It's the same type of top secret facility as Sokolov's own OKB seven five four. The director is a man by the name of Alexander Leonovich Granin. Mm. He's Sokolov's arch rival, and the two have competed fiercely against each other since the days of the war. To hear Sokolov tell it, though, the rivalry was really all in Granin's head. In any case, Granin seems to harbor an unusually intense hatred for Sokolov. Knowing that Sokolov was protected under the aegis of Khrushchev, Granin threw in his lot with Volgin, the vanguard of the anti-Khrushchev movement. Apparently, Granin meant to use the funds provided by these opposition forces in order to defeat his old foe. Volgin, for his part, was intrigued by the possibility of using the high-tech weapons Granin created in the fight against Khrushchev. 
Thus, the two formed an alliance, and Volgin took the Granin Design Bureau under his control. But now Volgin's got his sights set on Sokolov. Yes, it would seem that he and Granin aren't getting along so well after all. Look, all those Koda calls are actually, like, actually has a, like, they're, they're really important for the Sora. By the way, Snake, what were you doing back there? Back where? You were giving some kind of advice to ah, a new commander, you weren't you? Another interesting yeah. one. He's your enemy. What the hell were you thinking? Really? What was all that about doing the thing with your hand on the first round or whatever? <sighs> Whenever he put a new clip in his gun, he'd always load the first round by hand, whether there was a round left in the chamber or not. It's a technique they teach in the Middle East. By making sure there's always a round in the chamber, you eliminate the risk of pulling the trigger with nothing to fire. He must have heard about it from someone or read it somewhere. In any case, he probably wanted to try it out for himself. And he was obviously motivated by vanity to show off his new technique. That's when you make mistakes. The battlefield is an unforgiving place. The only techniques you can rely on are the ones you've mastered through experience and practice. Uh-huh. And what were you saying about him being more suited to revolvers? When he fired, he was bending his elbow sharply to avoid the recoil. It looked like he wasn't aware he was doing it, but that habit can be either a fatal flaw or a gift. What do you mean? Automatic weapons use recoil to operate, so if you don't let the recoil hit you, it interferes with the operating cycle of the gun. Basically, he shouldn't be trying to avoid the impact like that. But with a revolver, there's no need to let the recoil hit you. Just the opposite. Avoiding the recoil lets you reduce the strain on your hand and arm. That kid might just be handy with a high-caliber revolver. Handy? Are you listening to yourself? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> He's the enemy. Why are you giving him advice? Uh, I... Uh, 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 Snake. I don't know. For some reason, I couldn't help but point it out to him. Snake, are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> He's really autistic when it comes to weapons. You can only get this correct call here. You can't get it later in the game. Snake, remember that this operation is a solo sneaking mission. We'll be providing you with support over the okay, radio. Okay, that's gonna be it. Out that's in the, the field, call. you're on your own. There's no backup. And there's no way you'll survive a battle with a large enemy contingent. Avoid engagement whenever possible. Your highest priority in this mission is staying out of sight. Okay, let's go. And that's what that's how he he got his name, Ramola Ocelot. Oh we have to use a different weapon if you want to destroy this. Can I use No, I thought maybe we could, we're gonna hear something. <laughs> the boss! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Dolly Novodno. Alright, now we're gonna see like a really, really long uh, cutscenes. Probably like 20 minutes okay. or something. Those men were from the Ocelot unit, Spetsnaz. Yes. The best crew has to offer. They're coming for me. I'm finished! Calm down. I'll get you out of here, I promise. And we've got some of the best backup we could ask for. Look! Shagohard. That's what they were making you build. Yes, the Shagohod. The treading behemoth. A tank capable of launching nuclear IRBM. It can launch nuclear missiles from that kind of terrain? Oh, yes. And without support from friendly units. A nuclear equipped tank capable of operating solo. Is that thing finished? No. This is only the end of phase one. It won't be truly finished until we complete 
Phase two. Phase two. Phase two. The weapon's true form. If it is completed and the Colonel gets his hands on it, it will mean the end of the Cold War. The end of the Cold War? The end of the Cold War? Yes. And then the Age of Fear will truly begin. A world war. I had no choice but to cooperate. I didn't want to die. I wanted to see my wife and child again in America. Please, take me to America, quickly. They cannot complete it without my help. Got it. Let's go. I like how Snake will actually wear a camouflage and face uh, face camo in the during the in the cast scenes, what he used uh, in the gameplay while we were playing. Good work, Jack. What are you doing here? Sokolov comes with me. Introduction to Cobra unit. Good one, Kojima, yeah. My friends, let us fight together again. I have waited long for this day. We will fight with you once more. Welcome back, boss. Now that all five of us are together. It's time we go to the depths of hell itself. Now we're gonna see sorrow that I mentioned before. It's raining blood. There it is. Is he crying? The man, the legend, the man. Kuabara, Kuabara. Ah, what a joyful scene. Colonel Vogan. Welcome to my country. And to my unit. Thunderbolt. Boss, what is this? I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Sokolov is a little gift for my new hosts. Recoilless nuclear warheads.
These will make a fine gift for me. This can't be happening. Who is he? Another one of your disciples? Are we taking him with us? No. This one is still just a child. Too pure for us Cobras. He has not yet found an emotion to carry into battle. What are you talking about? Think you can pull the trigger? <laughs> Seek your sea against the boss. He's seen my face. We can't let him live. Khrushchev finds out about this, we're finished. He must die. Wait. He's my apprentice. I'll take care of him. <clears throat> Jack, you can't come with us. My arm. Done here. Now onto Sokolov's research facility. Shagohad is ours. Drift away. My place is with them now. Here we can actually, we will be able to see the, the Sorrow's body. Maybe not right away, maybe later. Snake, can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, just barely. Snake, listen to me, you need emergency medical treatment, can you move? Got to get those wounds treated. Hang in there. All right, let's get you fixed up. Paramedic? Okay, Snake. Just relax and it'll all be over before you know it. <sighs> the boss. Stay with me. I've seen people in worse shape before. Think you can handle it? Major. The boss. She's defected. We'll talk about that later. First, we've got to get you patched up. Okay, here we go. First, open the survival viewer with the start button. If you select cure, you can start the treatment. Healing is divided into treatment using medicine with the item window button and surgical treatment using the weapon window button. 
Your injuries include a fractured left elbow and rib bone, and lacerations on your upper arms, right elbow, and abdomen. Anything else? They need to be fixed using surgical treatment. Move the healing cursor with the left stick to the affected part of your body. Once you've selected the affected area, hold the weapon window button and use the left stick to select the medical item and then press the inner button. With this method, you can use items to help your recovery process. To treat a bone fracture, first secure the affected area with a fastener and then wrap it in bandages. That should do it. For lacerations, you'll need disinfectant to clean the wound, sutures to stitch it up, styptic to slow the flow of blood, and bandages to wrap the wound. If you do everything I mentioned, the wound should heal completely. Understood? Yeah. Understood. Stay with me. Go into the survival viewer and treat those wounds. You can see the ghost of uh, the, not the ghost, sorry, the the de the body of uh, of the sorrow on the top, on the bottom left, right there. You can see the skull. Can we get some other 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 protocols here? Snake, hurry and get those injuries treated. Yeah, I guess we just have to treat it right away and then uh, get more protocols. Okay, let's see. Suffering from a deep cut, bleeding, no bandage applied, not yet disinfected. So we have to use what? We have to use disinfection, no bandage applied, bandage. Bleeding. Treating cuts. So it's your kit. For burn. Cuts and gunshot wounds. Ah, oh, there we go. So same thing. Cuts. Disinfection. Maybe such your kit and bandage. Also cut. Bandage. This something and such a kit. Do we have any more cuts? We got one more cut. Such a kit, bandage, septic, disinfection. Bone fractured and no bandage applied. Okay. For helping broken bones to heal and bandage. And we got same thing. Bandage and broken bones to heal. There we go. Now I'm gonna show you the sorrow. I think. The boss bandana. Good job, Snake. We're coming to get you now. Just stay where you are. We'll drop a recovery balloon. Can you set it up? Or maybe not. Ah, maybe yes. There you go.
close and yet so far. Pretty long cuts in this part. Like I said, 20 30 minutes or something. 20 minutes probably. Oslo still can't believe it. <laughs> Davy Crockett. <laughs> Excellent. A great success. Thanks to the boss and her cobras, I have both Sokolov and the Shagohad. What are we going to do with the girl? Who is she? Apparently she's Sokolov's woman. That old dude can have a woman like that? Come on. She's a nice catch. I'll take her. Not so fast, my dear. KGB. We may be able to use her. She has spunk. Shall we take her back to the base? Perhaps we should. We have no further use for Sokolov's research facility. I think it's time I gave this marvelous new toy what? a try. Colonel, even if they are our enemies, they're still our countrymen. But it won't be me that pulled the trigger. It'll be our friend, the American defector. You're going to nuke your fellow Russians? <laughs> Remember the Alamo. Colonel! What's with the Alamo? What happened with Alamo? I don't know about the history. Mexico attacked Texas or something like that. Hmm. But if Mexico attacked Texas, why would why would Volgan, uh, who is from Russia, say remember the Alam uh, the Alamo? What's the connection with Volgan and I mean with Russia and Alamo? Dun 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 dum If you press the R1 button you can hear the those back uh those voices. Background voices. With darkness and silence through the night. Searching and I'll melt into you. What a fear in my heart, but you're so supreme.
before my neighbor is gonna call the cops. See that how Kojima was inspired by James Bond movies with his intro. He got a lot of inspiration from James Bond movies, especially with his MGS3. Currently flying over the Arctic Ocean, altitude 30,000 feet, approaching Soviet airspace. Arriving at the designated drone launch point. Drone oil pressure and voltage are nominal. Payload oxygen supply is nominal. Power supply to payload antifreeze system shows no problems. No gusts. All systems go for drone detachment. Snake, we can't risk a halo jump this time around. Airspace security has gotten tighter since we were last here. We can't get as close to the ground as we did during the Virtuous mission. So instead, we'll be using one of our newest weapons. Snake, you're being given an honor on this. par with Alan Shepard. This is our last chance. Show your patriotism. If you fail, you'll be back in a hospital bed again, waiting for the firing squad. When there's gonna be R1 button prompt. So how does it feel to be a patient in one of the most advanced ICUs in the world? Would you do me a favor and tell the suits about visiting hours? I'll never get better with them assaulting me day and night with their questions. Must be part of the top brass's inquiry. More like an interrogation. According to them, I'm a traitor and an accomplice to the boss's defection. They're just looking for a scapegoat. Does that mean they're after you too? Hmm. Let's just say neither one of us is going to be made a national hero out of this. Does this mean Fox is going to die? No. This Fox is still one step ahead of the hounds. The reason I came to see you today... Jack, it's time for Fox to clear its name. What are you talking about? The situation has changed. We've still got a chance to come out of this one alive. Yeah, what kind of chance? Don't get too excited. Here, have a cigar. It's Cuba. I don't smoke. Major. This morning, I had a meeting with the CIA. They decided when they're going to execute us? No. Something even bigger. Yesterday, the White House received an unexpected call. President Johnson? Yes, I hear you, Mr. Chairman. It was a hotline call from Khrushchev to President Johnson. From the head of the Soviet Union? That's right. A few days ago, one of our country's main design bureaus, OKB-754, was destroyed in a nuclear explosion. At about the same time, our anti-aircraft radar picked up a signature that appeared to come from one of your military aircraft. Does any of this sound familiar to you? In retaliation, I have placed our armed forces on secondary alert. Depending on your response, I may be left with no choice but to order the military to maximum alert and unleash Armageddon. With the help of your predecessor, I was able to survive the Cuban incident. But my power is not as great as it once was. If I am to survive this crisis, I must have your full cooperation. I should have contacted you myself. 
Did you know that one of our soldiers defected to your country a week ago? No. So you haven't heard that? The man who arranged the defection was a Gru colonel by the name of Yevgeny Borosovich Volgin. Volgin? Of the Brezhnev faction. Go on. Who is the soldier? Her name is the boss. She's a living legend. During World War II, she was the one who led us to victory in that war. You mean... In Russia, you the know boss? her as Voyevoda. You mean... The boss? The mother of your special forces? Yes, that's the one. And she took two miniature nuclear shells along with her. The boss took two miniature nuclear shells. I'm afraid so. I believe they were a gift for her new hosts. The Davy Crockett Atomic Battle Group delivery system was completed two years ago. But serious problems were found with the launcher's range and precision. Although they were mass-produced, they've never been deployed in battle. But Sokolov's research facility was completely wiped out. The whole area is polluted. I can only offer you my deepest condolences over this terrible tragedy. So, the boss, with Colonel Volgen's help, stole two experimental nuclear shells and took them with her as gift when she defected. Then, shortly thereafter, Sokolov's design lab, a top-secret military research facility, was destroyed by one of these weapons. Am I right so far? Yes, that's that correct. correct. And the American government denies any involvement in the affair. Is that right as well? That's correct. We were not involved in any way. Then what was a U.S. military aircraft doing on our radar screen? It was clearly in violation of our airspace. And yet you say it was not acting under your orders. That's correct. You expect me to believe that this was all the work of a single soldier? I don't know what else to tell you. The army insists that this is all a ploy on your part. I've said it once and I'll say it again, our government had nothing to do with it. And I would like dearly to believe you. However, I'm afraid my power over the military has weakened since the Cuban incident. I will need some kind of proof that this was not the action of the American government. You have one week. You must catch the boss yourselves and recover the remaining nuclear device. Then, you must find some way to prove your innocence. Prove our innocence? And how are we supposed to do yes, that? Preferably something painful. Prove to me that this is not merely another one of your tricks. The boss should be close to Colonel Volgan. How about a little co-action? I would not expect too much if I were you. The political situation here is unstable. And Colonel Volkin is a member of the Brezhnev faction, which seeks to topple my government. One week. You have only one week. And if it is not too much to ask, do something about Volkin as well. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. nothing. It means nothing. Call it a modest gentleman's agreement to ensure our continued relationship. What if we can't prove our innocence? Then I will be unable to restrain the military. I will be ousted, and they will seek their revenge. A nuclear attack on the United States? I leave the disposal of this situation entirely to your discretion, Mr. President. Disposal? If you fail, it will mean the beginning of a new world war. That's how important our Put mission it simply, is. simply, in order to avoid a full-scale nuclear conflict, we have to prove <clears throat> that America was not involved in that explosion. And eliminating the boss ourselves will prove America's innocence? Right. The higher-ups have decided that you're the only one capable of pulling this off. You were her last apprentice. Screw this one up, and we'll both be six feet under. There's no choice. Are the Russians going to be helping us? 
The KGB has promised to lend us one of their communications satellites so that you and I can talk to each other. <laughs> That's it? They've also put us in touch with a couple of insiders. Insiders? There was a defection in September 1960. You remember it? You mean the two NSA codebreakers who went over to the Soviet Union? Precisely. Since then, they've apparently been training with the KGB in exactly this kind of situation. Their code names are Adam and Eva. I've been told that Adam has infiltrated Vulcan's ranks. We've also arranged for him to provide you with an escape route. You'll need to rendezvous with him when you get there. Unidentified aircraft detected, altitude 30,000 feet. It's UFO! UFO! We're under attack by aliens! It's fast. Estimated airspeed exceeding Mach 3. Bearing south. I'm about to lose it. into the jungle. But it all started. But this time it's night. This is Snake. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. Rescue Sokolov. Find out what's happened to the Shagahod. Then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Eliminate the boss. Eliminate this the boss. mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss in our Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Volkin. I'm not a hired killer. I know, but that was the Kremlin's demand. Demand? You mean it wasn't just a request? What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, then that's what we'll do. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagahod. Roger that, Major Tom. Hold on, Snake. What now? I'm changing my code name. It turns out Tom wasn't the most auspicious choice. What do you mean? Well, the truth is, when I chose my code name, I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Did you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. I must have missed that one. Anyway. It's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan, but the Nazis find two of the tunnels before they're finished. The prisoners succeed in escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels were Dick, Harry and Tom. Dick. I get it. You used the name of the tunnel they escaped in as your code name because you thought it would bring you good luck. Yes, that's exactly right. At least, that was the plan. But... But I got the name wrong. The one they escaped in was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered by the Nazis before it was finished. I watched the movie again just to make sure. In fact, I even ordered the actual film from the movie company. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? Hmm. You know, let's just use Zero, like we've been doing all along. All right then, Major Zero it is. We'll start over from square one. From square zero. My frequency 
is 140.85. Oh, I almost forgot. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Is this her last chance, too? If we fail, she'll have her medical license revoked. It's more or less the same kind of fate. Her frequency is the same as during the Virtuous mission, 145.73. She'll be recording your mission data as well, just like the last time. That frequency is also the same, 140.96. And there's one more person on your support team. His name is Mr. Sigint. Yo! He's an expert on the latest in weapons and equipment technology. You'll be going up against some of the world's most advanced weaponry when you infiltrate the research facility. If you have any questions, just ask him. His frequency is 148.41. Mr. Sigint, got it. Adam, your KGB contact, is waiting for you at the abandoned factory up ahead. The same factory Sokolov was being held in last week. Yes, meet up with Adam first. He's cleared the way for you to rescue Sokolov. How will I know this Adam guy when I see him? You'll know once you reach the factory. The whole area's been polluted by the fallout from that nuclear blast. No one else would dare come close. The password is... Who are the Patriots? And Lali Lule Lo. Lali Lule Lo. Gotcha. gotcha. You've been equipped with a 45 for this mission. Be careful, it's noisy. I thought standard Fox procedure was procure on-site weapons acquisition. The circumstances are different this time. You're now on an official mission for the United States government. It would be necessary to make your presence known to a certain extent, to the Khrushchev regime at the very least. But remember, this is still a sneaking mission. Snake, if you fail this mission, it will mean an all-out nuclear war. Keep that in mind and proceed with extreme caution. Understood. Commencing Operation Snake Eater. I totally forgot that you can... Uh, that you uh, that, uh, I, I totally forgot to save the game during the... Uh, during the Virtuos mission. Because then we will hear a lot of... A uh, lot of codec calls about movies. Whoa! Now we can call Sigint as well. Let's see, not sure if I want to call him for every single weapon that I have. Colonel, not Colonel, Major Zero. Snake, your first task is to meet up with Adam, the contact provided by the KGB. The rendezvous point is the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. The abandoned factory. That's where I met Sokolov during the Virtuous mission. Correct, but we can't afford to have the same thing happen this time. I know. I know. Okay, let's hear paramedic at least once. Paramedic. Snake, it's so good to hear from you again. Likewise. Same here. It's been a week, hasn't it? Four days, actually. Huh? I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Ah, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Ooh. Better luck next time. <laughs> mm, let's hope so. Let's hope but so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until What's just yesterday. Guy? In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, don't push yourself. Eat something to replenish your stamina. And try not to get yourself hurt. If you're wounded or get bitten by a venomous animal, go into the survival viewer immediately and treat yourself using cure. Yeah, yeah. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. <laughs> and I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. Maybe so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes, there was talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? <clears throat> of course not. Good. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Huh. Huh. Snake, you're the best agent I've ever seen. But you push yourself too hard. You're reckless. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble to make sure you and the boss don't kill each other. Mm. So that's why I volunteered. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? 
Thanks. Stop right there. <laughs> you can thank me when you get back. All right. All right. So you two actually watched the Great Escape movie? I never watched it, make, uh, that movie. Was it good? Charles Bron Bronson was in it. Hmm. I mean, it does sound familiar. I remember some movies where uh, people were like digging tunnels to escape the, like the prison camp. I remember some uh, those movies. Maybe I watched it like on TV, but I don't think I ever watched it from start to finish. Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal animals that you didn't encounter your last mission. Some of them are venomous, like the King Cobra, so be careful. If you get bitten by a venomous animal, the poison will spread through your body and rapidly drain your life gauge. If that's the case, go into the cure screen and survival viewer immediately and inject yourself with serum. Got it? Yeah, okay. Second! Yo, Snake! Yo! You're Snake, aren't you? And you're Sigint? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Years old. Close. Huh? I am the expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge <laughs> technology. Uh. I'm the guy that designed your trank gun, active sonar, and motion detector. If you want to know anything about weapons or equipment you find in the field, just send me a message and ask. Later. Well, I'll call you right now. Sounds like the Cobra Unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. Yeah. For unbearable torment, the pain. For true oblivion, the end. For infinite rage, the fury. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy. The joy. It's another name for the boss, because of the joy she feels in battle, ah. I suppose. Ah. During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. Oh, there we go. Sorrow and Joy. They say there couldn't have been a more perfect pair. Now we know about the Sorrow and the Joy. The Davy Crockett's that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire nuclear warheads. They're named after Davy Crockett, the hero who died defending the Alamo in the Texan War of Independence. Remember the Alamo. Ah, there That's we go, right. Quinto. The warheads are equivalent to between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. Every building within 150 yards of the hypocenter is completely obliterated. But the warheads the boss had with her were some kind of experimental super bomb. So they're actually even more powerful than that. I don't even want to think about what happened if she used it again. Snake, you know what you have to do. Yeah, I know. So David Crockett was defending the Alamo, and that's how uh, this new, this new, this uh, small new god name. Ah, you're using the survival knife. Yeah, this thing provides me with all the bare essentials I need to survive in the field. Hey, wait, what'd you do with the knife I made you? That was a work of art. It had matches and fish hooks and thread and stuff in the grip. Sorry to have to tell you this, but that thing is useless in a fight. No way. Really? Really? Yeah. When the grip is hollowed out like that, there's not as much space to stabilize the blade. So the joint between the blade and the grip is weaker. That makes it easier to break. I get it. You're right. With your knife, you don't have to worry about it breaking no matter how much you swing it around. So the important thing is durability. Man, I gotta write this stuff down. Next time, I'll make it so the matches and fish hooks go in the sheath instead. <sighs> Okay, I'm not gonna use all the codecals right away. We're gonna play for a little bit and then I'm gonna use again. Let's see, can we find some really cute animals here? Maybe King Cobra? We got some snake here. I think when I, when I played the game last time, I we saw some kind of a squirrel here. What is this? You cannot hide. Something's here. It's a frog. Really? Oh come on, snake! 
here we can actually see the, the little froggy trying to hide. How can we even go there? Ah, we have to go like this. Or maybe not. I guess you can go there, but you uh, you, you can only shoot it with a, with a gun. Yeah, you can only shoot that thing with a gun, but fuck it. It's not like I'm gonna find uh, all of them, all of them anyway. Ah, oh, there we go. Did you see how he was flying? Now he's gonna go to the... Uh, there and now he's gonna jump again. Come on. There we go. Are you gonna jump? Look at him go! Is that him? Look at him! Oh. Squirrel! Tasty! Look, more snakes. We can find more of those squirrels here. Look, even more snakes. One there. But they all look the same. I can't find the cobra. But then remember, this snake is the... Ooh, we just heard a horse. Now we can call, I think, Major Tom. You just heard a horse? Yeah. Yeah. You sure it wasn't something else? I know a horse when I hear one. I heard your mom. Paramedic, are there any wild horses in Selino Yask? Do you really expect me to say yes? No. So what should I do? There's only one way through that area. All you can do is move forward. Head towards the sound of that horse. It came from the north. Be careful. Okay. Look at this beautiful snake here. <laughs> Not this time. Looks like death wasn't ready for you yet. Boss! That arm still hurt? What are you doing here? Sons are waiting up ahead. You don't have a prayer of finishing your mission. You're not even armed. Boss! I'm not your boss anymore. There's nothing for you here. Go home. Go back to your boss. There's no need to prove that you are virtuous here. This isn't America. That 
That should stir things up a bit. You'd better hurry. Ah, sorrow. The border is 60 miles south of here. You ought to be able to run that far. Am I going home, boss? Why'd you defect? Why'd you defect? I didn't. I'm loyal to the end, to my purpose. <laughs> what about you, Jack? What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty, loyalty to, to me? me? Your country or your old mentor? The mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? You don't know the truth yet. But sooner or later you'll have to choose. I don't expect you to forgive me. But you can't defeat me either. You know me too well. Just look at that bandana. If you can't put the past behind you, you won't survive long. If we meet again, I'll kill you. Now, go home. Major. This is Snake. Major Zero. I read you, Snake. I was ambushed by the boss. You were what? The drone's been shot to hell. It's up in flames. That's not good. Enemy scouts are gonna come looking for you. Yeah, I know. But what was the boss doing here in the first place? There's gotta be a leak somewhere. No, that's impossible. The man the boss is working with, Volgin, isn't exactly on speaking terms with Khrushchev. I lost my gun. The boss destroyed it. Snake, I know how you're feeling. It's hard for me to believe, too, that a legendary hero like the boss would go over to the Russians. That she'd double-cross us like this. But that's how it is, and if you don't accept it, you'll never be able to beat her. That's not the problem. In terms of sheer technique, I'll never be able to beat her. I know that all too well. You've got to do it, Snake. She's your enemy and your objective. Enemy? We were together for ten years, and now you tell me she's my enemy? Enough. Hurry to the factory where Adam is waiting. Scouts have probably already been sent out to investigate the explosion. You've lost your weapon, right? That means you've got no chance of winning in a battle situation. Whatever you do, don't let them see you. I got no weapons, Major. How should I fail myself? I'm gonna save the game now. Maybe maybe we can hear more about... Wait, this is the... Oh, no. What's this? HQ, HQ. Let me save the game. Saving the game, Snake? Yeah. Maybe she's gonna tell me more about some uh, some movies? Hey, Snake. There we you go. ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? Yeah. No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, <laughs> not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies then? Of course! Everybody loves Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. You sure know a lot about movies. 
I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. Have you guys seen the new Godzilla movie? <clears throat> it's really good. I've actually I've never seen the original Japanese movie though. Never ever. Uh what did I want to do? Call Major Zero and then we gotta Snake, go. Do you see any tufts of grass? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of grass? Just ordinary grass. Nothing special. You should check it anyhow. It's pretty thick grass, about waist high. If you crawl into the grass, you can advance under cover. When you do, the camera automatically switches to intrusion view. If you want to stand up again, press and hold the crawl button once more. If you press the crawl button briefly, you'll crouch in that spot. This allows you to observe things without blowing your cover. Got it? Yeah, but... But what? Was that the only reason? What do you mean? You had me check it just so you could tell me that? That's right. Pretty useful, huh? Right. <laughs> Shall we carry on? By all means. By all means. Even when hidden in grass, if you make a noise, your enemies will locate you. When enemies are nearby, move with slight movements of the left stick. That way, you can proceed with minimal disturbance. I was being sarcastic, Major. I don't care how, how you move in the grass. Control here. We have evidence of an enemy intruder. Commence alert formation. Acknowledged. Sending reinforcements. Use extra caution. There we go. Now we can move. Dom, 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 dom. So right now it's 50% camouflage, 70%. Fifty-five, but I think overall this gamma flush is good for this starting area. I'm not sure if we can, if we're gonna see any enemies here. We can use a B sensor, I guess. Don't have a gun, we should just go. Dum 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 bum 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 bum. Dolina Vodna. There we go, now we can hear. Bing! You got these there. Maybe. Nah, they just hide for now. They just hide for those 30 seconds because the, the, the guy will turn around soon. I don't want to get spotted. Then we're gonna use CQC to take him down. Now our my camouflage is on 80%. If we stand up, it's gonna be like 55 or something. 50. I can't get across this bridge anyway, I have to wait. I don't have the tranquilizer, so there's no other way. HQ, please respond. This is HQ. Patrol here. The situation is normal. Understood. Return to your position. There we go, now he's going across the bridge. Dom, 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 dom. I'm gonna seek you, see the shit out of them. Do I have to carry the knife first? Probably. Speak. Speak. If you slide down cliffs, you won't take any damage. 
Oh. Say something else. Oh. Answer me. Answer me. Let go of me. I won't. Say something oh. interesting. Oh. Speak. If you slide down close. Okay. Oh. 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 There we go. Oh. Get something in you. You got a grenade. Now we can't find anything useful here. Now once again we can actually go... Actually I think I'm gonna see some enemy here. Yeah, there's a guy somewhere here, I don't know where exactly. Falling. Press the action button above branches. Okay. Oh, answer me. Answer me. Under the rope bridge. Flatten yourself against the cliff wall and proceed. <laughs> I don't want to kill him. Whoa, ho, ho. Man, we almost got caught there. See, even 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 though they got they've seen they've seen you for a few seconds, the alert is still not triggered. The alert is triggered only if they're gonna shoot at you or only if uh, if they call for reinforcement. Now we got a we got a new camouflage here. Go boom 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 boom. Let's see, maybe he can drop something. Something good. Guys, it's Friday night. What are we doing on this Friday night? Except playing games. Do you guys have any plans? For later? No, I don't like mushrooms, but... I want something else, snakes, or whatever, some real food. Paramedic. I see you caught yourself a green tree python. Yeah. The green tree python isn't venomous, so no need to worry. It's fairly docile too, so I don't think it's likely to attack you. The green tree python originally comes from Australia and New Zealand. It's a really pretty green color and it lives... Oh my god. What's wrong? Snake, what did I just say? They come from Australia and New Zealand. No, after that. They're a really pretty green color. I thought so. What was I thinking? Seeing a snake and calling it pretty? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Everything. When a normal woman sees a snake, she's supposed to scream or get sick or something like that. Yeah, like my and mom. You think you're normal. What was that? N nothing. Oh, it's all your fault. Jeez, I'm sorry. But enough of that. How does it what taste? What do you mean, enough of that? This is serious. How does it no, taste? No, I, I just wanted you to tell me how it tastes. How should I know? <sighs> it was awfully pretty, though. I see you caught an otten frog. The otten frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. You gotta know lo a lot a about animals so after this game. Catching them for food. The otten frog was originally found only on Amami Oshima in Japan. Frogs usually have four toes on their front legs, but the otten frog is unique in that it has five. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? <laughs> right. So that means they must taste pretty, pretty good. good. Huh? I guess so. I hear that in Japan, otten frog sashimi and sukiyaki are popular dishes. Really? What about France? Yeah. Japan, huh? That place is starting to sound better and better. 
You don't like mushrooms? Yeah, the, uh, I only like mushrooms in, on, on pizza and that's it. On pizza is perfect. Okay, I, I'm lying. I like mushroom soup. That's okay. I mean... It's not, like, it's not that bad, mushrooms. Like, it, it's not like my favorite food, but it's not that bad. I see you caught yourself a Japanese flying squirrel. Yeah. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous and they shouldn't attack you. But I'll the head, them. front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Yeah, I had a hard time catching one. So, aren't you going to ask me? How does it taste? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure? The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. <laughs> then I must be the first one. <sighs> maybe uh, you are. Maybe you are. <sighs> okay, we didn't hear anything from Sijin. Um... You mean you're not wearing any face paint? No. You can take off your face paint by selecting no paint from face. Just select no paint when you want to skip wearing any face paint at all. But your camo index is never going to be as high without face paint as it is with it. Unless you want the enemy to see you, you ought to be wearing face paint. Yeah, uh, uh, I guess we still have to call him from the for the weapons that we picked up. What about stun grenade? Hmm. I've never seen a grenade like that one before. There are two basic types of grenades. Fragmentation grenades, which use shrapnel to kill or maim the target, and explosive grenades, which use the blast from the explosion as the offensive means. But the grenade you've got there isn't either of those. My best guess is that it's meant to knock the enemy out without hurting them. Mm -hmm. Most likely it's an entirely new kind of weapon developed exclusively at Groznygrad. I've heard that the SAS is working on a low-impact grenade for training purposes, but I never thought they'd be used in an actual battle. The flash of light that occurs when the grenade explodes is probably produced by magnesium. It's the same stuff that's used in camera flashes. I'm thinking they cut down on killing power by reducing the amount of explosives and made up for it by making the flash and bang so strong that it overwhelms the enemy's senses. I guess you could call it a stun grenade. If I'm going to be stunned, I'd rather it be by a woman. <laughs> Snap out of it. Anyone around when that thing goes off will be laid out. It ought to come in handy when you're trying to storm a room or when you don't want to kill the enemy. Okay, uh... I think I picked up a shaft grenade? Yeah, shaft grenade, small grenade. Look how many items we have. Grenade. Um, that's a weird grenade you got there. From what I can tell, it's an anti-electronics weapon that works by scattering a bunch of metal foil in the air to interfere with radio signals. Call it a chaff grenade, if you will. By using a chaff grenade, you can disrupt the function of enemy radios and electronic ah, devices then, then for a short period of time. For maybe. But keep in mind that as long as the chaff is in effect, you won't be able to use your motion detector or active sonar either. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. What about small grenade? I'm gonna call for small grenade and grenade and then we're gonna continue. Thinking of using a smoke grenade, huh? As you might expect, smoke grenades can be used to create a smoke screen. The combustion agent is a mixture of zinc oxide, ammonium chloride, aluminum, and some other stuff. When it explodes, it releases a thick cloud of grayish white smoke that resists dispersion. That should provide some nice cover. The smoke will confuse the enemy by blocking their field of vision. That'll help you out when you're trying to make a quick getaway. It also works the other way around. You can use it as cover to sneak up on an enemy position. The smoke screen should work just as well when you're being chased by dogs, too. Not the dogs! And I guess he knows all about the grenade, right? Gonna use a grenade, huh? That's an RGD-5, the standard blast fragmentation grenade of the Soviet Army. The grenade itself is composed of two steel-plated casings. Each of those casings has an inner fragment liner that causes it to burst into over 300 shards when the grenade explodes. 
The grenade will deliver heavy damage to any enemies within its blast area. The safety pin is on the opposite side relative to the M26, so be sure to hold the safety lever down with your finger when you grip it. The safety is released when you actually throw the grenade, and it'll explode about three seconds later. So what you're saying is, it won't explode in my hand while I didn't I'm know that. It. Of course not. Oh. oh. To throw a grenade, press and release the weapon button. Remember that how far you throw it depends on how long in the MGS button's one, pressed. MGS2, it can, a it short can tap will drop it close to you, and a long press will lob it away. It'll probably be easier to control your throw if you do it in first-person view. Yeah, in the in the first and second game, it will it will explode in your hand actually. I I died like that once when when I was fighting the. Um, who was what? Oh yeah, yeah, the the tank. Vulcan Raven uh, in the first game. We got some snakes here. Oh. Let's see if we can find something else. I think we can find some weapon here. There we go. AK-47. I'm gonna call Sagan about the about the new weapons later. I don't, I'm not gonna call him right now. We got a smoke grenade. Z box. Even though I think there is one funny uh, code call here involved with the box, I might just use that. Let me just see if we can find something else here. There we go. We got a a zombie camo. So if I'm gonna pick the box now, there we go. Motion. Just go in case I'm gonna use. Okay, now if I'm gonna use the box... You've arrived at the factory, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now to meet up with this Adam guy. Good, go to it. So, where is he? We weren't given an exact location. How about a time? Nothing was specified. A physical description? I'm not sure. How am I supposed to find him then? <laughs> You won't need to. Huh? He'll find you. Why don't you try the room to the northeast where you met Sokolov? Adam might be in there. Adam is a spy sent by the KGB to infiltrate Volgin's ranks. You'll need to be extremely careful in how you approach him. Obviously. He can't let Volgin know he's meeting me. That's right. Adam won't show up if you're being pursued by the enemy. Before you go to rendezvous with Adam, make sure you haven't been seen by the enemy. Meet up with him in normal phase. Got it? Yeah, you, those guarded calls you can only get uh, before I enter the room. Uh, Snake, what are you doing? I'm in a box. I'm in a box. A cardboard box? Why are you... I don't know, I was just looking at it and suddenly I got this irresistible urge to get inside. No, not just an urge. More than that, <laughs> it was my destiny to be here. In the in box. In the box. Destiny? Yeah, and then when I put it on, I suddenly got this feeling of inner peace. I can't put it into words. I feel safe. Like this is where I was meant to be. Like I'd found the key to true happiness. Uh-huh. Does any of that make sense? Not even a little. You should come inside the box. Then you'll know what I mean. Man, I don't want to know what you mean. <laughs> Between you and paramedic, is everyone but me that is hooked up with a major strange? <sighs> yeah, well, anyway, I suppose even that dumbass box might make a decent disguise if you wear it inside a building. <laughs> Snake, there are rats living in that area. 
The rats in that area are the descendants of wild Norway rats that were domesticated by humans as pets and lab animals. They're not poisonous, and I don't think they'll attack you, but they're quick little creatures, so you might have a hard time catching one. Uh-huh. So how do they taste? <laughs> Snake. What? They're rats. I know what they are. Do they taste okay? How could I know? The guide says they're not that bad. Good enough for me. <laughs> Maybe you should find one of those rats now. Do you want to save? Yeah. Then I'm gonna go into the room and we're gonna continue. Snake, do you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? No. Nope, never heard of it. These scientists are investigating a place deep in the Amazon called the Black Lagoon, and they get picked off one after the other by this fishman thing. And there was this scene when the heroine is going for a swim and the creature sneaks up on her from underwater. Oh, I thought my heart was going to stop. I mean, of course, the 3D effects in It Came From Outer Space were a lot more intense, but... It wouldn't be referring to you coming from outer space, would it? How rude! Why do you say that? Because no one on Earth could be as charming as you. <sighs> Fine. I'll just get to the point, Snake. Be careful of what's around you when you're in the water. Just imagining you swimming in those jungle rivers makes me think of you being attacked by a fishman. Fishman? I appreciate the concern. Fishmen aren't the only things that'll attack you in the water. Really be careful out there. Okay. And don't be attacking any pretty girls going for a swim, either. <laughs> Are you calling me a fish man? You started it. If an alligator will attack you when you're gonna be under the water, you can, uh, you, you will actually get one shot at the thing. You can see another one of those frogger here. <laughs> Uh -oh, uh -oh. Oh! So I can apparently Didn't they say I can open the Open the door like that slowly I don't know There's nobody here Where is this Adam guy? Major Zero Adam won't show up if you're being pursued by the enemy. Before you go to rendezvous with Adam, make sure you haven't been seen by the enemy. Meet up with him in normal phase. Got it? Got it. He's not here. Are you the agent they sent? Are you Adam? I thought you were supposed to be a man. Adam couldn't make it. All right, say the password. <laughs> Who are the Patriots? Who are, Who the, are Patriots? the Patriots? Answer me! <laughs> Trapped! Get down! Get down! Mm-hmm. 
The name's Eva. <laughs> oh. So, uh, what was your name? This wasn't part of the plan. What happened to Adam? What's your code name? It's Snake. Snake, huh? Well, I'm Eva. Are you here to tempt me? What happened to Adam? Colonel Volgan is a very suspicious man. He decided Adam wasn't the right person for this mission. And you were? Yes. Why? Because I can do things he can't. I heard you used to be a codebreaker for the NSA. I was. Four years ago, I defected to the Soviet Union with Adam. Mauser military. The broom handle. It packs quite a punch. Nice to have when you're on a bike. You held it sideways and used the muzzle jump to create a horizontal sweep. That was impressive. Bet you've never seen that technique in the West. It's imitation, isn't it? Yeah. It's a Chinese Type 17 pistol. Around here, even that's hard to come by. Don't worry, though. The one I've got for you is American-made. Now the autism begins. <clears throat> 45, huh? Hmm. Incredible. Do you like it? The feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. The slide's been reinforced. And the interlock with the frame is tightened for added precision. The sight system is original too. The thumb safety is extended to make it easier on the finger. A long type trigger with non-slip grooves. A ring hammer. The base of the trigger guard's been filed down for a higher grip. And not only that, nearly every part of this gun has been expertly crafted and customized. Where'd you get something like this? I grabbed it from a Western munitions armory. It probably used to belong to one of your officers. And there are more where that came from. You had this with you, didn't you? Better take this too. What's that? A disguise to make you look like a scientist. A disguise? Disguise? Yes. You're here to rescue Sokolov, right? Sokolov's still safe then. Yes. He's being forced to continue his work on the Shagohat. Where? At the lab. They've got a whole army of scientists there developing new weapons. Security is tight, but if you disguise yourself as a scientist, you might be able to sneak in. Can we get Sokolov out of there? We'll see, won't we? Tell me how to get to the lab. The safest way in is from the rear. <clears throat> First, you'll need to head north through the jungle. You'll come to a heliport used for shipping materials. Pass the heliport and continue north and there will be a large crevice. Descend into that area and you'll reach a cave. Move through the cave and you will arrive at a mangrove swamp. After the swamp, there'll be a warehouse. Make your way through the warehouse and you'll come out just south of the lab. Got it. And just what are you doing there? <laughs> In close range combat, a knife can sometimes be more useful than a gun. By doing this, I'll be able to hold a knife at the same time and still keep the gun steady. That way, I can instantly switch between a gun battle and a knife fight. <laughs> Is it aut autism? Right, let's get going. Wait a minute. What now? You must be tired. Why don't you take a little rest? I'll be fine. You'll never make it in your condition. It's a jungle out there. There's still an hour before dawn. Well, I guess it's it could dangerous take some rest. to be out in the jungle at night without a guide. 
What about you? I have to get back. I can't be gone for too long. They'll start to suspect something. Don't worry. I'll keep you updated over the radio. That's it? My orders are to provide you with information. Nothing more. Oh. You look disappointed. All right, then. I'll do something special for you. <laughs> I'll stand watch until dawn. Now be a good boy and lie down. Yes, Mom? What's the matter? I don't know you well enough to trust you. How well do you have to know me to trust me? I don't know if I can trust anybody. Gonna get that? Major, now is not the time! She's right, Snake. You should get some sleep. Although, in your condition, you really ought to be back in the ICU. Whenever you save the game and quit, you'll go to sleep. Sleeping allows you to gain back stamina naturally. Depending on how long you sleep, you may also recover naturally from sickness and injury. When you're tired or hurt, the best thing to do is just get some sleep. So do yourself a favor and take a nap. Doctor's orders, okay? Yeah, okay. Hi, so up the game. What is she doing? Who is she contacting? Open your fucking eyes! Huh. What's the matter? We're surrounded. I see four of them. We've got company. It's the Ocelot unit. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Hurry! Priorities. Don't forget your gear. Here, give me a hand. Should have put that bed in front of the door. We can use this to get to the basement. Damn it! That's a lot. I'll get past them on my bike. I'll call you later. Okay. I'll keep them busy. Huh? Don't go dying on me now. Uh. Now we have multiple choices here. What if we want, do we want to fight? Do we just want to go here? Boom. Gotta go the inside. Can I call Major Tom, maybe? Major Zero. It appears you've been completely surrounded. Yeah, so I gathered. If Eva is to escape from there... Right. I'll have to take them all out. Snake, you must defeat all the Ocelots. That's the only way to ensure Eva's safe escape, as well as your own. But you're up against a lot of them. Don't try to take them head on. Approach them without being seen and dispatch them one by one. And don't forget to use your camouflage. Okay. Not only that, we I have to change the backpack and use the tranquilizer instead of this. 
Now we can use tranquilizer gun. We don't want to kill anyone. Boom. I'm probably gonna be detected here. I always get detected here during this. Uh... You see one guy up there. Can I maybe increase my camouflage level? Plus 5. No, that's the best I can get. I can get 80%. Now there is one guy. Did we lose him? Up there. What? Not here? He's not here? Keep looking. There we go. Boom! I don't think these guys will ever wake up until uh, I'm gonna take down all of them. Now I think one of them is gonna be here. There we go. Fucking grass. Like, I barely can see. Okay, there we go. Five more to go. Move. Alright, let's go here. Maybe now I can increase my camouflage again. Not there, face, no, that's the maximum I can get. Did you see something? Ah! I see something? I think they're gonna go, oh, they're, they're all gonna go here now. There we go, one is already going. Another one down. What? Oh, come on. Did they see me? Huh? There we go. Should have used that bug before. <laughs> now. I know one of them is gonna be here. There we go. Now, where, where is the last one? Oh wait, that's it! Enemy zero zero. Oh! Heidi ho! I guess I can check if they're gonna drop something. See medicine. This guy got a ration. Silencer, that's really good. Did I already check this guy? AK-47 bullets. Now, what I really want to find is... A fucking rat. She told me that there are rats here. But I don't see any rat. Yeah, they just leave. Something on you? Type stick. I don't know what it is. We got a uh, bullets. I would really like to find. Oh, mine detector, nice. I really love to find uh, some uh, some more suppressors, but if I can't find it, it is what it is. Desmond, this guy, such a kid. 
I think I already checked this guy. Noodles! Waiting for this moment. That's it. That's the stance. That's the stance. I don't think so. What? A female spy? This bitch is wearing perfume. <laughs> Stay where you are. I've had enough of your judo. I see you've got yourself a single action army. That's right. There'll be no accidents this time. You, you call, call that, that an accident? accident? Well, it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been showing off. What did you say? It's a nice gun, I'll give you that. But the engraving gives you no tactical advantage whatsoever. Unless you were planning to auction it off as a collector's item. <sighs> and you're forgetting one more very basic thing. You don't have what it takes to kill me. We'll see. About we'll see. That. Let's see, he would actually shot him. What did you mean by that? Six shots. Huh? That thing only carries six shots. The Makarov carries eight. You have to get a feel for how many you have left. This is a high-class weapon. It's not meant for shooting people. Damn! <laughs> this isn't over yet. Rookie mistake. Don't. Why? He's still young. You'll regret stopping me. Damn it! I've got to get back before he does. Rasmet. Should we eat something? S not eaten yet. Let's try it out. Oh, we can actually see a video. Occasionally, you will see a video of a snake eating a soft food, or maybe when, we, when we're gonna, when we will have to take a bullet out of our body, we'll see the video, something like that. I don't know what's the like percentage, like what's the chance of a uh, video being shown, but yeah, sometimes it can happen. That's tasty. That's tasty. There are also like a few more things here. Um, I think if you're gonna use cure, if you're gonna press, if I'm gonna press. Maybe not. Like, if I'm gonna press R2 uh, two times in a row, he will do something, he will do a... Uh, you see some kind of a uh, pose. Let me see, um... How can I not do that? Info... 
I don't wanna see that viewer. If I'm gonna go like this and now? I don't know. Um Let's see, I guess we can call let me just equip um we can make some code calls here before I'm gonna continue. About this and tranquilizer for example. Let's call Major Zero first. It looks like you've got rid of all the ocelots. Yeah. Now proceed with the rescue of Sokolov. According to Eva, you should start by going to the crevice to the north and... Can we trust her? What's that? Eva is with the KGB, isn't she? Can I really believe what she says? How do I know she won't double-cross me? There are no guarantees in espionage, Snake. Only calculated guesses. At this point in time, the KGB stands nothing to gain by stabbing us in the back. So you're saying I can trust her? I'm saying the chance that she'll betray you is low. Ah. Uh, uh. Of course, we checked the route she gave you against our own data. It looks like a pretty solid infiltration route. It makes good use of weak spots in the enemy's defenses. You shouldn't have any problems. Follow the route Eva showed you and proceed with the mission. Roger. First, enter the cave through the crevice. The goon cave. Eva said it was to the north, so head that way. Okay. First, enter the cave through the crevice. Eva said it was uh, to the so north. Maybe he's gonna tell me something about Arakan. You got some instant noodles, huh? Yeah. Instant noodles. Instant noodles. Uh huh. It was invented in Japan just recently. Add some hot water and it's ready to eat. It's cheap and can be stored for a long time. And besides, it's delicious. It's like a miracle food. A miracle food. Wow. Speaking of which. Yeah. Are you going to eat that? I was planning on it. Yeah. Oh, all right. Is there some reason I shouldn't? No, that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? I was just going to say that if you weren't going to eat it, you should bring it back to me. I've always wanted to try some. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I see you've got yourself a ration. Rations are portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. I've heard some nasty stories about how they taste. It looks like the rumors are true. Great. Great. Hey, you should be grateful. Those things are designed to last. No matter how long you keep a ration, it'll never go bad. And they're surprisingly good for you, too. I'd take a snake over this any day, even if it's a little rotten. You are hopeless. <laughs> uh, I guess I can call second. Hey, Snake, remember back at the abandoned factory when you whittled the grip of that 45 down? Yeah. I've never heard of a customization like that before. Why the grip? the grip? To fit it with a knife. A knife? You're gonna keep the knife and the gun both at the ready? That's the idea. Why would you want to do that? Sometimes a knife works better in close proximity encounters. So I equip both at the same time. That way I can switch back and forth in an instant. Badass. <laughs> so that's that. Seek you see. Seek you see. Seek you see, baby. Snake, you said Eva said her Mauser was a Type 17, right? Yeah, what about it? That model was produced in the 1920s in a weapons lab in the Shangxi province in China. The cartridge part sticks out lower than the original to accommodate 45 caliber rounds. The barrel and chamber are a little bit thicker, too. But most telling of all, it's got Chinese characters engraved on both sides of the frame like you saw. And that firing stance Eva was talking about where you hold the gun horizontally? That's a trademark of the Chinese. Just like you were saying, when you're firing in full auto mode, the muzzle jump effect gives you a horizontal strafing motion. They say it's especially deadly in indoor and close range mop up actions. The Japanese called it bandit shooting and used to dread it. Makes you wonder where she learned to shoot like that. Like so many optional calls here in this game. Way more than in MGS2 and MGS1. Can you tell me something about tranquilizer gun? You know that army motorcycle that Eva was riding? I don't care about That's a replica of a German model. A replica? A replica. Yeah. After World War II, the Soviets confiscated an entire assembly line from a German motorcycle factory. Machines and all. And then they took it back with them and started producing replicas? Exactly. Originally, that motorcycle was designed to be used with a sidecar attached. That means it's got enough power to drag a 200-plus pound sidecar around. So that's how she could pull off all those crazy stunts. Uh-huh. 
Of course, it takes a lot of skill to be able to control that much power. That Eva chick is something else. The weapon you've got equipped now go. is a prototype model of the Mark 22, a suppressor-equipped pistol currently in development by the Navy. It's been modified to act as a tranquilizer gun. The Mark 22 is a heavily modified special ops version of the M39 pistol used as a sidearm by the SEALs. Probably the biggest change from the M39 is that it's got a longer barrel, which allows it to be equipped with a suppressor. And it uses a slide lock mechanism. That makes it a lot quieter, but it also means you have to load a new round into the chamber by hand every time you fire. It's also fitted with tall, adjustable sights, so you can use the front and rear sights to line up your shot, even with a suppressor attached. Looks like they got rid of the magazine safety, too. Good eye. Good that eye. feature wasn't too popular with guys like you who know their guns. The sheer release lever's been taken off as well, meaning the hammer won't fall even with the safety on. So I can just cock and lock. That, and you get the added bonus of not having any mechanical noise from decocking, even with the safety on. The perfect pistol for a sneaking mission, huh? All right. I mean, I might as well call him just for this guy as well, and so I can remove it from my uh, from my backpack. One more time. Hey, you've got an M1911 A1. Yeah, a 45. The dishes? 50 years since the army adopted the first dinner. model and they're still, still using them. It's a real gem of an automatic pistol. But aren't you going to need more than just one little handgun? Not at all. Not at all. When you're in a tight spot or fighting in close quarters, sometimes a handgun works better than a rifle. And if I equip a knife at the same time, I can instantaneously switch over to hand-to-hand -hand combat. I see. That 45 you've got there is a lot different from the original, though. Looks like someone did some serious work on it. It's more than a little. First of all, the feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. It's not going to have any feeding problems. The slide's been replaced with a reinforced version, and it meshes perfectly with the frame. <laughs> the frame itself has been iron welded and scraped down multiple times okay, for maximum precision. Hey, calm precision. down, big boss. The front strap part I mean, of the frame snake. has been checkered to make it dig into the hand. That prevents any slipping. The sight system's original, too. It's a three-dot type. It's got an enlarged front sight, giving it superior target sighting capability. The regular hammer's been replaced with a ring hammer. That enhances the cocking control and increases the hammer down speed. They also reworked the grip safety to accommodate the ring hammer. Looks like they eliminated it altogether. This is a tool for pros. The thumb safety and the slide stop are extended to allow for more precise handling. The base of the trigger guard is whittled down so you can use a high grip. And the trigger itself is a long type for easy finger access. The trigger pull is about 3.5 pounds. That's about a pound and a half lighter than normal. The magazine well has been widened to make it easier to put in a new magazine. The magazine catch button has been cut down low to make it harder to hit it by mistake. The mainspring housing has been changed to a flat type to increase <laughs> Come grip. On, snake. And it's even been fitted with stepping so it doesn't slip from the recoil when firing. On top of that, they added cocking serrations to the front part of the slide. That lets you load and eject cartridges faster in an emergency. Whoever did this is a professional. No question, this thing could shoot a one hole at 25 yards in a machine rest. Well, I'll be damned. That's some gun. Yeah, I've never used a weapon this fine in my life. <laughs> Jesus, Snake. Okay, let me just uh, remove it from my inventory. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use that one, NK-22. Um, so we have to remove this, sun, chef, smoke, directional, like I don't need anything except those two, I guess I can maybe, no, no, no nothing else, uh, let's save the game, let the man gun gas him, yeah I mean th that was way too much, calm down snake.
You want to save? I want to save, Parabatic. Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? Yeah, you told me already. So this astronomer sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. No, you don't get it. Precisely because it's realistic. With the images jumping out of the screen at you, it makes for a nice escape from reality. I have to admit it made my eyes tired, but it was really intense. Unfortunately, they don't make very many of those movies anymore. When did it come out? I was still in college, so probably about ten years ago? Nine Guess 50. I'm out of luck then. You know, they're coming out with household versions of video cassette recorders. You don't One say. day you'll be able to see old movies anytime you want. It'll be like having a movie theater in your own home. Wow. Really? It's like if you had a record with movie film etched onto it instead of music. It'll work the same way. You're kidding. No, really. And someday they might make movies where you control the characters yourself. Wow. Sounds like magic. It'll happen. Make sure you stay alive to see it, Snake. <laughs> Man, I love this conversation so much. Like, even though there are a lot of optional calls, codec calls in the game, like, they're so good. Horny Prude. Now here, if an if an alligator will actually uh, uh, grab you uh, while you're uh, under the water, I think that one is a poison. Yeah, I think that one is a uh, is a uh, venomous. If an gator will ca will grab you while while you're in the water, it can actually insta kill you. I'm gonna capture two of those. Now here we can also see lo a lot of fishes. If you're gonna throw a stun grenade, I think we can actually get a lot of them. Let's see. Only one. Maybe I had to use. Maybe I have to throw the grenade. Actually, not a stun grenade. Let's try this. That's how we hunt in the how how we go fishing in Croatia. <laughs> we don't use fishing rod. We just throw grenades. Daddy, look what I found! Nice catch, son! <laughs> Ooh, another snake! Come on, turn around! <laughs> Ooh, are you pissed? <laughs> I want to throw another grenade into his mouth. Now this snake will try to bite me, I think. Oh! Where's the gator? Where's the gator? Ooh! Look at him! What you gonna do? What you gonna do? <laughs> Stop seeing me, you bitch! There you go. Murder freak? What do you mean murder freak? I ain't murder freak, you bitch. Look at that frog. Here we got smoke grenade. VPG. What the fuck is VPG? What is VPG? VP grenade. What? 
Alright, we have to call Sigan for this one. I have no idea what Whippy Grenade is. Oh, did you hear that sound? I'm gonna show you what that sound was, but let me just call Sigan first. No! Snake, look at your body. Yep. Look at Looking good. good. Not there. <laughs> then where? See the leeches? So that was a leech. Leeches? Leeches? Yeah, you've got leeches all over you. Leeches will sometimes attach themselves to you if you spend a long time in the water or the swamp. When you've got leeches on you, they'll suck your blood, causing you to lose stamina. You should get rid of them as soon as possible. To get rid of leeches, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and press your cigar into them. Or, if you use the insecticidal bug juice ahead of time, the leeches won't bother you as long as the bug juice is in effect. There you go. Now you know about the leeches. Now we can actually... Like when you hear that sound, something like that. You see? Wow! It, oh, I thought it was on my dick. <laughs> I thought it was on my dick. Blood sucking leeches attached to the body. Sounds like you, Queen, to you blood sucking leech. To remove the leeches, burn them off with your, your a lit cigar. There we go. Oh, I, I guess since I'm here, I didn't show you before. If we're gonna spin snake like that for about 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, that was more than 10 seconds. Now we're gonna leave. <laughs> he will puke. Okay, let's call Sigand about uh, about this weepy grenade. I don't know what it is. Ah, you're thinking of using a white phosphorus grenade. White phosphorus. Like the name says, a white phosphorus grenade is one that uses white phosphorus to create an incendiary effect. Ah. White phosphorus grenades were used by the U.S. military during World War II. Back then, they were known as Willie Pete's after the first two letters of white phosphorus. The one you've got there is probably the exact same thing. White phosphorus is a white, waxy substance that spontaneously combusts when it reacts with oxygen. The combustion temperature is over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Any human targets within the area of effect when it explodes are going to get seriously burned. Just make sure you don't accidentally set yourself on fire. If your body does catch on fire, either plunge into some water or take off the burning clothes and put on new ones. Rolling repeatedly should put the flames out pretty quick, too. This snake is on fire! And I'm gonna get one call for AK. Let's see, what, uh, what is this weapon? Got yourself an AK-47, huh? Yeah! The AK-47 is the official assault rifle of the Soviet Army. The first model was completed in 1946, and in 49, it beat out all its competitors to become the standard assault rifle of the Soviet military. It uses 7.62 millimeter by 39 rounds developed in 1943 and a 30-round box magazine originally designed for a different assault rifle. You can aim it from the shoulder by equipping it in first-person view and holding down the aim button. It's sturdy and extremely reliable with high power and precision. There's no better assault rifle in the world. If the AK-47 was developed in 1943, why wasn't it called uh, AK-9043? Or maybe the guy who invented AK-47 was 47 year old? Oh yeah, I equipped the grenade because I wanted to throw him in the, in the gator's mouth. But they're not here uh, outside. On the... on the... on the... On the field, I guess. Uh, I, I'm gonna go there to the left. Oh, whoa, 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 Can I get a call, code, code call about how to swim? Snake, I see you're in the water. Yes. 
Press the crawl button when you're swimming on the surface claw to dive button. underwater. The controls when you're underwater are quite different from when you're on land. The left stick controls the direction you're facing. Press up, down, left or right to turn in that direction. Press the CQC button or the crawl button to move forward. Each button press will move you one stroke forward. Press the button repeatedly to swim faster. You can also press the action button to surface in an emergency. While you're swimming, you can use the right stick to look in a different direction without changing the direction you're going. Okay, thank you. No, 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 no. See, there's a gator there. You can actually... Oh shit, look at my stamina. Holy moly, my stamina is fucked. Because I have a leech. Once again. Hmm, what's what's on today's menu? Let's eat. Said to be fairly tasty. Let's try it out. Pretty tasty. Ooh, pretty tasty. Another leech. Jeez, there's so many gators here. If he's gonna, oh shit, one is there. Another leech. <laughs> Another leech. Holy moly. You see how how fast my stamina is going down now because of the leech. And you can actually see the leech on the body. One, two, three, four, four leeches. Holy moly. Even more? Wait, only three? I thought I heard. I thought I saw more. Cigar, cigar, cigar. Ah, uh, yeah, but you can still see the leech. Uh, you see on his leg, on the left leg. I don't know if you guys can see actually. You probably can on the like on one of one of one on his left ass. Snake, are you there? Eva? Eva! Did you miss me? Did you make it without any trouble? With every bullet no one so far. Me. So you're back with Volgan? In a matter of speaking. What about the boss? Yeah, she's here too. Better be careful. Thanks, I will. The boss and I get along pretty well, though. I guess we traitors have a lot in common. Why would anyone want to defect? Betraying your country like that, I, I just don't get it. Are you talking about the boss? Why'd you do it? Weren't you born and raised in America? Yes, in a small rural town. I never even knew there were other countries, other cultures, other ways of thinking. Until I went to work for the NSA. And one day, I found I'd lost faith in the things I'd been taking for granted. What did you see? What was it that made you want to change sides? Dicks. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. Dicks. I saw the universe. The universe? Not the actual universe. The universe as the intelligence community sees it. I realized that the gravity in this universe was holding me back. That's all. People and countries are both changed by their environment. And by the times. That sounds like what the boss was saying. There's a world of difference between this country and America. But it's only a difference of position, a difference of perspective. Coming here made me realize something. Half of what I'd been told was a complete and utter lie. The other half was a conveniently constructed lie. Where's the truth then? It's hidden in the lies. Are you lying too? Who knows? I've been trained to make even the most severe falsehood sound like the honest truth. Weren't you? No. I believe because I have to. Even if it is a lie. That's part of my mission. I'll have to remember that. If you need me, give me a call on the radio. My frequency is 142.52. See ya. Not if I see ya first. I'm imagining things. I'm not imagining things. You can see the leech on the left leg.
Now you can, wait a minute, you can actually go here or maybe down there. I guess there are two ways where we can go to. We can go there or we can go there, but there is there's another reason why I went here. And hopefully I'm not gonna fuck it up. Oh, wait a minute. You see that thing there? I guess I can show it to you right away. If you're gonna walk here, like you can actually see from here that it's a trap. And if you're gonna walk really closely, I think there's gonna be exclamation mark. No. Ooh. Major. It looks like you've got rid of all the ocelots. Yeah. Yeah. Now proceed with the rescue of Sokolov. According to Eva, you should start by going to the crevice to the north and can we trust her? What's that? Eva is with the KGB. Well, we already heard that conversation. All right, so let's go here now. The reason why I went here because because there is a secret. I mean, not secret. There is a, there is a one really good item here. Are you kidding me? Oh, I should have I should have go down. Ah. I fuck it up. Fuck it up, let's do this again. Another leech, holy fuck. Look at that fish. <laughs> oh, but I can't collect when it's... When the fish is sleeping, I can't collect it. Another leech. Jesus fucking Christ, Queen, to cut it off. We actually get a secret, not secret, like a video where he's getting uh, his leech out. Ah! I think the hard, the hardest. Uh, video that you can uh, trigger like that is when the snake is pulling uh putting uh, pulling a uh, a bullet out of his arm because it has to be hit on the like on his left arm specifically so now let's see i think we have to do this oh shit oh first let's eat something because uh my stamina is kind of low green tree python ask about flavor but wasn't answered let's try it out what can I say? What can I say? Okay, you know what? My stamina is already fucked up. I'll have to go back here and then go down. There we go. Now let's go down. There we go. Hopefully I won't, I'm not gonna fuck it up. Uh, I think that's okay. Something li like there. <coughs> nice! Alright, we did it. First try. Actually, second try. I'm not sure if we can do pull-ups here in this game. Oh yeah, we can. In MGS2, if you did 100 pull-ups like that, you would get a, a grip strength level 2 with a maximum of level 3. I'm not sure if it's like that in this game as well or not. <laughs> okay, so now we found a croc cap. The best item in the game.
The reason why I have all those items is too because I uh I we, I we still have to call Sigint about uh about those items. Dun 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 <laughs> Look at him. Dun, 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 dun. Look how he the mouth opens up when he's uh down. <laughs> Now uh, we can get a few codec calls about this. You got some instant noodles, huh? Instant. Uh, we already heard that. Wow, you caught a coral snake. The coral snake is a venomous snake that originally hails from the Americas. Did you hear that? Its venom is a very potent neurotoxin, so don't let it bite you. If you do get bitten, go into the survival viewer right away. I think we heard that. I see you've caught a coral sn I, I mean, a milk snake. The milk snake closely resembles the coral snake, but it's actually mm, not venomous. Didn't hear that one. Even so, you'll still take damage if it bites you, so don't get too close. Hmm. So, is there a way to tell the difference between a milk snake and a coral snake? It's pretty difficult. They really do look almost exactly alike. I guess if I had to pick something, I'd say it's that the milk snake is much less aggressive. Okay. Ah, I just thought of a better way. You're going to love this. What? How do they taste like? Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Yeah. The guide says milk snakes don't taste very good. Is that right? But if I've already caught and eaten it, what does it matter which kind of snake it was? It doesn't, does it? Shoot. I thought I had a good idea. <laughs> I see you've captured a poison Come dart frog. Come on. Tell me about the, the poison crop dart crop. frog is native to the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. They normally grow between two and five centimeters in length, but for some reason the ones in that area seem to be much bigger than that. Poison dart frogs are known to carry a potent neurotoxin called pomeliotoxin. Long ago people used the poison to coat their arrows for hunting. Watch out because if you eat one, you'll get food poisoning. Ooh. I see you've got yourself a ration. You heard about that as well? Rations are poor. Yeah, we heard that. Snake, what are there you- There we go. How does it look? How does it look? It looks cool. Huh? It looks cool on you. It does? Yeah. I don't think cool is the right word. Why? What's wrong with it? What's wrong? Don't you think it looks silly? Doesn't it make you laugh? Aren't you <laughs> going to ask me what the hell I was thinking? No. Huh. I think it really does look good. It reminds me of the alligator people. Oh, the... What? What? The Alligator People. It's a science fiction movie. You've never heard of it? No. Oh, well, you should see it sometime. It's about this guy who gets hurt in a car accident and tries to heal his wounds by injecting himself with a crocodile serum, but then his head turns into a crocodile head. <laughs> you look just like him with the mask on. That's awesome! Right. Huh? Huh? That swamp seems pretty deep. It's probably deep enough to dive underwater and swim around. Press the crawl button when you're swimming on the surface to dive underwater. I'm not sure if he's gonna say something about Unlike the rock Unlike what app. you've experienced in training, you'll be able to fire handguns and assault rifles underwater. Keep that in mind. Snake, you'll be helpless if a crocodile attacks you yeah, in the water. Yeah, they can one-shot you. You can't you. see behind you when you're swimming. So if you're in a crocodile-infested swamp, Keep an eye on your six. Also, by using your sensors, you should be able to detect crocodiles before they get too close. Okay, what about Sigint? A cap shaped like a crocodile head, you say? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. Whoa. You know, animal disguises are one of the oldest tricks in the book in the intelligence world. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I've heard that during World War II, the OSS used to use cow suits. Supposedly, they sent agents out to hide in herds of real cows so they could spy on enemy units as they passed by. Nowadays, I guess most people wouldn't even give a crocodile-shaped cap a second look. They think it was just a gag item. But if you use it the right way, it can be an effective weapon for spying. I gotta hand it to you, Snake. You're one sharp guy. <sighs> you okay, Snake? Now forget it. Huh? In the World War II, they used cow suit, huh? Quinto, your mom wouldn't have to use suit. 
first enter the cave. You heard that. Snake, your number one priority in this mission is rescuing Sokolov. Eva said he is in the lab, so head over there. Right. Do you okay. remember how to get to the lab? You mean what Eva told me? Yes. Of course I do. All right, repeat it for me. Major, do you think I'd forget something <laughs> like that? Let's hear it then. First I head north. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come to a crevice. And then? And then? Uh... <laughs> All right, let's go over this one more time. First, head north through the jungle. Enter the cave through the crevice to the north. He's not the sharpest. Follow the cave to the end and you'll come out in an aqueduct Tool surrounded by a mangrove. Follow the aqueduct to the north and you should arrive at a warehouse. Climb out of the water and enter the warehouse. After you've infiltrated the warehouse, pass through it to the north. Then you'll emerge in the woods again. The lab will be directly to the north. Are we clear now? Yeah. Yeah. Snake. I got it, I got it. Basically, I just head north, right? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I love those conversations. Eva? That area is known as Chorni Prud. The name means something like the Black Shore. Ah, we can call Russian. her and then she, she it will tell us name from about the deep every swamp single that area. Covers the area. I'm not gonna call the her for The crocodiles in that swamp are extremely vicious. Apparently, they've already chewed up a bunch of soldiers out on patrol. Now, no one even dares to go near the swamp. They said that most of the soldiers who were killed were attacked from behind while they were in the water. You be careful out there. Eva, what kind of unit are those ocelots I fought a little while That's ago? That's gonna be the last call. There the ocelot go. unit is an elite group composed of soldiers handpicked from among the ranks of Spetsnaz, the special forces wing of Gru. They've undergone even more rigorous training than regular Spetsnaz. Their skill with weapons is the stuff of legends. You'll find they're much better shots than the rest of Gru. Watch yourself. So, Ocelot unit, huh? These croc cap actually have a lot of use. Okay, not a lot of use, but it can be really useful uh, later. Stun grenade, a lot of bullets here. Oh, look! What do we have here? And once again, a fucking leech. Jeez, there's so many of them. Hmm, do we have something else here? We got a uh, mushrooms. Some item there. Two items. Uniform. What kind of uniform is that? Camouflage, uniform. Are you kidding me? Should I go like that? Ah. And then when uh, then I can hear those uh, 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 those frogs I guess. Interesting. I wonder if they're gonna laugh at me for uh, that for that camo. Snake, what is that stuff you're wearing? I don't know. It's called Gakko camo, whatever that means. What? What? Paramedic. You've never heard of Gakko? No. Nope. Never. You must live in a cave or something. Well, excuse me. By the way, Snake, that outfit is really killing your camo index. <laughs> Unless you want the enemy to see you, I suggest you change your clothes as... Why? Why? Because his camo index is... Camo index shmamo index. <laughs> Hold on now. He's wearing the Gakko suit. Why? That's based. Because it looks cute. Snake, talk some sense into her. What's wrong with being cute? <laughs> Am I the only normal person around here? <laughs> okay, that was a good conversation. Snake, there's a fruit called the Galova growing in that area. Galova? Galova? Yeah, it's a fruit that's found only in that region. It's related to the jackfruit, which is commonly found Galova. in Southeast Asia. Jackfruit, huh? Yep, he's a cannibal. 
I didn't say anything. No, I'm sure you... I said I'm sure you'd like it. Oh. Golova means head in Russian. It's probably called that because the fruit grows to about the size of a human head. It's supposedly pretty good to eat with a uniquely sweet flavor. The fruit itself is fairly large, so you can make a meal out of it. Golovas grow directly off the trunk of the tree. If you're running low on stamina, it might be a good idea to keep an eye on the tree trunks. The reason why she called him Cannonball once again is was because uh, uh, because he uh, she said that that's the jackfruit, and Snake told her that his name is Jack. So basically, Jack will eat Jack. Yeah, he's a cannibal. <laughs> she already told him cannibal that he's a cannibal once because uh, uh, we're snake and uh, we are eating snakes as well. I think I'm gonna go with that camouflage and face pattern most of the game. It's a, it's a, it was a great joke. Shut the fuck up, Quintus. Stop laughing. Now here we got another trap here. See there? Woo! 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 I'm gonna go with this as well. But can I s tranquilizer gun? Two should be enough. But I don't want to accidentally pick up the normal gun. Pushaya pass south. And there's an electric fence. We can go through here. Eva? Good. You made it to Bolshaya Pust. The name Bolshaya Pust means something close to the Great Cavity. It probably got that name from the crevice to the north. There's a fortified area in the southern part of Bolshaya Pust that's strung with barbed wire. To the north of that is a relay station that serves as both a depot for material shipments and a communication facility. The crevice leading to the cave is located to the north of the relay station. Head north. The reason why I call her... Because... Be because... There might be... One sec. Mine, there, there, I think they're gonna be mines here. Ah, oh, there we go, there's one. I'm not sure if I can just pick it up. Let's see, maybe Sigint will tell me if I can pick it up. Using the mine detector, huh? Yeah. When you equip the mine detector, it lets you know with a sound if there are any Claymore mines nearby. A mine detector is basically a metal detector, so ordinarily it reacts to scrap iron the same way it reacts to mines. They say that only about one out of every 100 objects it responds to is an actual mine. Not exactly what you call reliable. So they're researching other ways to detect mines, like sniffing for molecules given off by explosives and using a kind of underground radar. One of these days, they might actually make something that works. But the one you're using is apparently set up so that it only reacts when it finds a claymore on the ground. No need to worry about it being fooled by anything other than a mine. Okay, let's just go forward. Hopefully I can just pick it up. Nice. And now we're gonna shoot a dock. Huh? 
啊。Huh? We can actually climb there to jump over the fence. We can go here. There we go. Now I think the guard, yeah, the guard is coming from there. Maybe we should just hide in the grass. Like this. Ooh, he can climb. <laughs> really? <laughs> Jesus, I had to waste two two trank or darts. Oh sh <laughs> No! <laughs> Jesus, why did you wake up? <laughs> Oh no, why did you wake up? Are they already shooting at me? Oh, they know where I am. Let's see, maybe he can hide. I see him. Put him to sleep, there we go. I'm gonna put that guy to sleep as well. Why did why did dog dog wake up so fast? By the way, if I'm gonna pick it up like that and go uh, go with him like here, see, he just got electrocuted and he died. But I don't think this gonna, uh, this will count as a kill, even though he died. I still I, I don't I don't know why did. This is HQ. This is HQ. Patrol here. We lost sight of the enemy. Commence Why did uh Doc wake up so fast? Don't. Now let's see. My, my camo inuk is kind of low. Maybe I should change my face or uniform. Tree bark. Are you fucking kidding me? Hopefully they're not gonna see me from there. I think we can find uh, another camo here. On the right side. There. Dun, 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 dun. There's a kiss. Oh, come on! Come on! I want to show you that there is another trap here down there, but that if I'm gonna uh, activate that trap, it's not gonna. not gonna hurt me or anything like that. You're just gonna trigger the alert because you can you can see those bells on the tree or whatever they are. Camouflage index minus five. Holy moly! That's what I'm saying. Like this tiger stripe. This is the best camo in the game, I think. Uniform splitter. There, maybe a little bit too far away, huh? Gotta be careful, but I think they're gonna be another dock here somewhere. Fucking dogs! Stun grenade. I hope I can find some uh, suppressors. 
here we can see another trap. Dum, dum. Another gecko. There should be a dog here if I remember correctly. We can go there, or we can go there. If we're gonna go here, I think this will take me to uh, to a base where we can find other cool items. So let's go here. Good, you've reached the relay station, but stay alert. That station is an enemy strongpoint. The security is bound to be tight. But there's no other way to get to the crevice if I don't make it through. Exactly. The crevice leading to the cave is in the north of that area. Find a way to slip past the enemy and head north. Okay, maybe paramedic something new? Snake, there are rats living in that nice. area. The rats in that area are the descendants of wild Norway rats that were domesticated by humans as pets and lab animals. I think we already heard that conversation. They're not poisonous and I... Yeah. Okay, hopefully we can find some rats here and then I'm gonna try and try and eat them. By the way, Snake. Yeah? What? You know the Ocelot unit commander? Yeah. Ocelot? Yeah, that's not his real name, is it? I wouldn't think so. Is it a code name? You mean like Snake? Yeah. Maybe. Why? Is that strange? No, I was just wondering why he's called Ocelot. Why's that? Well, I looked it up, and it turns out the Ocelot is a wild cat whose habitat stretches from the southern U.S. down to northern Argentina. They live in a variety of different environments from tropical rainforests to savannas. The biggest ones can grow up to one meter in length. They're normally solitary creatures, and their diet consists mainly of small animals and fish. During the day, they sleep up in the trees, but at night... Yeah, uh, paramedic. Oh, right. So, the ocelot is an animal that lives on the American continent. But then I wondered, why would a Soviet officer be using the name of an American wildcat? Good question. Maybe it's because he's fast and agile like an ocelot. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. Hmm. But why'd you go to all the trouble of looking it up? Because I was curious. Was it helpful? Uh, <laughs> Wait, <sure>. top secret. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's pretty cool how... Uh, so Ocelot is a wild cat. And when we picked up Ocelot at the, be at the beginning of the game, uh, he actually dropped a mouse trap. And you know, cats are hunting mouses, right? <laughs> pretty cute. Okay, a lot of things that we can do here. A lot of things. And no one is dropping any suppressors. AP sensor. Second. Using the anti-personnel sensor, I see. Yeah. The sensor vibrates when it detects organic reactions from human targets. It's been adjusted to respond only to humans, so unlike other sensors, it'll let you ignore animals and focus only on the enemy. It'll even detect enemies that aren't moving, and you won't have to worry about it giving away your position. But on the flip side, it won't tell you the exact location of the target. Keep that in mind when you're using it. Also, remember that when you use it in first-person view, it'll only scan in the direction you're facing. That's how, that's how you can easily determine where the enemy uh, is. Kind of useful uh, since you don't have the radar in the game, especially when you're playing the game like for the first time or something, when you don't know where the guards are gonna be. Okay, I'm gonna save the game save? and then we're gonna continue. He'd probably tell us something about another movie now. Hey Snake, have you ever seen Forbidden Planet? Nope. No, can't say I have. It's about this expedition that goes to the planet Altair 4 in an ultra-fast spaceship. 
When they arrive, they meet the survivor of the last expedition, Dr. Morbius. Dr. Morbius was exploring the planet along with his daughter, Altera, and the versatile Robbie the Robot. Ignoring the doctor's warnings, the expedition team is suddenly attacked by an invisible creature called the Monster from the Id. The special effects they used for the science stuff were really neat. I wish I had a robot like Robbie that could make anything I wanted it to. I'm more interested in that invisible monster. If I were invisible, I wouldn't have to bother hiding or wearing camouflage. Maybe someday you'll be able to turn invisible. Yeah, that'll be the day. That will be the day. So a cool thing is here is if we if we if we're gonna destroy this chopper, uh, then uh, later in the game uh, when we're gonna climb okay a little a little spoiler alert I guess uh, uh, later in the game we will be we will have to go to the top of the mountain and uh, usually there there will be chopper flying around uh, looking for us but if we're gonna destroy the chopper here now then uh, the chopper won't be there but instead of chopper they're, they're gonna be uh, like a different kind of uh, enemy unit oh. Oh. Uh, let me just uh, eat something I see my stamina is going kind of low Golova I want some more. I want some more. So snakes like fruit. Snake love fruits. There might be some enemies here in the, in the in the house, so I have to be careful. One guy there. One guard is there. I might find something here. Oh, we got rats! Now we're gonna eat some rats, boys. Get over here! Alright. Finally we can see how good it tastes like. Rat! What is this? A book? A book. Ooh. Nice. Okay, when my when my stamina is gonna go a little bit lower, we're gonna try it out. The problem in this area is like there are a lot of things you can do here, a lot of things that I want to show you, but if I got if I'm gonna show you everything, then the guys that just tranquilize are gonna wake up. Like for example, this is a, this is an armory here. Small room. So this is an armory here, and now if I'm if I'm gonna destroy the all those boxes with a TNT, uh, this is basically like the an ammo storage. If if I'm gonna destroy this into this entire building, this entire whatever. Storage. Uh, then the enemy will they, they will only have uh, one magazine of uh, of air uh, for the for their AK, and when they're gonna shoot you like two times, then they will switch to the gun, and then they'll also have to shoot. They, they, they'll only have like few bullets in the gun as well, and then they'll, they'll switch to the melee weapon. If I'm gonna destroy that ammo storage, pretty cool. Not sure. Oh, this is the radio station. I guess if I'm gonna destroy this, let me see. Maybe they won't be able to call for reinforcement, something like that. Maybe they can tell me something. You want to save? Oh no, 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 no! Wrong one. Okay. Good luck, Snake. Thanks. Thanks. The crevice leading to the cave is in the north. I heard that. Snake, let's go over the control. We know that. 
Eva was right when she said that operating in an unknown jungle at night is extremely dangerous. In my former outfit, the SAS, we'd always be sure to set up camp before sunset and wait until daybreak before setting out again. Being able to stay in that abandoned factory made things a lot easier for you. You ought to be thanking, Eva. Major, what's this temptation Eva was talking about? In the Old Testament of the Bible, Eve was seduced by a snake into tasting the fruit of knowledge. By eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and were cast out from the Garden of Eden. Thus, it was the snake who led mankind into original sin. Come to think of it, I did break a rib in the virtuous mission. Maybe that's where Eva came from. But the one who tempted Adam into eating the forbidden fruit was Eve. You may be working together, but she's still a KGB operative. Don't let your guard down. I don't intend to. Mm, I guess he's not talking about uh, about this uh, about this building here. I think there's gonna be another enemy there. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if this guy will drop something. Grenade. What is this? Bullets for NK? Sure. Now let's go... Maybe something here? Ooh, we got something here. Now this is the storage... Uh, ooh. I think someone's is inside the building. This is the storage room. If I'm gonna destroy this... Hmm, let's just go here first. Let's see, there are like rations. Ooh, rat! Rat! <laughs> nice. Mouth trap. Foot, foot, foot. Alright, let's... Let's eat those rats. It's good. I can't take another bite. <laughs> if we're gonna destroy, if I'm gonna destroy this building, then the enemy stamina will basically be uh, be really low, and they will uh, they will be extremely weak. Their aim uh, won't be good as, as it is right now. And I think the tranquilize yeah, when I'm, if I if I would tranquilize them they would fall down more quickly as well, and they would they would they would uh, they would keep saying all the time how how hungry they are, and if I would throw them like a rotten ration or something they would eat that and they can uh, they can actually die from it they can they will they can puke and shit like that. If I'm gonna destroy that building, ah, there's there's no need to. Now let's see. Apparently there's an enemy somewhere here. So it's not here. We can see another gecko there. Mouth trap. Somewhere here. Somewhere here. Huh? Ooh, that was close. He actually heard me. I wanted to just uh, trank, uh, like freeze them, but he heard me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Freeze.
Dog, speak. To the north. Speak, speak. There's more of us. Speak. If you want to learn more, take a look at the survival viewer map. Okay. Speak. Request to call off alert 149.46. Please type that in the chat. 149.46. Speak. Let go of me. Freeze. Ah. <laughs> One four no, one four four. No, wait, I already forgot. God damn it! I already forgot. What is this? Ooh, a face camo. Okay, there is still one more pla place here that I want to check it out, and that was the roof. I'm not sure if I can find anything here, I actually forgot. 14096, it was something like that, right? Or was it 14196? <coughs> Uniform water! <coughs> Alright, now we can continue. Ooh, the guy actually woke up. Vision storehouse is destroyed. What? Speak. The machine gun. With the action button? Answer me. There are guys who know alert cancellation frequencies. <laughs> Freeze. There we go. Ooh. Freeze. <laughs> Did I drop something? Food, nothing else. Hmm. Can they tell me something about the cigar? Snake, you smoking a cigarette? It's not a cigarette. It's a cigar. Ah, uh, same thing? It's not the same thing. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. What I want to know is, why'd you take it with you? Because I need it. For what? I can't smoke a cigar if I don't have one, can I? So you just wanted to smoke it? Yeah. Man, you got problems. <laughs> Do what you want. Just keep in mind that your life goes down when you're smoking it. Okay. Snake, there are rats living in that area. The rats in that area... Okay, you already told me that. Snake. What? Are you smoking a cigarette? Nope. Nope. <laughs> yes, you are. It's not a cigarette. It's a cigar. Same thing. Not at all. In fact, there's a world of difference. There's nothing quite like the rich smell and mellow flavor of a cigar. And that thick, luxurious smoke is almost sensual <laughs> when it... Yeah, 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 whatever. Y you know something? Probably not, but I don't want to hear it. Well, you don't have a choice. Cigarettes are bad for you. It's not a cigarette. It's a... Quiet, you. <laughs> Smoking is bad for you. Yeah. In a recent study, scientists found that tobacco smoke is full of carcinogenic substances, like nitrosamines. You know what that means? It means you're going to give yourself lung cancer if you keep on smoking. But that's just what some scientists think, right? Oh, give me a break. I heard it was just a bunch of hoo-ha. Do you really believe that? Sure. God, you're gullible. You ought to read this year's report from the Surgeon General. It proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that smoking causes lung cancer. Pretty soon the whole world will know that smoking is bad for you. Better quit now before it's too late. But... And don't tell me cigar smoke is harmless because it doesn't go down into your lungs. It just means the cancer shows up in a different place. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now let me remove some of those items. Uh, we already call uh, call them for uh, call.
cardboard box, we call them for mine detector, we call them for cigar. Still have a lot of things to call them. Mm. I guess I can just use this and call them for that about that l later. Um, let me remove grenade, oops, grenade, and let me. Remove that, I'm gonna go with tranquilizer. Bolshaya past crevice. Ah, you're here at last. Looks like the boss's info was right. Revolver. Twice now you've made me taste bitter defeat. I hate to disappoint the Cobras, but you're mine now. All of you, leave us. You and me. No one to get in our way. Ocelots are proud creatures. They prefer to hunt alone. Okay, Arakan, calm down. Not Arakan, sorry. <laughs> Ocelot. This time I've got 12 shots. Draw! Here we can sh we can shoot I think that thing. <laughs> How dare you! Look at that hero. Shoot! Get out of here! <laughs> Shoot him! Stop shooting me! There are other cool things that you can do here. Um, Take. Uh, he just shot. He just shot uh, the bees, the the beehive. Now, if I'm gonna use camouflage, and use the the white suit, like we heard before, uh, then the 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 high, uh, I think the bees won't attack me. Ooh, there's a snake! Oh shit! Fucking snake! Okay, one sec, let me just... I can't use any... Um, I, can't, I couldn't kill the snake because I uh, I was wearing the uniform. L uh, poison life will need to decrease until neutral to cure inject serum. There we go. You won't get away from me! You won't get away from me! There we go. Now, if I'm gonna go here and, and just stand still, maybe like that. Why is he not? Ah, there we go. I've never felt attention like no, this. No, wait, no, it's not working. 
We should have a duo. Different from simply changing a clip. This reload time is exhilarating. The longer the fight will go, we're gonna go, the his reload time, his reload speed is gonna be faster. Ah, there we go. Yes, it's the heart, heart of, of the duel. duel. <laughs> now I think he's gonna get really pissed. So I'm gonna shoot. Uh... Oh wait, why did I use suppress? Not bad, eh? Ooh, all right. <laughs> ah! You fool! Flat ah! range, huh? Who are you calling coward? Attention like this before. That's so different from simply changing a clip. Where is he? This reload time is exhilarating. I don't even know where he is. Ah, oh, there you are. Oh. <laughs> now once again, you see? <laughs> I fell. Oh. Not bad. Oh. oh shit, what happened? How'd that one taste? He's reloading there. Hmm, what else can I show you here? You, there are also units here, but you can't actually shoot them. I mean, you can shoot them, but you can't kill them. See my technique? It's perfect. You fool! Oh, are you kidding me? Another snake? God damn it, god damn you snake. I'm really not paying attention to those snakes. Reloading can be so thrilling in the middle of a battle. <laughs> really? I think, I think we can get a few codec calls here about uh, Ocelot. Snake, the only way to proceed is to fight. You have to defeat Ocelot. You can't jump over that crevice, and hand-to-hand -hand combat is out of the question. You'll have to shoot it out with him. Take cover behind something and wait for an opening, then attack him in first-person view. Ocelot is using a revolver. Revolvers take a long time to reload when they run out of bullets. When he stops to reload, that's your chance to attack. He's just telling me how to defeat the boss. Ocelot can use ricochet shots to attack? Yeah. Then you won't be safe anywhere, not even behind an obstacle. Don't stay in one spot for too long or you'll make yourself an easy target. Stay alert. Stay alert! Snake, you won't survive a fall into that crevice. Make sure you don't fall into it while rolling by mistake. Okay, let's see. Maybe Eva can tell me something about him. Ocelot is a force to be reckoned with. Don't even think about running away. The only way to proceed with the mission is to defeat him. They say that Ocelot can hit targets hiding behind obstacles by using ricochet shots. Rocks and trees won't protect you. If you stay too long in the same spot, you'll only be making yourself an easy target. Don't stand still. Keep moving. Keep moving. I'm not sure why, but Ocelot seems to have a thing for his cap. <laughs> you might be able to him. get him to let down his guard by shooting it off his head. I already did that. Uh, paramedic? Paramedic. What's wrong? Are you hurt? No. Then what? These hornets won't go away. <laughs> the hornets? Yeah, they've been flying around over my head in a figure eight pattern and won't go away. Any idea why? Well, hornets use the figure eight dance to signal that they found food. Food? Yeah, like flowers or nectar. What does it mean? I don't know, but at least they're not attacking you, right? I think it's best to just leave them alone. 
We've got bigger things to worry about, like Ocelot. Good point. You can beat him, Snake. Who said I couldn't? <laughs> and uh, after the fight, you will see why was this conversation important. When you have a serious important? injury, like a gunshot wound or a burn, your maximum life will decrease. So if you're seriously hurt, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to treat it. I guess I can do that, why not? Since I probably have a lot of... Uh... No, I don't actually. Okay. Why do it? See my technique? It was perfect. This is so retarded. <laughs> like if you hold the R2 revolution. Oh, that was a head. Now I Jesus. Now I think if I'm gonna equip cro uh let's see. I'm not sure if I have to equip Crocodile cap or something else, but I think they're gonna laugh at me. No. Maybe a box. No, some. I know. I know they can sometimes laugh at you if you equip something. I don't know. I, I forgot what exactly. Now let's see if I can if I can make a duel. Really? Well, it wasn't a duel, but it's okay. Now you'll see why that conversation was important about the hornets. Damn it! He found us. My health is so low. Let's eat another rat. Pretty good. Now there is a cool thing here. Um, as you can see now, uh, my uh, like I I can I I I can't see anything. It's really really dark. But the longer I'm gonna stay here in the darkness, the better our view is gonna be because our eyes are gonna adapt to the darkness. Like right now, I, I can't see anything what's in front of me, but in like three, four, five minutes or something like that, we should be able to see a lot better. Um, I guess we can make some codec calls here. We can also save the game after the codec calls. Snake, are you okay? Snake! Major. Snake. Are you all right? You're not hurt? No. That was a hell of a drop, but I'm fine. Looks like there's no way back up, though. I see. Well, anyway, it's good to hear you're not injured. 
Slipping and falling may not have been part of the plan, but getting into that cave was. Proceed further into the cave. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. All right, but it might take me a while to get through this cave. Are you hurt? No. Is it the enemy? Did they set a trap for you? Not that either. Then what is it? It's dark in here. Dark? Yeah, there's no light anywhere. I should have brought a flashlight with me. So what you're saying is that it's going to take you a while because you don't have a flashlight? Right. Snake, if you don't have a flashlight, you should be looking for a substitute. I tell you, American soldiers these days rely too much on ready-made equipment. Here we go again. <laughs> What's what was that? that? <laughs> Nothing. American soldiers rely too much on ready-made equipment. He's British. Not only that, they can't seem to grasp that one piece of equipment can have multiple functions. UK. Back when I was in the SAS, we never had that problem. We were trained to use every piece of equipment in as many ways as possible. If you don't have a flashlight, look for something else. You need to develop flexible, innovative thinking if you want to. Hey, are you listening to me? Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> First, take a look at what you're carrying with you now. Don't you have anything that can provide you with some light? He's talking about cigarettes. If you, if we're gonna equip cigarettes, we will, uh, we're gonna see a little bit better. At least a few meters from uh, right, uh, what's in front of us. First, take a look at what you're carrying with you now. Don't you have anything that can provide you with some cigars, light? not cigarettes? Snake, those hornets that attacked you while you were fighting ocelot. I know. They look familiar, like the ones I saw during the virtuous mission. So it was one of the cobras. That's what ocelot was saying too. Keep your guard up. I will. Snake, camouflage uniforms alone are not enough. You'll need to put on face paint okay, as nothing well. Okay, important from, the, from him, from him uh, now. Paramedic. That area is inhabited by the Taiwanese cobra. The Taiwanese cobra is native to Taiwan and southern China. It's quite vicious and carries a potent neurotoxin in its fangs. Be careful. If it bites you, go into the survival viewer immediately and use the cure option to inject yourself with serum. Sounds interesting. Don't ask me. How does it taste? The guide doesn't say. If you absolutely have to know, then you'll just have to try it yourself and see. I didn't say anything. <laughs> but you were going to ask, weren't you? About the taste? Yeah. I'll talk to you later, Snake. Snake, be careful. That cave is inhabited by vampire bats. Vampire bats? The vampire bat bites its victims and sucks their blood. Got it. Speaking of bats... Just save it. Ah. Huh? I know you're gonna talk about vampire movies. He's actually Attack afraid of, the of vampire vampires. Donuts or Dracula versus the space hippos or something like that. Actually, I was going to say that bats are known to use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings. Oh. Bats use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings, so you might be able to keep them away by blasting them with a special kind Web of sound phobia. wave. <laughs> As for taste, I suppose there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Hmm. Unless you want to get COVID. do you hate vampire movies? There we go. What? Just now, you sounded like you really hated them. I did? Yeah. Oh. Well, no one really likes them, do they? Some people do. Like you. Yeah. They're fascinating, you know? Like the movie Dracula... Don't say it. <laughs> Why not? Just don't. Are you afraid? What? What? You're afraid of vampires, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. But... Listen, there are no such things as vampires. They're just a stupid, made-up legend. Even if they do seem real sometimes. Well, sure. You think I'd be afraid of something like that? <laughs> no. Exactly. Right. I'm not afraid of vampires. Uh-huh. It's just that whenever somebody starts talking about vampires, I end up dreaming about them that night, and I don't need that right now. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Snake, it says here you can catch maroon sharks in that area. The maroon shark is found mostly in Southeast Asia, but it's not actually a shark. It's related to the carp. Oh shit, I pressed the button by accident. Oh. It's also known as the red fine cigar shark, that river barb, and the sultan fish. 
Interesting. So, oh, no, interesting. So, how does it taste? According to the guide, it's good, but it's kind of oily and has a lot of little bones. Fine with me. I never worry about the little things. So I gather. There we go. Pattern clothing, face paint, tactical movements. These are the elements of camouflage that will allow you to deceive your enemy. To camouflage yourself, first press. I know how to camouflage this again. What the fuck? Covering your body is a good start, but a bare face will kill even the best camouflage. If the situation calls for a high camo index, you better break out the face paint. To apply. Okay, really important call. Again, let's save the game. You want to save? Hold on a sec. Snake, have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Nah, I don't like those movies. Ah, this Real is gonna be a really like good uh, quote to call. Pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? <laughs> there we go. The fantastic gadgets, the cars, the guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you like to have a gun shaped like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You can make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. Ah. Okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Now you give it a rest. Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No. I knew it. Hmm. To tell you the truth, I don't like the idea of playing hanky-panky with enemy femme fatales either. But that's part of Bond's appeal. You could learn a thing or two from him. I mean, what about this Eva? What are you planning to do with her? I... I, I don't even trust her yet. No, that's not what I mean. You... you can't let yourself get involved. This is a game of spy versus spy. She's using you just as much as you're using her. I realize that. You've got to grab the initiative. And to do that, you have to get the upper hand in the relationship. That's what a spy is supposed to do. Get the upper hand? I don't think I'm cut out for that mission. Maybe if you change your code name to 00 Snake. <laughs> hey, Jar. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Didn't you know? The Major is a huge James Bond fan. Don't get him worked up like this. Worked up? Worked Maybe up. you don't realize this, but now that you've got him started talking about Bond, I'm going to have to listen to him lecture for a whole hour after he gets off the radio. You have my sympathy. It's too bad you can't enjoy such a great movie, though. I guess I'm just one of those people who can't enjoy spy flicks. <laughs> really good, uh, call. Jesus, it's still really, really dark. But I can't see shit. Did I found a night vision goggle by any chance? I guess I didn't. So well, I guess I have to use the cigar, but if I'm gonna use the cigar, then my health will go down really fast. There's a thing here. I know that we can find uh, a torch somewhere here, but I can't remember where exactly. After we find a torch, there's a scorpion here. Maybe here. Go down. We're gonna find a torch that I'm gonna explore this cave a little bit more. Our vision is already getting better. Whoa! Yeah, I think we're gonna go here. 
got a Sarah. Is this the place? No. Maybe here? No. Hmm. I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, where will this take me? That's the place where I have... To oh no, I should have go down there. Ah! That's the wrong way. Yeah, that was the wrong way. Uh, let's go back. But my uh, our vision is already getting better. I guess it's better on stream, but it's it's worse on my uh, on my screen because it's like my my uh, monitor is right next to the window, so the sun is kind of. Shining towards the window, and then it's hard to, to, to towards uh, my monitor, so it's hard to see. Let's see if I'm gonna go here. I think we might find. Uh... Is this the right way? Let's see. Oh shit. No? I guess this is the wrong way as well. We got a foot full. Grenade. There is one cool thing here. You can see those mushrooms. Now if I'm gonna... Okay, let me just eat something first. Uh, let's eat, I don't know, another rat. Hmm. There we go, now I collected this Mushroom A, so now we can call Paramedic. I see you found some Russian glow caps. The Russian glow cap is a kind of luminescent fungus, a mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, Luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. The carbonyl groups in the oxyluciferin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. By the way, does that mushroom recharge your batteries when you eat it? Huh? I mean, it seems like if you ate a glowing mushroom, it might recharge your batteries or something. Snake, your batteries are organic batteries. They produce electricity by utilizing the potential difference between cells. Organic batteries are known for their highly efficient energy conversion, that they still rely on chemical reactions between proteins and enzymes to- So you're saying they'll get recharged? Believe what you want. Great. Great. <laughs> so now you can see our, one sec. I'm gonna deplete my uh, battery a little bit on the bottom left. Now, if I'm gonna use... If I'm gonna eat those uh, mushrooms... Set to recharge the battery when eaten, <laughs> even though she didn't say that. The battery has recovered. And our battery is full now. <laughs> so if we're gonna call her again... Paramedic. What's up? You were right. About what? I ate a Russian glow cap and it charged up my batteries. Huh? <laughs> What's wrong? I, uh, that's, that's great. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. Did you just hear that? 
Yeah. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? <laughs> Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. Well, I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep it? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake. I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it. <laughs> you heard how gullible he is. Grenade full. So we can find a torch here. Like, I forgot where the torch is. But we don't need it anymore. We can already see it uh, really, really good. Um, let's check the map. Let me just see if I missed something here by any chance. Yeah, like right now we can already see way, way better than we could see before here. Ooh. To be honest, I didn't even know I could go here. Where will that take me? that take me there okay let's see what's there <sighs> what do we have here we got a battery we got a oh another uh, more of those mushrooms <laughs> Maybe some items here in the water, probably not. I guess I can check what do we have here though. Let's see. In case I'm gonna fall down here, then I can go out here. Okay, I see, I see. If I would throw a grenade here in the water, I could kill like 10 fishes. See how uh, how our vision is way better now uh, than it was at the beginning. Like we don't need night vision goggles or anything like that. We can we can see everything now. We don't even need torch anymore. We got crabs here. <laughs> Food full. I guess I can eat something. Let's eat. Let's eat coral snake. Hey, this works. Hey, this works. Let's eat Russian ration as well. Sick. Sick. Ah, here we can find uh, a torch, I believe. Yeah, there it is. Torch. Now we can use that to see even better. Um, I guess I can equip crocodile cap. Oh wait, no, that's a weapon. Yeah, that's a weapon. Man, I checked every single uh, place except here where I actually have to go. I think Stegan can tell me something about the torch, maybe? A torch? A little primitive, but a light's a light. Yeah. From what I can tell, that torch is made of white birch dipped in turpentine. 
It burns long, so I don't think you'll have a problem with it burning out on you. If you equip it and press the CQC button, you can use it to smack the enemy. You can also swing it around by pressing that button repeatedly. Useful when you need to clear the room of bats and stuff. With the weapon button, you can light and extinguish a torch. So make sure that thing is out if an enemy is closing in. Get used to it. The light from the torch is visible from a long way off, though. It probably goes without saying, but marching into battle with a torch in your hand is not the sanest course of action. You should only light a torch when you're someplace like a cave where you can't find your way around without a light. Yeah, I hear you. Did you hear that, Major Tom? The cave seems to be structured like... We already heard that. Thought maybe he will tell something about the torch, but no. Uh, can we see any bats here? No. Is this the right way? Let me just see. No, this isn't the right way. This is the right way. Froggy! I'll have to find some uh, uh, poison animals or poison mushrooms uh, for later in the game. Ah, uh, look. Here we can see a lot of, uh... A lot of bats. Well, let me just call Sigint two more times. One for motion detector and one for sonar. Then I'm gonna show you something. The motion detector will display any moving objects in your vicinity. But the enemy isn't the only thing that's moving around in the jungle. If there are animals moving nearby, the sensor will pick up those animals, too. And remember that there's a limit to how sensitive it is. Enemies and animals that don't move around very much won't get picked up. And now one for a sensor. And then I'm gonna cool, uh, show you a cool trick here. Active sonar sends out a special type of sound wave whenever you press the left stick. It uses the echo from those waves to calculate and display the position of nearby objects. Unlike the motion detector, it'll show you objects that aren't moving. But because you're blasting out sound waves, there's a risk that the noise will alert enemies and animals to your presence. Be careful about when and where you use it. Now see. If I'm gonna... Uh, oh wait, I have... If I'm gonna shoot like, uh, like once here... You can see bats flying around. <coughs> And they're attacking me. Now if I'm gonna use a sonar one time, uh, they're all gonna return back to their, like, uh, previous starting position. <laughs> now they return back. <laughs> but as you know, Snake really hate Wamps. So we're gonna do him a favor. <laughs> Look at this. I guess we can try and eat uh, a bat just to see how uh, if it's gonna good if it's gonna be good or not. You're going to little to do and eat anything. Get me, get me, get me. Um. Well, I have monsters, so that's good. Get me. I don't want a chips. I don't know. Get me some. Get me. A, get me one of those big chocolate eggs. It's gonna be Easter soon, right? Get me a big chocolate egg. I see you've caught yourself a Kenyan mangrove crab. The Kenyan mangrove crab is a land-going crab. It lives in burrows dug near seashores and mangrove swamps. It's not poisonous, but it might hurt a little if it attacks you with its pinchers. Treat it with caution. Got it. So this thing must taste pretty good, <laughs> huh? Why do you say must? It's a crab, isn't it? It is. And crab.
crabs are good to eat. What's so good about them? You don't like crab? Not at all. Why not? Why? How can you eat those things? They're all purple and yellow striped, and they stink like cat pee. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Don't listen to me. Let's see here. The guide says... No way. It says they're delicious. <laughs> well, if you want to eat one, then go right ahead, but count me out. Mm-hmm. And what about uh, vampires? That area is home to the reticulated <laughs> python. The reticulated python so is said to be the longest snake in the, in the world. It's not venomous, but it still poses a threat, so watch out. So many different animals in the game. Snake, that's the home to the otten frog. frog. The otten frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. They're known as a delta. Oh wait, no, have you heard that uh, before? Snake, there are rats. Really? Snake, whatever happens to you, make sure you leave a descendant, okay? Are you saying you want to have my baby? No. <laughs> I'm saying that in the 21st century, the genes of soldiers like you are going to be in high demand. Jeans. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. Remember when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA back in 1953? Ah, no. You know, they won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for it the year before last. Of course, you have to feel sorry for Pauling and Franklin. They were researching the exact same thing. Sorry, I don't follow. Inside every living creature are little blueprints called genes. Through the union of the sperm and egg cells, these blueprints are transformed and inherited by the next generation. That's why parents and children resemble each other. The concept of genes was first proposed over a hundred years ago by Mendel, but he didn't know what they were exactly. For a while, it was thought that chromosomes were composed not of deoxyribonucleic acid, but of proteins called polypeptides. Later, it was shown that deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, was a biological macromolecule. Then 11 years ago, Watson and Crick discovered that DNA had a double helix structure. Yeah, this is all fascinating stuff, but what exactly does it have to do with me? The inherent characteristics of any given individual are determined by his or her genes. By duplicating a set of superior genes, a separate body with the same set of characteristics, a clone can be created. But genes don't control a person's fate. That's true. But having an offspring that's genetically identical to the parent is more efficient, right? You can expect better results that way. More efficient? You can't mass produce human beings. Maybe. Hmm. But now that we know the true nature of genes, human cloning is that much closer to reality. Nuclear transplanting is already theoretically possible. So one day... My genes are going to be a valuable commodity. Hmm. Exactly. They'd never let that happen. Just think, Wouldn't even they? if your body dies, you survive and go on to bigger and better accomplishments. If you think about it, it's kind of an honor. Does that kind of technology seriously appeal to you? Well, I am a doctor. I can't condone it on moral grounds, but I'm fascinated by the possibilities. Especially when I see such an excellent specimen as yourself. Yeah, well, thanks for the compliment, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Don't be so glum. It's not like it's going to happen anytime soon. We'll just have to wait and see. Really interesting. This is the first time that they mentioned that they mentioned genes in this game. And you know, from uh, M after after finishing MGS1 and MGS2, they will actually make three clones from the big boss. Not eaten yet, but said to be edible in a pinch. This is horrible. <laughs> this is a horrible. Right now that we used uh, a few codec calls here, let me just remove the items that I'm not gonna need. Um, we did use the code for Seagull, for motion detector, for active sonar. Uh, we still have I still have to use this, this, and this, I guess. But I'm gonna call that later. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use every codec call right now. 
there or there? Let's see what we have here. M37 shotgun. <coughs> Fucking bats! Oh, god damn you, bats! <laughs> Something else here. Frog. You know, I'll be, I have to get, find more poisonous frogs, so let me just dispose some of the... It's bad. Let me just eat one of those. Can't eat anymore. Let's eat a vampire bat. That's enough. No more. This. Pretty tasty. There we go. Now what do we have here? Uniform snow. I have to look for those red and white, uh, red and blue uh, frogs. We need poisonous, boy, poisonous, poison, poison food. I don't even know. I don't even know where will this take me. But I'm gonna investigate everything. I see. We have to go there. Let me just see if there's something else here. Uh, this. AK-47. Here we got another snake. We got bats. Bats are actually attacking me because I'm because I'm carrying the torch. This is just taking the beginning now. All right, now we can go. Beyond your imagination! Okay, let me see. Hey, Flexi. I don't have any any uh, honey, sadly. If I would have if I would have honey, I could actually throw honey down the down like next to me, and that will uh, lure bees uh, away from him. Pretty cool. Now we can use grenades to throw him at, at him. I think. Huh. Grenade! 
I really missed? Oh! I missed the grenade and then I uh, killed a bunch of fish here, I think. <laughs> Let it go! But I didn't get any codec call about uh, about him. Snake, as long as the pain is using his hornets to protect his body, you won't be able to damage him with gun attacks. You'll need to use a grenade to get rid of the hornet swarm first. Go into first person view and throw a grenade at him. The shotgun should work as well. Get rid of those hornets protecting him and then attack him with a gun. Okay. The pain seems to be directing swarms of hornets to attack you. Be careful. If you're attacked by a swarm of hornets, your life will steadily decrease. When the hornets come to attack you, you can cause the swarm to scatter by shooting at it with your gun. Also, the hornets can't follow you into the water, so you can get away by diving into the water. Hornets are also vulnerable to fire and smoke. You can keep them away from you by using a smoke grenade. Whoa. Swinging a torch around using the CQC button should also work. If I'm gonna throw a smoke, then, then those hornets uh, won't be able to attack me. Okay. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees! Bullet bees are the name the pain gives the special hornets he raises inside his own body. And if they get into your body, your wounds will become worse and worse until you get rid of them. If you're afflicted by bullet bees, go into the survival viewer immediately and use Cure to dig them out with your knife. Mm -hmm. Once the bullet bees are out, don't forget to apply styptic and disinfect it to the wound. Uh, maybe Eva can tell me more about him. The pain has the power to control swarms of hornets at will. Watch out for his hornet-based attacks. I want to know about his history. Not even the pain's special breed of hornets will be able to follow you underwater. You're a good swimmer, right? If you're being harassed by any hornets, dive into the water. Mm, I guess nothing. The pain has the power to control swarms of hornets at will. Watch out for his hornet-based attacks. Yeah, I was expecting to, they're gonna tell me something more about the pain, about the pain, but nothing. Aha! Aha! Grenade! I throw first. I hold. Oh. Oh. Hey! Hey! He's just like me. <laughs> those are the uh, those bullet uh, horrors to be. Uh, we already uh, talk about with uh, with paramedic. There you are. How did you saw me? <laughs> Go out. Is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? Grenade! There we go. Ah! 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 Oh. No! Oh. Oh. One more time. Now let's see if we can get a... Uh... Actually, maybe you should hunt some of those fishes, huh? Let's throw a grenade here. Fishing! <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. 
That's how we fish. I guess I can eat one right away. Ooh, we can maybe I get a codec call about uh, about the fishes. I see you caught yourself an arowana. Arowana. The arowana is an ancient fish that lives in tropical freshwater areas. Because of its large size, I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive. Ancient fish like the arowana are living fossils. They've hardly changed their form since the Devonian and Jurassic periods. Other ancient fish besides the arowana include the coelacanth, the starlet, and the knifefish. Almost all organisms on Earth have evolved in various shapes and forms, but these fish have kept the same form for hundreds of millions of years. Baffling, isn't it? Sure. Sure. Well, I can see you're not interested. How they taste like? Not at all. I'm fascinated by ancient fish. Why? They're supposed to be huge, aren't they? You're wondering whether they'd make a good meal. Yeah. So, do they? The guide says they taste just fine for a fish. Great. There we go. Maybe something else? Snake, be careful. That cave is inhabited uh, by... I already heard that. Second, maybe? The camo index. Nothing. What about you, Major Zero? The exit from the cave should be toward the back. Proceed through the cave and find the exit to the swamp aqueduct. Eva? Snake, you beat the pain. Not without a tough fight. How did it feel to fight one of the boss's comrades? What are you getting at? I just want to know what it's like to have fought a member of the legendary Cobra unit. That's all. What you want to know is if I can really face the boss. Is that right? Well, that too. Don't waste your time worrying about me. I'll get the mission done. I certainly hope so. So the exit of the cave is up ahead? Right. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovia Swamp. Ponizovia Swamp. Okay, since we beat the boss, we're gonna save the game Do you and want to save? hear another conversation about another movie. Snake, have you heard of The Last War? Nope, it doesn't ring a bell. It's a Japanese movie where the world ends in a nuclear war. Tensions between East and West reach the breaking point, and before anyone can stop it, they launch the ICBMs. Humanity is wiped out by a war that no one wanted. The movie depicts that destruction from the eyes of ordinary people. Their simple daily lives are torn apart by the terrible power of a war that has nothing to do with them. Everybody's afraid of the next big war, but there's only so much that one person can do. That's why the people who have the power to stop it have to. All right. Never heard about that movie. Okay, now let's see. Uh, we did uh, kill uh, the pain with a tranquilizer gun, so he dropped another camo. I already mentioned that, uh, if, you, or at least I think I did. If you kill a boss with a tra with a tranquilizers, uh, then they will they're gonna drop a camo. And this uh, this hoarded camo is actually really 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 useful. Is he gonna say what it does? For pa let me just see what uh, what will what will they say about this uh, camo? This is this is the camo we uh, the we got after we defeated the after we defeated the ocelot. I heard you fought against KGB troops in the Virtuous okay, Mission. Okay, that's a different code. But this time you're up against Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz is the special forces unit of GRU, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry General Staff Office. Spetsnaz troops undergo rigorous training in all types of special ops, from assassination and demolition to intelligence gathering. That and Volgan's loaded, man. His unit is one of the best equipped in the entire Soviet Union, if not the best. I heard the enemies you encountered in the Virtuous Mission were only carrying weapons like AKs and grenades. Well, it ain't that simple anymore. In addition to AKs, some of the patrols you'll encounter might be equipped with Scorpion submachine guns and shotguns. The Scorpion is even lighter than the AK, making it much easier to handle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basically, 
A guy with a scorpion is not gonna miss you as often as with an AK. The shotgun is a powerful weapon. One blast is enough to floor you and you're likely to be seriously wounded. Watch for that, man. I really hated shotguns in MGS2. So you've got your uniform and your face paint. Okay, now apparently he's not gonna talk about this uh, Ocelot camo. Uh, oops, sorry, wrong button. What about... Uniform, what about... Hornet Stripe? Snake, what's that camouflage? It's called Hornet Stripe. I got it from the pain. No kidding. Sounds like a pretty unique design. There we go. From the looks of it, it's somehow infused with the power of hornets. The power of hornets? Sure. When you're wearing that outfit, hornets won't attack you. Neither will spiders or leeches. There we go. You might even be able to tame the ones that come flying out of a hive. I'm gonna show you how that works later in the game. Basically, if you shoot a hive, then the, you know, the bees, the hornets will usually attack you. But if you have this camouflage, then they will uh, fly around you. And when you're gonna get close to the enemy, the 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 those hornets will actually attack an enemy instead of you, and then and it will uh, basically it will force an enemy to run away from the from the area. Really cool. Okay, um, I guess I can eat maybe one fish. Ooh, we got a video. <laughs> He's eating it raw. <laughs> Pretty tasty. Okay, is this where we came from or... Yeah, we have to go there, I think. That's where we came from. We gotta go there. Wait a minute. Is it? There? No, that's... That's where we came from. We have to go where the axe is. We gotta go there. I don't think that's how guns work. What do you mean? Apparently, Scorpion is better uh, than AK-47 uh, up close. But AK is better when uh, when they were attacking you from the distance. already hear some birds so we're gonna go out soon huh. a new type of enemy they're using those hoover boards now what do we have here we got another snake Hmm, I can't... Ooh, another poison snake! The po poison, the... Uh, not snake, sorry. Frog. There we go. Another... Oh, come on, our food is full. I have to get more of those. Let's eat that. That's tasty. That's tasty. Come on! <laughs> now those fruits are really good as well. Ooh, the medicine as well. I don't need food, but medicine is okay. Wait, is that that's where I came from, right? No, that's where I came from. Sorry. <laughs> Hmm. 
We got some snakes here. And ah, oh, look at this. Claymores. Let's be careful. This is NK-22 bullets. This is M19 bullets. This is AK-47. If you wanna go Rambo style on the on them. But in the next area, we're gonna show you how useful uh, the cro the cro cro cap is. <laughs> this is another glowing uh, glowing mushroom that will uh, that, that will recharge your batteries if you're gonna. We gonna eat him. And finally, we are out. Bonizovia South. Now this this area can be really annoying because of those guys that are hovering. No response from Eva. Hmm, really interesting, right? I'm gonna see why. I see you found your way to the aqueduct. If you follow it to the north, you'll come to a warehouse used for transporting supplies. Pass through the warehouse and you'll come out into a forest. The lab where Sokolov is being held is directly to the north of that forest, so head north. Okay. Here we can see another croc there. So now if I'm gonna use, let's see, backpack. Uh, we're gonna use crocodile cap. Actually, one sec, sorry about that. I might as well uh, do some codec calls about the items I didn't use before. We didn't get a code call about M M37 and a few few other items. Let's see. M37, Sigin, tell me about the shotgun. You say they have flying platforms out there? <laughs> flying platforms are a type of personal VTOL aircraft. They were working on those in America too, weren't they? Yeah, back in the 50s. They were supposedly going to be used for scouting and patrol missions, as well as to spot for artillery units and transport troops into rough territory. They even got an initial prototype off the ground in 1955. But the thing wasn't fast enough, and there were problems with getting it to stop and turn in midair, so they ended up scrapping the project. The ones you see there were built by the Soviets after they got their hands on the American design plans. The American model used a pair of contra-rotating rotors to generate lift, but those Soviet models seem to be using jet engines instead. They must have kept going with their research after the U.S. abandoned its own project. Now they've finally overtaken us. You gotta give them credit for sticking with it. If you get spotted by an enemy riding a flying platform, they'll go into alert phase. Mm -hmm. The flying platforms themselves don't seem to be armed, but the pilots are carrying Scorpion submachine guns and grenades. The recoil on the Scorpion is low enough so that they should be able to fire one-handed in full auto mode. That gives them some serious firepower. That can be a real pity. The armor yes. plating on the body of a flying platform is bound to be pretty thick. I don't think you're going to be able to penetrate it with a handgun or an assault rifle. When you're up against a flying platform, try and aim for either the pilot or the engine on the underbelly. But the problem is, if you're gonna shoot the pilot, uh, then this Hooper thing is gonna fall down, it's gonna explode, and that will trigger the alert as, uh, as well. Tell me something, Sigint. What's that? What does Sigint mean, anyway? It's short for Signal Intelligence. Signal Intelligence? The part of intelligence that deals with electronic information. Things like intercepting and analyzing electronic communications. Determining enemy force strength and positioning from radar emissions and radio chatter. You get the idea. Code breaking is considered part of SIGINT as well. Forty years from now, we'll be in the age of electronic warfare. It won't be long before information replaces firepower as the most valuable commodity on the battlefield. 
So you're saying they won't need guys like me anymore? Sorry to break it to you, but that's not gonna happen. No matter how advanced our technology gets, there's still no substitute for human beings. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anyway, the Major is a man of foresight. He knew the Electronic Age was coming, and so he called out to me. And you responded? Well, I didn't have any place else to go. You couldn't find a job? Nope. None of the places where they do this kind of high-tech research would even let me in the door. Because you're black? I know you've got social problems, but... Come again? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, someone with your talent ought to be able to. Yeah, well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm there black. There we go. <sighs> the Major, though, he doesn't care about what color you are. I've never met anyone like him before. He's different, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. I don't think racism's gonna go away even in the 21st century. But I want to work with computers and use them to bring people closer together. In the digital world, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, American or Russian or whatever. Everybody's going to be the same. That's what I think. Yeah, about that. Ah, I see you got there yourself go. an M37. The M37 is a 12-gauge pump-action shotgun. Don't expect any kind of accuracy from a distance, but one blast will send the enemy flying, and it's got some serious firepower, too. Good thing to have with you in close-range combat. It takes a while to reload, though, so plan accordingly. The thing that really distinguishes the M37 is that it's lightweight. It's about two pounds lighter than other shotguns. In fact, it's so light that it's been nicknamed the Featherlight. Yeah, and to top it off, this one's had its barrel and stock sawed off. That's probably a modification to make it easier to wield in the jungle. Those Soviet boys know what they're doing. I guess the other distinguishing feature would be the lack of an ejection port on the side of the receiver. Ambidextrous, huh? Exactly. It's been designed so you can use it left-handed or right-handed with equal ease. But that's not all. The low number of apertures means that it won't get jammed up as much with mud and dirt when you use it out in the field. This weapon is made for the jump. Good to know. Good to but know. But what are they doing with an American-made shotgun? Good question. I guess they could be doing research on Western weapons, but... Did you ever hear about the SAS using shotguns in the jungle combat in Malaya? Just stories. In the jungle, you're always running into the enemy when you least expect it. The SAS found the shotgun to be extremely effective delivering massive firepower in a short period of time. Because of that, lately a lot of point men are starting to use shotguns as their weapon of choice. Vogan's men might be trying that tactic out for themselves. Did they use a lot of uh, shotguns in the in the Vietnam War, or not? Since it was also in the jungle, in the forest, whatever. Don't think so. Hmm. I think like I've seen some movies about Vietnam and like. In almost every movie, there was someone carrying a shotgun. I see you have the bug juice equipped. It's useful for keeping the bugs away. If you open the item window and press the enter button, you'll be able to keep the nasty critters like hornets and leeches at bay for a brief period of time. Use it well. What else do we have here that I didn't call Sigint? Uh, medicine? The flying platforms have a searchlight attached to the front. If you knock it out, that should handicap its scouting ability. And in some cases, it might even have to go back to base for repairs. The armor... Okay, apparently nothing for uh, for this medicine. Uh, fake that pill, maybe? The armor... No, nothing. Okay, I just re I'm just gonna remove those items now. We don't need them anymore. I want to get some code calls here, but fuck it. Let's remove this. Let's remove life medicine. Phantasmin. Binoculars. There we go. But I'm gonna equip crocodile cap because crocodile cap is gonna be really useful here. Now we can go like that. And they will think, if they're gonna catch me, they will think it's just a crocodile. Ooh, I see 
Shit, searchlight is here. <coughs> oh my god. Jesus, my, my health went down pretty fast. I didn't pay attention. I should be okay now. Alright, let's go here to the left first. <coughs> but in Zovia West. Maybe it sounds for special forces, but it was a lot of rifles. You're not a Vietnam expert. We need Glippy on this one. We need a Glipster. Alright, there we go. We got one guy there. One guy here. Hmm, I don't know if there are gonna be more of them. Hopefully not. Now let's see if we can find some items here. We really need a silencer for my... There we go. No, that's for, the, for that one. I hate how there are different silencers for this and for this. I need NK-22 silencer. Let's see, maybe we can find some of them. <coughs> Somewhere here. Do, 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 do. Here we can see another. Do I go up? There we go. All right, big boy. Tell me you can drop. You gotta drop the silencer. Bullet for AK-47. We got a stun grenade. VPG. That's uh, that's phosphorus grenade or something. Bullet, bullets, come on, we need a silencer! Maybe there? Shaft grenade, do I have... There we go. There won't be any cameras here, but you can use shaft grenade to, to I think... Uh, if you can use the shaft grenade, they won't be able to call for... Uh... Nice! They won't be able to call for reinforcements. Alright, let's see. Maybe this guy is carrying something. I'm not sure if I'm gonna throw him in the water, if that's gonna count as a kill. TNT. Ah, this is the armory. And here we got a sniper rifle. I guess I can uh, move this guy away and destroy this armory. If I'm gonna destroy this armory, then the enemy will have less ammunition, as I said before in the game. I'm not sure if that will tri if that will wake him up exactly, but let's see. Well, I guess I I, I guess I can uh, make a call about the TNT. We still didn't do that, or about Claymore, but we don't have to use every single code I call. Let's just call him for the TNT. Looks like you've got some TNT. I sure did. TNT is short for trinitrotoluene, a pale yellow crystalline compound made from a trinitrified mix of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. It's used throughout the world as a military explosive. It has a low sensitivity and is chemically stable, making it easy to handle. It's also got a low melting point and can easily be shaped by boiling or steaming it. But because the sensitivity is so low, you need a booster to actually get it to explode. No problem. It came with its own remote control detonator. Good. Then all you have to do is press the weapon button to place the TNT, and then press the CQC button to set it off. The map screen in the survival viewer will display the locations where you've planted TNT. Take warning though, the radio signal for the detonator is pretty weak. 
Don't forget that pressing the CQC button will only set off TNT that's planted in the same area. Okay, makes sense. Let's plant it here. There we go. And now you see everything is uh, destroyed. And uh, since everything is destroyed, the enemy will have less ammunition in that area and the next area as well. Pretty cool. Woo! Not sure if we can find something with that destroyed boat here. No, there's nothing here. Uh, I think we can just go. A lot of fishes here, you can see the frog here as well. A lot of other fishes. Now, now that I picked the dragoon up, we can... Act okay, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you about that later. Let me just... Costs it now. hands off me. I'm not going anywhere. Really now? How many times must I tell you? Time you resist, your lover will suffer the consequences. Is that clear? Vulcan. Vulcan. <clears throat> Damn you! Hold it right there, traitor. Let's find out just how lucky you are. Watch closely. Ocelot is so badass. One of these three guns has a single bullet in it. I'm going to pull the trigger six times in a row. Are you ready? Hasn't run out yet. Ooh. Funny how there's someone pissing their pants in every single game. There's no such thing as luck on the battlefield. 
<laughs> Arakan in first, E in second game, and Sokol up here. You'd better stay in line from now on. The Cobras will take care of him. Has <laughs> 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 the CIA dog been disposed of yet? The pain is dead. What? He's definitely one of yours. I fear Khrushchev may have a hand in this. We have no time to lose. You must eliminate him before the final test. Don't worry. They'll be able to handle it. This... Is the end. I'm leaving him to you, the fear. Yeah, this is the fear. Always sleeping. Is he all right? The end is saving what life he has left in him for battle. Normally, he's dead. But he'll wake up when the time is right. Here we can see sorrow. Once again. And when he does, it will be the end for the boy. Every time it rains, there's a sorrow here. Yeah. Sokolov isn't worth your love. You can entertain me until the rain stops. Kuwabara, 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 Kuwabara. <laughs> Now we're gonna see sorrow. The sorrow, is that you? They said a scorpion SMG is more accurate than the AK style rifle. Kojima said that because it's smaller and lighter that makes it more accurate. Yeah, it makes it more accurate on sh on a close uh, in close combat. Like in the short distance, that's what it meant. Okay, so now if we actually gonna, equ I'm not gonna use it, but if you're gonna equip the sniper rifle now, just go with L1. Here we can actually kill the end right here right now, and if you're gonna kill the end right here right now, then. Uh, uh, we w uh, we won't have we wouldn't have to fight him uh, later in the game. That's how we can get rid of the the end earlier in the game. <laughs> they just left the old wheelchair boy out there in, uh, in the rain alone. Nah, they're taking him inside. And if I'm gonna kill him right now, then uh, the the wheelchair will explode, and one of the one of the wheels will actually. Hit me in the face. <laughs> Pretty cool as well. Let's see, maybe we can get uh, some more cutter calls about the sniper rifle. Ah, you've got an SVD. That's the Soviet's top of the line semi automatic sniper rifle, adopted just last year. SVD stands for the Russian words that mean Dragunov semi automatic sniper rifle. 
For a long time, the standard Russian sniper rifle was the Mosin Nagant. But at the beginning of the 1950s, when Soviet troops started carrying automatic rifles and assault rifles, the need for an automatic sniper rifle increased. The SVD was developed to fulfill that need. It can use the same ammo as the Mosin Nagant, 7.62 mm by 54 rim cartridges, but they developed a new type of ammo with a tighter firing pattern to go along with it. I heard that these new rounds have a steel core and are two and a half times more precise than regular rifle bullets. Nothing can match that thing in terms of precision. Try it out for yourself and see how powerful it is. When you equip a sniper rifle, you'll go straight into first person view. Once you're in position, press the aim button to look through the scope. The trigger is the weapon button as usual. You can change the magnification on the scope by pressing the action button. You can fire from a standing position, but your aim will be a heck of a lot steadier if you're lying down. Try it out. No, thank you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do a few quarter calls here now. Uh, oh wait, you can just remove the sniper rifle. Gonna do uh, some quarter calls here. Let's remove this. Let's remove TNT. Uh, okay, now let's see what I, what do they have to say. You can actually see the uh, the the end uh, held bar on the bo on the top left, top right. Yeah, no, top top left. Sorry, you see the end. That means that, that you can actually kill him. Major Sokolov has been hauled off. Yes, they probably caught him trying to escape from the lab. Didn't Volgin say that they still needed to perform the final test? Yeah. Then Sokolov must have been taken back to the lab. Get to the lab and get Sokolov the hell out of there. The hell out of there! Pass through that warehouse and you'll come out south of the lab. Make your way inside the warehouse. Watch out for enemy sentries. There should be one code call here where they're gonna tell me about the, the assault end. rifle can punch through materials like wooden boards. That means you can fire on enemies standing on top of the pier from underneath. Keep that in mind. Okay, something about the end. Snake, be careful. That area is supposed to be inhabited by cobalt blue tarantulas. Tarantulas? The cobalt blue tarantula is a poisonous spider with a highly potent venom. If you get bitten, go into the survival viewer immediately and use mm -hmm. cure to administer mm -hmm. a serum injection. There are many different varieties of tarantulas. The cobalt blue is part of a group called earth tigers. They build their nests mainly underground and are highly aggressive. Their diet consists of not only insects, but also mice and even snakes. Interesting. So how, how do they, they taste? Are you really going to eat them? Naturally. <laughs> so? It says here they're not very good. Damn. Don't act so surprised. Isn't it obvious? Why would it be obvious? It's a spider, for goodness sake. A big one, but still a spider, and there's not much to it. Yeah. If only it were as big as the one in Earth versus the Spider. The what? The what? Earth versus the Spider. It's a movie about this gigantic spider. When it's small, it's about 15 feet wide. But when it's big, it's about 35 feet wide. What do you mean when it's small and when it's big? The size changes from scene to scene. It happens all the time. When you play the MGS3, you had a magazine with all the secret codec channels. There are secret codec channels here that you can use. There is the, there is even a healing frequency uh, that will uh, that will uh, heal you when you're gonna listen to it. There are like six or seven codec codec frequency here where you can listen to the music. We got a. Uh, uh, let me see what else do we have. No, no, no. I'm not gonna listen to all of them, obviously. <laughs> Uh, what else? Uh, 14896. That's life! That's life! <laughs> Oh, 
We got 14486. One four three three two. Play the original MGS three with the above camera. That was for that was the f the full for PS two. And then when substance was substance was released, it, uh, they added this uh, third person view camera. You can also play in this game with the original camera. I'm gonna show you after. I'm gonna show you all the codec calls. We still have a uh, three codec call, codec frequency with the music. I'm gonna show you those. After that, I'm gonna sh I can show you how to play in the with the original camera. Have like three, uh, three songs I think. Three or four. So we we got uh, one four two oh nine, one four two oh nine. Sometimes you can interrogate soldiers and they will give you a uh, frequency on uh, how to call an airstrike or how to uh, uh, call back the reinforcements, basically to cancel the alert. And there's one more, 14185. That was a <laughs> healing radio. And we still can't contact Eva. Alright, let's just save the game, then we can continue. You want to save? I'm saving a lot so we can hear more, more codec uh, calls about the Snake, movies. have you ever seen On the Beach? No. No, I don't know it. It's about the survivors of the Third World War. The entire Northern Hemisphere is obliterated in a nuclear holocaust, and it's only a matter of time before the few survivors left in the Southern Hemisphere are poisoned by the deadly fallout. Their only hope is an American nuclear submarine that escapes to the Southern Hemisphere. They set out for the Arctic to investigate the fallout. The movie came out in 59, and the year that the war was supposed to happen was 1964. In other words, this year. Nice warning. Let's hope it stays just a movie. Cold War. All right. Now where did we stop? Tranquilizer. I think that there was there was something here that I wanted to do, but what was it? Fuck me, man! I forgot. Let's just take down those three guards. Are you? Kidding me? There we go. When I'm gonna get to the surface, I'm gonna show you how to play with the original camera. What is this? Ooh, silencer. Exactly what I needed. A lot of fishes here. Let me just <laughs> catch some air. something here usually camouflage like that or hidden uh, in a location like that but I don't see anything now did I already pick that up M19 bullets I think that's it let's go 
<laughs> and we can see Froggy there. Gecko. Let go of me. 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 NK22. Night vision goggles. Electronically amplifies weak dim light for visualization. Smoke grenade. You know what? I'm gonna go here as well. I wanna fight in some uh, more silencer for the for my uh, train gun. Smoke grenade. I don't need that. Can go there. So they said that we can find some tarantulas here. Let's see, maybe we can find one and try to eat it. Maybe call paramedic as well and see if she's gonna tell us how how good tarantula tastes like. I don't see any tarantula though. Probably gonna be inside here. I can already hear rats though. Tarantulas can usually be seen like uh, how they're walking on the on the wall, crawling on the wall, whatever. Maybe I should go with AP sensor. Somewhere there. I don't want to get caught. Ooh, 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 ooh. two guards. Now I think there's gonna be one guard somewhere there, up there, and he's gonna see a body here. Ugh. Now where is he? Ah, oh, there we go. I knew it. Train gun. Whoa! Okay, here we got rats. Thermal goggles as well. Phase desert. But I don't see any tarantulas here. Tarantula. There's a crab. Another rat. Shag grenades. Bullets. Another crap, crap, crap. Okay, I'm gonna go down here. I think there's gonna be a, a silencer here. <coughs> yep. Now we have two silencer. Two silencers. That's really good. Dun 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 dun. I'll still have to call. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Here we can find a, a food storage, mousetrap as well. If I'm gonna destroy this as well, uh, let me see. If we let's let's equip TNT. If we're gonna destroy this food uh, food uh, storage, then uh, as I explained before, the enemy will uh, will be uh, like in worse condition. They will. Uh, uh, the, uh, their aim will not be steady as it is uh, right now. They will uh, keep saying how hungry they are, and if you're gonna throw them like poison food, they will eat it, and they can actually die from it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Might as well equip uh, thermal goggles and night vision just to get some uh, code calls with Sigint about it, about it. This guy runs upstairs like a nerd. Yeah, I, I was also uh, commenting that uh, 
before. Like when he's running fast, it's kind of it's kind of normal. But when he's walking slowly, look, <laughs> so weird. There we go. Now the next time we're gonna be here. Food. Let's actually eat some food. They're gonna be more weakened. I I'm gonna throw them some uh, some poison food next time I'm gonna be here. Okay, let's eat. Let's eat. Gulliver. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> this is great. Recharge the battery after eating. <gasps> <sighs> okay, what else did I want to do? Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to get uh, some codec calls about night vision goggles and thermal goggles. Hey, what's that you're wearing? Night hey. vision goggles. This gadget lets me see in the dark by amplifying light and displaying it as images. Amplifying light? That's what it looks like to me. Well, I'll be damned. They're working on something like that here in the States, but so far it's not viable unless it's coupled with an infrared searchlight. And now the Russians have something you can carry with you. Anyway, those goggles should give you a decent visual range, even in dark places. But don't look at anything bright like fire, or it'll get burned into your eyes and you won't be able to see for a while. Be careful. I wonder if that's... There's gonna be something, like, maybe I should... Put something on fire and then look in the first person and see if it's gonna be. Like if you uh, if uh, uh, if you're gonna see wars after an un an unequipping it again. Okay, still we have to do the thermal goggles. Hey, what's that you've got there? Hey. Thermal goggles. From what I can tell, they detect and display sources of heat. You're kidding me. They actually made a passive infrared night vision device small enough to carry around with you? What, is that special or something? Is it special? Here in the West, we've just barely got the technology to install it on aircraft. So that's what that thing is they put on the gunship. But doesn't the Army have something like that for driving vehicles at night? I thought I saw... You mean the ANPAS-5? That's an active infrared night vision device. It fires infrared beams from an infrared projector and uses the reflections to build an image. Those goggles you've got there are completely different. Basically, when you've got those equipped, you'll be able to spot enemy soldiers in the jungle with ease, even if they're camouflaged. They might even help you find traps. Ah, but you won't be able to see the terrain as well, so watch your step. Americox. What is your response? The Russians have better technology than Americans. What is your response? I have a lot of food, man. Good. You've infiltrated the warehouse. Pass through it and you'll come out south of the lab where Sokolov is being held. The exit should be on the north side of the top floor. Climb up the stairs and pass through the warehouse to the north. Mm -hmm. Nothing important. Looks like you're in a building. If people are living there, there's bound to be people food. People food? People food. Soviet military rations. It beats eating raw snakes and mushrooms all the time, doesn't it? I'm getting to like raw snake and mushroom. <laughs> you really are turning into an animal. Is that a problem? We still can reach Eva. We've seen Eva before, but we still can reach it. All right, guys, let's continue now. Enough code calls. All the technology was developed developed by Nazi scientists. Other way, yeah, that's true. Already did so many codec calls and like, oh come on! I didn't even go back. Like we, I've been playing for like six hours or something, and we, we, I'm still at the start of the game. 
Because I'm trying to show you all the code I calls. Now here we can actually see some traps. Hopefully I'm not gonna die here. Okay, here we got some... Poison frogs. <laughs> food full. Okay, sorry, I have to use that. Um, food, let's use... Squirrel! Not eaten yet, was not stole how it tastes. <laughs> now there's gonna be a lot of traps here, like I said before. I think those mushrooms are po- Oh! There we go, there's another squirrel who's flying around. I'm not gonna kill this one. I'm just gonna watch her flying again. It's gonna go all the way to the top and then it's gonna jump. Let's go. I think it's gonna go to that branch or something and then jump. Come on. Knowing my luck, it's gonna lure me into the trap. Where it is? Oh, there we go. And? Whee! <laughs> On another tree. Hmm, how can I get up there? Maybe there? And there? Ooh, I almost fell into the trap. I want to... There we go. There's another trap here. But what's he gonna do? What will that trap activate? I can't see. Should I try? God damn it, it was a C4! Oh man, I thought it's gonna like ram me with some wood or some shit. Ah, oh, burn. Okay, suffering from severe burns. No bandage applied, ointment not applied. Okay, let's use ointment and bandage. There we go. Jesus, that scared me. What about this trap? Is it also TNT? Could be. There is a there is a one codec call codec call here that I can uh, that I can get, but only if I'm gonna find uh, a certain trap. I don't know where it is. There's something there. Ooh, noodles. A noodles. But my inventory is full. Ah, there we go. This is the trap. Look. So, like, one of the scientists uh, tried to escape. And it said it, and it fell into a trap. Major, I found a... I know. It's probably a scientist who fled from the lab. I'd wager that the traps in those woods are set up more to deal with would-be escapees than to keep intruders out. Mm -hmm. Snake, the lab where Sokolov is being held is to the north of that forest. Keep on heading north. All right. Hey, Gleepster. Who, Russia had the best scientists? Is that what you're saying? Oh, there we go. We, there's another trap here. Uh, where can I s activate it? Ah, there. I'm not sure if I can shoot that thing. Woo! There we go. <laughs> this as well. Oh, whoa! I have this is the tranquilizer gun, let's just go. This is where we came from or I think we have to go here. Outside walls, this is it. 
Okay. This is the place. Sokolov is inside the lab. Look for a way in and use it to infiltrate the lab. Eva? Still no response. Okay, we can see one guard there. One guard there. Oh! And you, son of a bitch. I should have thrown a snake into one of them and to scare him off. And this one is poisoned as well, so if you're gonna get close to those, you're gonna try to bite me. Come on. No? Interesting. <laughs> We can go here, inside. Another suppressor, but it's but it's only for M19. I don't need that. Uh, maybe this is the snake. The yeah. Oh oh. Son of a bitch. Oof! Doggy is awake! Doggy Doggy is awake! <laughs> you gonna drop something maybe? Bullets. Now I might I might try and uh, throw a snake into this guy here. Let, okay, I'm gonna try. If I'm gonna trigger the alert, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. We got coral snake and milk snake. I'm not sure if one of them is poison or not. Okay, just a second. Okay, just a second. Oh come on! I didn't know he's gonna throw he's gonna go that far. Let's try with this. There's nobody here. <laughs> Look at him. Ah Who did that? He's gonna bite him? Let's see. I think that's a poison poison snake. No, I think the other one was poisoned. Why are you going here? Really? Huh? Okay, just a second. Just a second. If I would keep knocking on the wall, then he would actually kick the door and it will uh, it will stun me. <laughs> Who's that? Oh. <laughs> Fucking dog! Okay. I didn't I I was afraid to actually get close to him because I thought the snake will bite me. And that might that that, that might stun me. Now here's the funny thing, if I would use a uh, camouflage here, uh, one sec, if I would use, uh, wait, I'm retarded, if I would use scientist camouflage here, uh, then the guards will think that I escaped and they will throw me into the prison, <laughs> if they would see me.
dun 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 Now I Let's see, maybe we can find some items here. I think there should be one guy somewhere there on the right. Maybe I should go with AP sensor. Oh, one guy is there. One guy there. Another one here. Oh. Pom 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 barom. That was another way in. Okay, what does what does that say on the boxes? Unbop. What does that mean? Any of you guys speak Russian? Flippy, you know Russian, right? Unbop. We're not gonna... I think I do, I'm not gonna knock on the, on the front door. We're gonna go there. There is another one. Mm, uh, here we can find ammo storage. M16. Well, I guess we can uh, call Sagan for about M16. Let's see if he got something to say about the weapon. Snake, you've got a... I know. It's some new kind of rifle out of the West. Looks kind of like a black rifle. No, it's not an AR-15. It's an XM-16E1. A top-of-the-line rifle that the Army adopted recently on a trial basis. The U.S. military was working on a new concept for a light infantry weapon from the late 40s through the mid-50s. In the end, they decided they wanted a 22 caliber high-muzzle velocity rifle with full auto capability. What they came up with was the AR-15, the so-called black rifle. The one you've got there, the XM-16E1, is a modified AR-15 that's been fitted with a bolt-forward assist. I heard they're doing performance evaluations down in Southeast Asia. So, they captured one in Vietnam and brought it here? That's my guess. But that thing looks a lot different from a regular XM-16E1. There must have been a gunsmith present at the field test who made all these modifications on the spot. The fact that it's painted in camouflage colors shows that more and more people these days are starting to realize the importance of camouflage. Hmm, they made it so it takes a suppressor, too. Yep, that's a nice feature to have for a recon unit on a sneaking mission deep in enemy territory. You can attach and detach the suppressor by Ooh. opening the weapon window and pressing the enter button. Oh, and the firing mechanism's been modified to enable three-shot bursts. Why the hell would they do that? These days, a lot of new recruits aren't used to firing in full auto mode. They have no trigger control and end up emptying the whole clip at once. Maybe they were experimenting with ways to prevent that and came up with the burst mechanism as a possible solution. Stupid idea, if you ask me. <laughs> hey, give it a chance. It might come in handy. Open the weapon window and press the action button to switch between semi-auto, full auto, and three-shot burst modes. Have fun with that. I mean, I always play with guns, with train gun and uh, the normal silencer. But I, I didn't even know that you can put a suppressor and you can uh, just switch between the uh, fire mode. I mean, I, I probably did know, but I forgot. Huh. All right. And it also has a camouflage on the gun. I never noticed that. Pretty cool. You're making cinnamon rolls? 
Mmm, tasty. Alright, if you're making cinna cinnamon rolls, what are, what are we gonna eat in the game? Let's see, what should we eat? Hmm. I'm gonna go for noodles. Or? Hmm. Yeah, let's go for noodles. That's damn good. That's damn good. Actually, it's so good. It's so good. Makes me want to puke. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I'm actually gonna lose so much stamina if I'm gonna puke. <laughs> now I have to eat again. Food. Let's eat. Calorie mate. That's damn good. <laughs> I never tried that calorie meat. Kinda want to try. All right, let's go inside. We'll have to ca we'll have to wear uh, uh, a a disguise. Okay, camouflage uniform scientist. Let's even put it no paint. There we go. Bigu bosu. Shouldn't eat calorie mates on an empty stomach. I did, I like, I, I had a, what did I eat before? I think I had like rats or something. I've got to make a few quarter calls here now because I'm, I'm inside this area and I'm wearing a, uh, this scientist uniform. I see you're disguised as a scientist. It suits you rather nicely. As long as you don't do anything suspicious like roll or crawl, the enemy should have no reason to suspect you. Sokolov is somewhere inside that lab. Find out where he is and make contact with him. If you want to know where Sokolov is, why don't you ask one of the people around there? Snake, your disguise seems to be working. But don't forget that you're trying to pass as a scientist. Don't do anything that a scientist wouldn't do, like roll or- Okay, nothing important. Paramedic. When you're bitten by a venomous animal such as a yeah, snake really or a spider or hit by a poisoned arrow, the poison will start to affect your body. Your life will decrease with each passing minute, so cure the poison as soon as possible. To cure poison, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and inject yourself with a dose of serum. You can get serum from enemies. Either hold them up or shake their bodies down after you defeat them. I'm pretty sure you can also get serum by capturing the rabbits that live in that area. Oh, capturing rabbits will give me serum. Interesting. When you get hurt, your body will heal itself naturally over time. However, the speed at which your life recovers depends on how much stamina you have at the time. The more stamina you have, the faster you'll recover. So if you want your wounds to heal quickly, you should eat something and replenish your stamina first. Yeah, that's a cool thing. You can't you can't actually heal yourself in the game. You can only restore your stamina. And if you when you restore your stamina, you will uh, uh, you will heal uh, like your health will restore uh, uh, more, like faster. But if you're not gonna remove bullets, for example, if you're not gonna uh, like remove I don't know leeches shit like that, and your health will be really low all the time, then your maximum health will actually increase. So it's kind of it's not good to heal yourself right away, but it's also not a bad idea to heal yourself right away. It depends on your playstyle, I guess. Still no response from Eva. So you're wearing the scientist uniform. Wearing that scientist outfit lets you pose as a scientist. But be forewarned, you can't equip most of your weapons while you're disguised as a scientist. Even when you're disguised, your cover will be blown if you get blood on your clothes or something. If you do get blood on your clothes, take them off and switch to another outfit. The blood stain should come out after a little while. Hmm. Snake always has a best friend. Team of five different people he can call on the phone 24-7, I guess. You want to save? Snake got no friends. They're all colleagues. 
6 hours and 30 minutes in Brazil at the beginning of the game. <laughs> Snake, have you ever seen the War of the Worlds? No. no. These flying saucers from Mars arrive on Earth disguised as meteorites. The saucers use their heat rays to attack the nearby towns. And then... Um... Something wrong. Uh, the thing is, I was too scared to watch. I had my eyes shut almost the whole time. Then you haven't seen it. No, it's not that. It's based on a novel by H.G. Wells. Wait, stop. You secret. haven't seen it, have you? That does remind me, though. When I was two years old, my father listened to the radio drama version of the story. It was right after dinner on Sunday, and we were relaxing in the living room. They said monsters had come out of a meteorite that landed in New Jersey. It sounded just like a real live news broadcast. My father said he and my older brother actually believed it and started yelling and panicking. My mother supposedly grabbed me from my crib and took me out to the car, still wrapped up in blankets. But then, just as my dad was about to start the car, he realized that it was all just a radio drama. Because on the car's radio, they were playing Bing Crosby tunes. No matter what station he turned to, no one else seemed to be reporting on this big history-making news story. Sounds like something out of the big broadcast. Nobody said a word. We all went back to our rooms. My father and brother got off with a scolding from my mother, but I was the one who really suffered. After that incident, every time I acted up, my father and brother would scare me by saying, The Martians are coming! That's terrible. Isn't it, though? So, you haven't seen the movie. <laughs> I... I saw it. So... So even nuclear weapons wouldn't work against the Martian war machines. Uh-huh. Anyway, Snake... If you conceal yourself like the Martians did, the enemy won't know what hit them. Conceal myself? Maybe not in a meteorite, but if you can hide yourself inside something a little more close at hand. Like a box. Mm, close at hand. Something like... Uh -huh. A box. Ah, uh, I get it. So, you never, you saw, never the saw the movie. I saw it, alright? That's exactly for those guys who are watching the movie and playing the games at the same time. I, I, I watched the movie, but I, I, I played the game at the same time. No, you did not watch the movie. Shut the fuck up. But no, I have, I've seen the movie, but I, I also played the game. Shut the fuck up. Now, what are they reading? What is this? Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Metal Gear Solid 3 Reborn. Arabidem and the graphics. Mi Miss Het Niet. Doesn't end still. MGS3 Reborn. Power Unlimited. And here you can actually see pictures of. Uh... I mean, it kind of looks like a Shago Hut. Now, where do we go first? Hmm. Mami Yamasaki. Now, the problem is the guard will not suspect anything. The, the problem is uh, the scientists. Mami Yamasaki. Oh shit. There we go. If you're gonna get too close to him, they will uh, notice that I'm not one of them. Looks like a Metal Gear Rex from a. Oh, come on! Are you kidding me? Ah. Oh. Oh. Where can we hide? Can we go out? Alright, let's. Unequip the camouflage. Let's use 
Tiger Stripe. Oh shit! Ah, that guy on the right is shooting. You! There we go. Nice and easy. Now we can go back in. You see, the problem are those uh, those scientists. They're the biggest problem. I wonder if the MGS games are banned in Russia? Because they're always the bad guys? Nah, they're not. The bad guys. Russian Russian scientists invented Metal Gear. I forgot. It's not that they're bad guys. I mean, technically, patriots are the bad guys, and patri patriots were uh, Americans. All things considered, Russians just invented. Uh, I mean. Russian scientists invented Metal Gear. No, I don't want to get spotted again by that scientist here. There we can see another that Mami Yamasaki. Huh. Oh, come on. Alright, first we're gonna go. Wait, what's there? Huh. Not sure where will that take me. Actually, let's check it out. I'm not sure where will that take me. First, what I where I have to where I want to go is the basement, because in the basement is I think a prison. What is this? Ah, face camo. Oyama. And this will take me where? Ah, there's another way in. Okay. <clears throat> Dun 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 I'm probably gonna trigger alert a few more times here in the uh, in this area. All right, let's go down. Is that Metal Gear Rex or not? Looks that way. I think even in one in one area you can actually see uh, photos from Silent Hill. Might show you later, but let's we'll see. Oh. Hmm, I'm not sure if this guy will get mad if I'm here because maybe scientists are not supposed to be here. Is he gonna get mad? Let's see if there are any. Uh, there is. I thought maybe there won't be any guards here, so I can tranquilize them. But no. I'm gonna go inside, but he's gonna leave. I think that will actually trigger the alert. Here we can see more Metal Gear saw uh, Metal Gear uh, comics. Not comics, magazines, whatever. 
Let's see, is he gonna be mad? <clears throat> okay, apparently he doesn't care at all. Fine by me. And down there are just bullets that I don't need. Metal Gear Solid. Snake Eater, 2004. Alright, let's see what's on the other side. Ooh. Ooh, he's staring at me. Ah, we see a tarantula here. There we go. Please don't see me. Wait, wait, where, 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 would, where would that take me? Ah, so every prison cell has a... Ven this ventilation uh, shaft. Okay. This will take me... Okay. And this... To the lab. I think I'm gonna find one item here. In this last... Prison cell. Mousetrap. And... Haruma Yabuki. Haruna Yabuki. Uh, let's just leave this area. There's nothing else for me here. A lot of flies flying around the around the the, the toilet. <laughs> Even though uh, Major Tom told me that uh, I shouldn't roll at all because they'll. Uh, they're gonna be suspicious. Hmm. I don't wanna touch him by 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 accident. Now, am I allowed to be here or not? Just close the door. I guess I can call now and about the spider. When you get hurt, your body will heal itself naturally over time. Uh huh. However, the speed at which we know that the gauge below. We know that the gauge. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, she's not talking about the spider at all. Maybe she's gonna talk about it later. If you see anyone rolling in, in IRL, you get very suspicious. I mean... Okay, it's just uh... I think those pictures are actually from Silent Hill. This, the Maybe I'm wrong. I know there are gonna be some pictures uh, from the Silent Hill. Here we see another one. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Maybe those are the pictures from uh, Silent Hill. Can't remember. Alright, let's see. What do we have here? Someone shitting? Now we could get uh, we could get a uh, uh, some funny codex in MGS one and two if, when we are here in the toilet. Um, let's see if we can get some funny things here. Snake, be careful of those scientists as well. Uh-huh. If they get a good look at your face, 
They'll know that you're not one of the scientists assigned to the lab. Take care to keep your face hidden from the scientists. Even if they figure out who you are, the scientists won't attack you. But you'll be in for it if they cry out or press one of the alarm switches on the walls. If a scientist starts to suspect something, yeah, turn your face yeah. away until the suspicion passes. If you get a chance, try interrogating a scientist. He might have some valuable information for you. Remove your disguise temporarily and use CQC to hmm. grab a scientist. Then press the left stick. I don't think I ever interrogated a scientist. Ever, ever. Be careful though. If you get... You'll know that. Okay, he's not telling me anything important. Some types of food spoil faster than others. Animal and fish meat goes bad relatively fast, but plants and mushrooms generally last a little longer. Animals won't go bad if you capture them alive, though. You can tell whether food has gone bad or not by looking closely at the icon on the food screen in the survival viewer. So be sure to check the icon before you eat the food. If you eat spoiled food, you'll get sick and end up with a stomach ache. It'll get better eventually if you leave it alone, but that means you'll throw up and lose a lot of stamina. If you get a stomach ache, go to Cure in the Survival Viewer and take some digestive medicine. Digestive medicine and antidotes aren't the only ways to cure stomach Different aches voice. and food poisoning. You can also induce vomiting. Go into the Survival Viewer and press the Viewer button to enter Viewer Mode. Then rotate the they right stick to spin game. your body around and eventually you'll start feeling queasy. When you get dizzy enough, exit the survival viewer and you'll throw up. That should get rid of any stomach ache and food poisoning you have. Give it a try. I think they added this, uh, this uh, other part of the codec in Master's Collection or something. Because it's different, like you can, you can actually hear how the voice sounds different. I'm not 100% sure about that. But yeah, you can actually, like if you're gonna, for example, if I'm not gonna play the game for a week or two, and I'm gonna continue then, uh, some of my food will be will, uh, will get rotten. And if I'm gonna eat it, then I'm gonna get stomach ache. And the best thing uh, that I could do, that I should do is just the, to just uh, to, uh, use the digestive t uh, cure to puke, or spin the steak around to, to make him pu puke. Pretty cool. There's another tarantula. Alright, let's see how they taste like. I'm gonna puke. <laughs> Are scientists allowed to go here? I guess so. Nothing here. Nothing there. This might be from some video game. I can't remember. I, I, I don't know which, ga which one though. AK-47, sure. This is nothing like Oblivion, shut the fuck up. This will take out inside. Oh, I didn't know this will take me outside. Oh, okay, I, I, we got a new uniform. At least there's something, right? I love exploring. Let's see, we, we can still here, go here to the right. supply and I'm guessing this will take me out as well a book what is this book let's see can we maybe Okay, let's see. If I'm gonna unequip 
bad uniform a little for a little bit. Equip the book. Oh, mama! I see you're wearing the olive dress. Okay, I don't care about camouflage. You're on a solo sneaking mission. Your success is based on your ability to survive. That's where the survival viewer comes in. The survival viewer contains everything you need to survive out in the field. Use camouflage to change your camouflage and backpack to select your gear. Use food to eat, cure to treat wounds, and map to view a detail of the area. You've also... Nothing important. Whenever you find a new... Nothing important. Keep in mind that... Okay, yeah, <clears throat> apparently he's not talking about this book at all. Maybe paramedic will? When you get shot, you'll sometimes suffer a gunshot wound. The chance of No. Burns happen. No. Uh in MGS2 they talk about that book. But I guess they're not going to talk in this game. Unless Just like in MGS2, they will talk about the book, this porn magazine. If I'm gonna equip it and go into the bathroom with it. Alright, let's see. Camouflage. Naked. Naked. Now let's equip the book. Good. You've infiltrated the lab. The security on the inside is very tight. You'll find it difficult to look for so. Snake? Yeah, apparently nothing. Snake, what's up? Why are you naked? I know there's a naked option under uniform that lets you take off the upper part of your uniform, but without a shirt on, your camouflage sucks and your stamina goes down faster. You don't get any advantages whatsoever. Sure, there are. Sure, like there what? Are. It feels good. <laughs> Man, you do whatever you want. I will, thanks. Just one question, though. What? Is there a way to take off my pants? <laughs> Say what? Say what? My pants, can I? Oh, hell no. This fox unit is a nut fest. <laughs> <laughs> when you're using the ass Nothing, okay. Apparently they don't care about the... Uh... Eat food to recover... Yeah, about the... Uh... To take a porn magazine. Okay, whatever. If they don't care, then I don't care uh, uh, neither. Uh, let me just remove this book and where is it? Remove the book and camouflage. No, uniform scientist. There we go. MGS3 is the closest the Japan ever came to making their own Elder Scroll 4. Come on, man. <laughs> it's saying stupid shit like that. You're triggering me! I think this is the place where we have to go. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get spotted here and trigger the alert. There are gonna be a lot of scientists here. One guard there. Hmm. I'm not sure if I can find something here inside. Sea gas prey. This guy has a cigarette put an enemy to sleep. This is this is actually really useful. We see some Metal Gear Solid 3 magazines here again. You see now there are some of the scientists. Okay, we'll have to be really careful here.
Brion Kadina. It looks like she has a dick. It's a trap. As long as you're. Uh, apparently, they don't care at all. At all. You can capture animals. Yeah, they don't care about those photos at all. Not sure if I can open those lockers and see if there's something inside. Probably not important. Ooh, let's go. Now this here's the thing. There are gonna be a lot of scientists here, as you can see, and they can actually trigger the alert pretty easily. But if I'm gonna care, not care, if I'm gonna go, your cardboard box. They're not gonna trigger the alert right away. What is this? Battery? Huh? 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 If you're looking for Sokolov, he's not here anymore. Put that thing away. You can see Spoil that my drink. Robot from Zone of the Enders. So, you're the intruder everyone's talking about. Typical capitalist dog. No manners. And who are you? You mean you've never heard of me? And you call yourself an agent? Very well, then. I am Alexander Leonovich Granin. A man of some importance, if I do say so myself. I am the foremost weapon scientist in the Soviet Union. And the head of the glorious Granin Design Bureau. This is the Order of Lenin. It is an honor of the greatest magnitude, given along with the title of Hero of Socialism to only the finest workers. It was awarded to me in recognition of my brilliant contributions to society. Since the Great Patriotic War, I have created countless weapons in the service of our great communist society. It was thanks to me that we were able to stamp out the Nazi scum. It was I who created the basic design for the mobile ballistic missile system you know and fear as SS-1C. Important guy. Ah. You're crocked, aren't you? <laughs> I'm merely drowning my sorrow. Because of him, I've got nothing to do but sit here and drink this crap. Him? Sokolov. It's him you're looking for, isn't it? Because of him, I have been stripped of my authority. Zone my research has come to nothing. Look! It is a revolutionary mobile nuclear missile system, a bipedal tank. A bipedal tank? Yes, a walking tank, a robot. Are you familiar with the theory of the missing link between apes and humans? Well... This technology will be the missing link between infantry and Met artillery. Metal gear ray. A kind of there. metal gear, if you will. And this magnificent metal gear will mark a revolutionary step forward in weapons development. 
metal gear. <laughs> but I won't be used so easily. No, no crying myself to sleep. For you see, I'm going to send these documents to my friend in the United States. What? These bastards will live to regret this. And when they themselves become the targets of my creation, they will know my true greatness. Medley schematics yes. for Medley Gear Rex. Sokolov's pathetic Shagohan pales in comparison to my work. What are you going to do with a rocket engine on a tank? About Sokolov. A tank does not need a rocket. It needs something else. Look at these. Nice shoes. <laughs> no. Legs. Legs that allow it to go anywhere. Just as when humans learn to walk upright. That is the real revolution in weaponry. Don't you agree? But the fool's in charge. Chose Sokolov. And where is Sokolov? My project has been terminated. The philosopher's legacy has been handed over to him. What the hell are you talking about? The Philosopher's Legacy. Haven't you heard of the Philosophers? The Colonel has inherited their immense legacy. Rolgin's father was in charge of the Philosopher's money laundering activities. In the confusion of the war, they somehow ended up with their treasure. And Volgin inherited that treasure illegally. We never need to worry about the military budget. The development costs at our facility are all paid out of the Colonel's deep pockets. The weapons born here will be the genes for creating an entirely new form of warfare. Behind these schematics, I think. The funding for my research came out of that legacy. Came out of it. Now. My money, my men, all have been diverted to the Shagohan project. Tomorrow they will be conducting the final test, while Sokolov is making the final preparations in the weapons factory at Volgin's main base, the great fortress of Grozny Grad. Here I am, playing host to an enemy spy and drinking myself into a stupor. That's where they moved Sokolov? Yes. And the Shagohan is there too? Of course. That guy invented Rex and Ray. Hey! You're not thinking of going to Grozny Grad. Are you mad? It's an impenetrable fortress. I'm sure it is. You'll be killed. I'll take my chances. Wait! What? Listen to me, you fool. I want to help you. Help me? To thank you for your compliment. What compliment? My shoes. My shoes. <laughs> Tatiana gave them to me. I wanted to thank you for complimenting me on them. I'll tell you how to get into the fortress. In return, I ask only that you get that idiot out of there and destroy the Shagohard. There is an underground tunnel that runs around the perimeter of the fortress. You should be able to use it to sneak into the base. Head for the mountains. The entrance to the tunnel is located there. Take this. You passed through a warehouse on your way here, didn't you? Yeah. There should have been a locked door inside of it. Do you remember it? Uh... This key... We'll open that door. Beyond that door lies the vast jungle. You can climb up into the mountains from the far end of the jungle. Go back to the warehouse. Use the key to open the locked door and head for the mountains. Got it? Got it. Why are you helping me? Unlike Sokolov, the thought of defecting 
has never once crossed my mind. I love my country. I love this land. I cannot even imagine living anywhere else. I wish to remain a hero of the great motherland. I cannot bear the thought of being hounded into a corner and left to waste away. It is already dawn. You must hurry. I will remain here and nurse my troubles for a little longer. To capitalism! <laughs> There we go. Does Russia ha really have jungles IRL? Yeah, like do you do you have any idea how big Russia is? Uh <laughs> this guy's drunk. Get out of here! <laughs> I have nothing more to say to you. And yeah, that was Arakan's dad in the pictures. In the pictures. Get out of here! Basically, okay, may maybe maybe I'm not hundred percent sure about this. But I think I'm right. Uh, this guy had basically uh, invented Metal Gear uh, schematics for Metal Gear Rex and Metal Gear Ray. Uh, but they, uh, I guess, Russia and Volgan uh, decided to they, they, they pick up the they picked up the Sokolov instead, and uh, with Sokolov's help, they made a Shagohat because it was a tank basically, and. Uh, yeah, they didn't choose this guy's uh, this guy's hell because he he wanted a uh, a bipedal uh, little bipedal tank basically. Let's call him like that bipedal tank. So they went with Sokolov. Um, is there something else here that I want to say? I think that's it. I have nothing more to say to you. I have nothing more to say to you. Major. Sokolov's already been moved to the fortress. But that's only what Granin told you, right? He may have been giving you false info. No, he wasn't lying. How can you be so sure? He was crooked. Gut feeling. Good enough for me. According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located deep in the jungle beyond the warehouse. Right. Then if I climb the mountains, there'll be an underground tunnel leading to Groznygrad near the summit. Start out by going back to the warehouse. Use the key you got from Granin to open the door and proceed into the jungle. You remember where the door is, don't you? It's directly north of the door you went in when you came from the aqueduct. You're back? Did you, did you bought me an, an, a chocolate egg that I told you? When you get hurt, you're... Okay, got rid of that. Maybe something... Did Eva? Still no response. According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located deep in the jungle beyond the warehouse. Start out by going back to the warehouse. Use the key you got from Granin to open the door and proceed into the jungle. You remember where the door is, don't you? Yeah. It's directly north of the door you went in when you came from the aqueduct. Uh, let's save the game. Do you want to save? Yeah. Let's see there's something else about movies. Snake, have you ever seen for a fistful of dollars? Of course I did! Nope. Never. It's a spaghetti western. Spaghetti western? Spaghetti western. It's really cool. Especially the main character's stylish gunplay. Gunplay? I saw it in England on the Major's recommendation, but it hasn't come out in the States yet. It's so cool! They'll bring it to America, I'm sure. You have to see it sometime. Sure. Okay. Hmm. Can get spotted. Let's see. let's equip a box once again. Huh. 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 
Huh. There we go. One last view of Rion Karina. Rion Karina. Let's just go. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta go back. Back to that place where we where we destroyed the the food uh, the food storage or something. I don't know how to call that. Let's take him down. All right, camouflage, uniform. Well, splitter is actually way better for this, I guess. Face. Splitter. One guard is there. Bullets. Okay, we're good to go. There will be two guards, I think, and one dog again. Look, a fucking snake. I think I have enough food, so it should be. Okay. We should be okay. Box. <laughs> Ooh. There we go. Suppressor ran out. Man, I should have shot every single gecko that I found. Like we've seen so many geckos, probably in every, uh, like in every area. But I didn't want to. Uh, sh I didn't want to shot all of them because I didn't know I'm gonna find all of them. Now, now I have regrets, but it's okay. Now, this splitter uh, camo is not that great anymore, you see. Tiger Stripe is way better. Woodland. Oh, look, there's something here. I didn't even know that. Oh my goodness, that scared the shit out of me. I didn't even touch the fence. What the fuck? You know, what? I don't want to risk it. I didn't even touch the fence. What the fuck? I think I can throw some food. Let's see if we have something. Uh, maybe something is like poisoned. Uh, oh no! Wait, I think he's not gonna eat poisonous food. Yeah, I think that's the case. So if you're gonna let's let's try poison dart frog and let's throw, for example, one fish. So if I'm gonna throw a fish, you see, he's gonna eat that. But if I'm gonna throw a poisoned frog...
Okay, you're finished. Jesus, he's still eating? There we go. Now throw a frog. Yeah, you see, he's not gonna eat that. He will just stand still or go to sleep. Son of a bitch. Doug is smart. I am the fear. <laughs> the Brazilian wandering spider. Soon a most exquisite pain will engulf your entire body. Your limbs will be paralyzed, your lungs cease to draw breath. Eventually your heart will stop beating. Ah, but what fun would that be? No, not a beating at all. The boss's apprentice. I will give you fear such as you've never experienced before. Come into my web. It is time for you to feel the fear. Feel the fear. Snake, are you all right? You've been shot with a poison bolt. The poison is spreading throughout your body. Your life is going to keep decreasing unless you do something about it. Hurry and neutralize the poison. Go into the survival viewer and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. The serum will neutralize the poison, but don't forget to treat the bolt wound itself as well. To treat a bolt wound, you'll need your knife, a styptic, and a disinfectant. Use your knife to dig out the bolt, and then apply styptic and disinfectant to the wound. Follow those steps, and the wound should heal right up. Now start the treatment. Hurry! Okay! The fear is using something called stealth camouflage to conceal himself. But you should be able to spot him if you look closely in first-person view. Watch for rustling grass, falling leaves, anything that will betray his presence. Find him? and shoot him in first-person view. Mm -hmm. um. The fear's stealth camouflage apparently drains his stamina rather quickly. Once he's used up his stamina, he'll have no choice but to go looking for food. That's your chance. Throw one of your food items to set a trap for him. Plant a claymore or some TNT and lure him into it, or lure him into one of his own traps. Giving him poisoned or rotten food may also work well. That's what I was looking Used for. Uh, poison frog. Your food for. can be a weapon. There we go. Eva? Still no response. I thought she was gonna tell me something about uh, Snake, the fear. The fear is supposed to be wearing some kind of stealth camo. I don't know how it works exactly, but it seems to refract the light around it somehow to hide the person who's wearing it. This is the best camouflage I've ever seen. It's going to be tough to figure out where he is. That doesn't mean he doesn't have a weak point. Apparently, wearing stealth camo really drains your stamina. When he's out of stamina, the camo will stop working. Don't miss your opportunity. Uh-huh. Uh, paramedic? You've been shot with a poison bolt. Okay, okay. Let's treat this wound. Cure. When on poisoning, first we have to uh, suffer from crossbow wound. Okay, first we have to use, I guess, knife to take it out. 
bolt extracted. Um, I guess this is for wounds and maybe this and this. Gosh, wounds, there we go. And to cure inject serum, there we go. So how much food do we have exactly? One, two, three, four. Only four poisonous food? Oh, that's gonna be, might be a problem. Jesus. Now I'm here. Ooh. Can you stop? Now he will start going, <clears throat> looking for food. Let's try this. This. Is he gonna eat poisoned food? Poison! Poison! <laughs> the fear! The fear! I see it! The fear! That was a pretty, pretty fast fight. Probably the fastest I ever done. According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located deep in the jungle beyond the warehouse. Start out by going back to the warehouse. Use the key you got from Granin to open the door and proceed into the jungle. You remember where the door Shepherd's is, don't you? Spy. It's directly north of the door you went in when you came from the aqueduct. Our favorite food hamburger. According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located... Okay, nothing important. Paramedic. Snake, that area is inhabited by European rabbits. The European rabbit is said to have come from the Mediterranean region originally, but nowadays they're found all over the world. They've been used since ancient times as a source of food, so it might be worth catching them. Rabbits are known to eat their own excrement. They eat their own... That's right. It's called cecal feces. When the rabbit eats fiber, the fiber is fermented in the rabbit's appendix, or cecum, and turned into a nutritious substance full of vitamins. The rabbit excretes the substance and then eats it again to absorb the nutrients. That's a neat trick. I think I'll give it a try. Snake, rabbits and humans don't work the... I'm just kidding. <laughs> you really thought I was going to eat it? A little, yeah. yeah. Even I wouldn't do that. I guess not. But how did those seagull feces taste? What? Nah, I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm not sure he's kidding, actually. <laughs> there seem to be traps planted throughout that area. And they look a little... primitive. Yeah, but this is their territory. Why would they need this many traps here? Maybe it's part of some kind of tactical research. Tactical research? Yeah. As I'm sure you know, the Soviet Union is leading a worldwide revolution among communist forces all over the globe. 
But a lot of the countries involved don't have the necessary funds and industrial technology, so they need tactics that are both effective and economical. That's what they're researching? Yeah, and traps are one of the best ways to do that. I'll bet that place is one of their testing grounds. Clappers, arrows, pendulums, all of these traps are set off by applying force to a rope. Don't touch the ropes and you'll be fine. Use rolling to get over them or just crawl under them. Either way ought to work. If you do set off a trap and an arrow or a spiked pendulum comes flying your way, you can still dodge it by immediately diving out of the way. Pit traps and snares are camouflaged into the ground to make them harder to detect. But if you look carefully enough, you can see them through the disguise. Try stalking to proceed with extra caution. In any case, if you think there might be traps lying around, keep a close eye on the ground and stay alert. Mm -hmm. So, Eva is still, I guess, no response, yeah. So this is the rabbit, huh? I'm sorry, rabbit. Really? Oh, get over here! <laughs> and we got a uniform spider. The fear camo uniform. You see, 80% camo, but our our stamina is draining. Look. It's going down so fast. Sigand, Granin said something about putting legs on a tank. Do you know what he was talking about? Bipedal tank. You ask me, it's gotta be a joke. <laughs> Not only is making a tank walk on two legs a technical nightmare, but there's no point in making a walking tank to begin with. But it looks cool. Putting legs on a tank would raise its clearance, increasing its frontal projection area. It'd also be less stable. Suppose the legs help the tank travel on bad roads. I don't see the logic in that. Isn't that what treads are for? I mean, anybody who'd seriously consider making a thing like that has got to be a wacko. Come to think of it, there was a guy in the States who wrote a paper on that subject. What was his name? Emerson? Uh-huh. Heinrich? Something like that. I don't really remember. Of course, no one took that seriously. Arkham's dead, if you saw in the picture. Sigand. Granin was saying that Sokolov's research project was a tank fitted with rockets. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea what he meant? Sorry, beats me. Mm. I wonder if it's supposed to increase the tank's mobility, or maybe give the tank short-range missile launching capability. But you're sure it has something to do with Phase 2 of the Shagohod, right? Yeah. Khrushchev traded Cuba just to get this thing finished, and Volgin blew up a Soviet research facility to get his hands on it. Whatever it is, it's got to be big. I tried to get a code call about a spider camo. Sigand, do you know anything about that philosopher's legacy Granin was talking about? Not a clue. Never even heard of something like that until now. Right. One thing's for sure, though. Vogan's got a huge amount of money stashed away somewhere. Philosopher's legacy, huh? Maybe it is real. That Order of Lenin that Granin was talking about is the most prestigious award in the Soviet Union. It's given to individuals, organizations, and cities for outstanding achievements in warfare, science, industry, the arts, and various other fields. You could say it's the highest honor the East has to give. Mm -hmm. You say Granin was involved in the development of the SS-1C. So many optional codicals. The SS-1C is the Soviet's newest short-range tactical ballistic missile. Based on what Western intel has been able to gather, it's capable of being launched from a mobile platform. A mobile platform? A mobile platform? Yeah. It's a transport vehicle that functions as an erector and a launcher. It can travel on roads, then erect and launch a missile from any location. Of course, in addition to conventional explosives, the missiles could also be fitted with chemical or even nuclear warheads. A nuclear missile that can be launched from any location? I'll bet it wasn't the missile itself that Granin helped develop. More likely, it was the mobile platform. From what I've heard, the SS-1C is set for actual deployment as early as next year. That's bound to send a chill down NATO's spine. Pit traps and snares are camouflaged into the ground. Okay. Hey, Snake, what's that you wear? There we go. It's spider camouflage. It used to belong to the fear. Is that right? 
Well, it's not as good as the stuff the Fear was wearing, but it still seems to have a pretty decent amount of stealth capability. From the looks of it, the wearer uses stamina to power the stealth function. With this thing on, your camo index will stay at a high level no matter where you go. But if you run out of stamina, the stealth function will stop working. Keep that in mind. I mean, it's pretty cool if you're gonna have 80%, uh, no matter where we're gonna go. You see, even if I'm gonna crawl, it's gonna be 80. Uh, I'm actually gonna use it for a few, few more seconds just to show you um, uh, how we're gonna aim if our stamina is gonna be real low. <laughs> And you're gonna see, we're gonna hear our uh, our belly start growing real soon. You see, our stamina is really, really low now. All right, now let's. You see how a snake is kind of acting. Like, he looks tired. Alright. Let's use this, and that's okay. Maybe we can get a few codec calls about our stamina. Now if we're gonna aim... You see how, how uh, uh, the arm is going left and right all the time because we're hungry. It's really hard to aim like that. <laughs> Almost impossible. Not sure if we can uh, get any codec calls about that. Paramedic. I see you found some fly agaric mushrooms. The fly agaric is a relative of the death cap mushroom that grows only in that region. You'll find it growing on the ground, but it's poisonous. So if you pick one up, don't eat it. If you do eat one, go into the survival uh -huh, viewer so immediately and use cure to take some antidote. The poisons found in the fly agaric include phallotoxins and amatoxins. It says here that when you eat it, the initial symptoms include nausea, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Finally, your liver and kidneys will break down into a sponge-like substance and you die. Sounds like a horrible way to die. Isn't it? Yeah. So how does it taste? <laughs> huh? Huh? How does it... Were you listening to me? The fly agaric is poisonous. I heard you, but if I did eat it, it might taste good, right? I give up. <laughs> Snake, I looked at your medical record. You've been exposed to an atomic blast? Yeah, the Bravo shot. It was a hydrogen bomb test conducted at Bikini Atoll on March 1st, 1954. I was at the American base on Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands when the ashes of death started falling from the sky. Any symptoms? Hmm. None. At least, not yet. But a lot of the guys who were in it with me are now suffering from thyroid cancer and leukemia. Some of them are dead already. One of these days... How do you know that? Anyway, I'd better get back to the mission. Yeah. Interesting. When you get hurt, you're... I guess it doesn't... Uh, we're not gonna hear any code at call about it. According to Granin, you should... About the uh, snake being tired. Okay, let's just eat some food now. Um, let's see if we can eat that snake. We can eat a rabbit that we found. There we go. I'm gonna throw those poisonous mushrooms uh, to the enemy and see if they're gonna eat it and they're gonna die, probably. I'm not sure if that is that gonna count as a kill. Probably it will. But it doesn't matter, I'm gonna show you anyway. If we die, I mean, if we're gonna, if it's gonna count as a kill, it's gonna count as a kill, it doesn't matter. And look, there's another trap here. And there's a gecko here, right uh, there as well. Where will this take me? Is that where we came from? No, that's where we have to go, right? 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where we have to go. I just want to see if I missed some item. Probably not. I mean... Ah, oh, we did miss some item. Right there. I guess I can kill this poor, ba poor guy as well. There we go. Tranquilizer, and let's continue. I think that's where we have to go. No, wait. Outside walls? No. Gotta go back. Gotta go all the way back. I don't wanna... Activate any trap here. I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die. Those are poisonous frogs. <clears throat> okay, this is the place. I'm carrying the tranquilizer. There we go. Munchies, what? You see, they're hungry because I. That tastes good. Huh? <laughs> Munchies. Huh? Is something wrong? You see? Hmm. That tastes good. So let's see if we're gonna throw. Uh, let's see, backpack. Those are poisonous. Uh, Mushrooms. Who's that? What's going on? What? Wait, what? The good thing there's no alert here, but who the f who the fuck saw me? Somebody on the stairs? Hmm, that tastes good. So that guy probably saw me or what? I don't know, let's just Down that guy. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm hungry. Where's another guard? Now let's see if I'm gonna throw here. I'm so hungry. There we go. That's a poisonous. That's a poisonous uh, mushroom. Now he's gonna eat it. Ooh! <laughs> like I said, I'm not sure if that's gonna count as a kill. It could be actually, but it is what it is. Mouth trap. Disinfect septic. Chef grenade. Hopefully there won't be oh wait, I should have picked that thing. There might be Hopefully it's gonna be silencer. Once again, nice. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. It, it wasn't my fault. 
Later in the game, we're gonna see if that's gonna count as a kill or not. Soon, real soon. Something there now. Look, gecko there as well. Kind of regretting for not uh, for not. Uh, Shooting all those geckos from the start, but it's okay. Uh, this is where we came from. Do I have to go there or here? I can't remember. Might be here. Svatogorny South. Ah, this is the place. Now here's another thing. I'm gonna set up some mouse traps here. Is that a weapon actually? Mouse trap, there we go. Here in this place we can actually find or found uh, some really like one of the rarest animal in the game. So now let's set it up here. Like this. Now if I'm gonna go... I'm not sure if I have to go... Here and then leave again. Okay, let's try this. There we go, we already found something. Now let's see. Cage full. I don't know, I guess we can eat this. Ugh. I've had enough. <laughs> Tree frog. This is horrible. And let's dispose this. Now we only got frogs. Maybe I fuck it up. Maybe I shouldn't have waited. Maybe I should have waited for a longer time. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I fuck it up. It's okay. Snake, are like you there? You can find Tochimoku here. Where are you? We were. In the fortress, in Groznygrad. Dr. Sokolov is here too. Is he alright? He's fine. Right now he's busy putting the finishing touches on the Shagohod. Good. That means they haven't killed him. Not yet anyway, but you better hurry. They've already finished the phase two tests. Once the final preparations are complete, they'll have no more use for him. The Colonel won't have any qualms about killing him if he thinks the CIA is closing in. Eva, you can't let Sokolov Eva. out of your sight. I know. Snake, do you know where Groznygrad is? Granin told me that I should be able to get there from the mountains to the north, through an underground tunnel. Granin told you? Yeah, he even gave me the key to the warehouse. Why? Because he was drunk, I guess. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Hell if I know. Snake, there's one problem with that route. What problem? The mountain entrance to the underground tunnel that leads to the fortress is sealed. You need a key to get in. A key? What about the key Granin gave me? That key won't work. But don't worry, I'll figure something out. I have an idea. There are some ruins at the top of the mountains. Meet me there. The top of the mountains. Got it. Wait, there's something else I've got to tell you. Now what? I heard that one of the Cobras is waiting for you in the jungle at the foot of the mountains. He's a legendary sniper called The End. Yeah, I've seen him before. That ridiculously old guy, right? Don't underestimate him. He's known as the father of modern sniping. Is he alone? No spotter? None. He's all by himself. Apparently, he doesn't need a spotter. You can't be serious. The entire forest is on his side. The forest? Stay alert. Yeah, I'd hate to have it be the end for me. <laughs> Snake is playing with wars here. Um, let's see. Snake, have you been contacted by Eva? Yeah. Yeah, she said we'd meet up in the ruins at the top of the mountains. 
She also said she picked up the key to get into the tunnel that leads to Groznygrad. Good. Hurry to the rendezvous with Eva. Head for the mountains. Proceed north through the woods. There's an entrance to a mine shaft at the far northeast corner. Climb up the shaft and you'll come out in the mountains. Head north. I'm on it. But stay on your toes. Isn't the Cobra unit sniper lying in wait for you? Yeah. Yeah, the end. But there's no other way. Watch yourself. Your opponent is a legendary sniper. Your fight with the end will likely be a long and grueling one. You should stock up on battle necessities like ammunition and provisions now while you still can. Yeah. Really cool fight. Snake, that forest is immense. It's too dangerous to proceed without adequate information. Give Eva a call. Well, I guess I can do that. First, let's go bottom area. That area is home to a small bird called the Red Avadavad. The Red Avadavad is a small bird native to southern China and Southeast Asia. This is its mating season, so the males ought to be a brilliant red color right now. If you want to catch one alive, use the tranquilizer gun. By catching one and then releasing it, you might be able to distract the enemy's attention. Hmm. I see. <laughs> How do they taste? The what? The flavor. You, you're not going to eat such a cute little bird, are you? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Something bothering you? No. <laughs> okay then, so? How about it? How should I know? What does the guy say? How does it taste like? Pets happen when you get slashed with a knife or other sharp object. When you have a okay, we know that. Second, maybe. When you fire, continue. Nothing important, Eva. The name of that forest is Sviato Gorni. Sviato In Russian, Gorni. it means something like the sacred mountain path. The name comes Sveto from an Gorni. old folk tale about mountain spirits who passed through there on their way to Sokrovieno, the forest to the north. Head north, and you'll come to Sokrovieno. The tunnel that leads to the mountains is in the northern area of Sokrovieno. I'll meet you in the ruins at the top of the mountains. I'll give you the key to the tunnel leading to Groznygrad when you get there. Remember, go north. Go north. Sokrovieno is also where... I know. The end, right? Yeah. One of the cobras, the end, is waiting for you in Sokrovieno. He's a legendary sniper. Until you defeat him in battle... I won't be able to move on. Right. Then I'll just have to beat him. I guess you will. I could have beat him before when we uh, when we exit that uh, that river or something, whatever it was. We can actually climb here. Not sure where will that take me. Let's use this. I guess I can use AP sensor just in case. I might need the food later. Serum is full. Book. Did I found something here now again? A bird. You'll suffer both. Nothing. Okay, I thought we were gonna get some new uh, new codec call now because we captured the bird. Ooh, look, there are more mushrooms here. Food full, antidote full, let's just continue. We got some snake here. Look, we can even find some... Uh, is that a serum or something? Sea medicine. I don't think I ever cut, uh, cut some of those... Uh, My food is full anyway. Well, some of those plants to get a medicine. Tranquilizer gun. Now we have to be careful here. We might see some uh, sun traps here.
That's why I'm carrying this AP sensor with me, just in case. Dum, 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 dum. We can climb and then we, we can probably see the enemy from there. But what I'm actually looking for... No! Oh my god, that was close! Oh my god, last second jump. They just hide, huh? Okay. There we go. You really can find something in one of those trees. Uh, but now I'm gonna show you something else. If we're gonna, if I'm gonna equip Hornet Stripe camouflage. And gonna shoot those bees. You see how hornets are flying really close to me now? Now we get I'm gonna get closer to the to the enemy. Are you kidding me? Are those hornets flying next to that guy now? Well that wasn't supposed to happen. It should have followed me. There we go. Yeah, where's the oh, no, there's a the guard. Come on, go there. I don't know why it's not coming. Come on. Maybe when this guy will go here, and maybe then. There we go. <laughs> and now the and now those horns will t uh, will uh, get him uh, get him away from the area. Pretty cool. But the camo index is not that great, so I just maybe leaf should be better for this area. I just want to check if we can find something else here, maybe some other uh, extra camo or something. There might be some guards in the top on the right. Like I don't, I. Uh, it's been, it's been like it's been a while since I played that game last time, so I'm not sure where the guards are located. That's why I'm taking, I'm playing kind of slow. And this is how you can see. This is how you play the game in the in the original for PS2, like that. You couldn't see. You couldn't play in third person. Whoops! There we go. Sixty-five percent is actually not not that great. What up, Angles? But it's still the best one. One's there. Whoa! Hmm, I don't... Oh, shit. Who said that?
Who said that? There's a guard somewhere here, but I can't see it. There's a trap here. Who said that? Who said what's wrong? And where will this take? Let me just see, check the map. We can go there Or I can go there Haha <laughs> Now, I guess I can show you now if I'm gonna wear Scientist uniform You see? Like they, they, they immediate, it immediately went away But if I would wear this black uniform they would uh, they would start they would start attacking me right away. Apparently, the black uniform kind of the black uniform is making those bees, uh, whatever, mad, aggressive. Uh. Let's do some code calls and save the game. Snake, that forest is immense. You already know that. Aromatic. Snake, the Ural luminescent mushroom grows in that area. The Ural luminescent mushroom is a mushroom found only in Selinoyarsk. It looks like a shiitake mushroom, and it's often found growing on the trunks of trees. If it looks like a shiitake mushroom, then it must be edible, <laughs> right? Yep. I can't guarantee that it'll taste just like a shiitake mushroom, though. There should be a mushroom called the Bicol scaly tooth growing in that area. The Bicol scaly tooth mushroom is used as an antidote to poison. Hmm. It usually grows on the trunks of trees, so look for it there. I think I already cut it, it cut at one. I think you're going to be disappointed. Damn. Damn. Oh, quit your whining. You know what they say, good medicine tastes bitter. Snake, there should be vine melons growing in that area. You see area. so many... The vine melon is a kind of melon commonly found so many in vegetables, Salino well, not vegetables. Like the name says, it's a melon like that grows and on shit a vine. In this area. The flesh is crisp Before and delicious. Before the end fight. The vine melon is full of potassium and carotene, so it's good for you as well. Next time you see a vine, why not check to see if there's a melon growing on it? Snake, that area is in Okay, green python. Uh, let's just save the game and then we can... Uh, Saving the game, snake? We're gonna continue. Snake, have you seen the movie Them? No. It's about these giant ants that appear in the desert of New Mexico after a nuclear test. The army tries to fight them off with flamethrowers. The ants were so big that they filled up the entire screen. The whole movie theater was screaming. Hmm, an ant that big could make a good meal. <laughs> yeah, well, if you find any, don't eat them. Come on, they're not that bad for you. If you end up growing huge like that, you won't have any place left to hide. Just like a girl who gone. Okay. 